God came down one day and said, it's pronounced Jod, then left. Oh, no, no, no. You can't do that to us, man. What if Jod was one of us? Just a schlob like, uh, whatever, let's read the rest. A large chunk of my taking the Lord's name in vain would go away. Ooh, good point. He would also say, my name isn't God. Then he would pronounce his name and everyone's faces would melt and the furniture would start floating, right? Do you want a holy war? Because that's how you get a holy war. God damn it. I recognize the council has made a decision, but given that it's a stupid ass decision, I've elected to ignore it. Man, can you imagine saying that God's decision was stupid? I mean, to be fair, he did that a lot, but you know what I'm saying. Does that mean that Jesus would be pronounced Jesus? <laughs> oh, wow. What a great one to end that thread on. I'm your host, Robin. Welcome to Ask MK. Would you watch a show where a billionaire CEO has to go an entire month on their lowest paid employee salary without any access to the other resources than, well, that of the same employee? What do you think would happen? Ooh, I love this scenario. They'd be fine. The problem with poverty is not usually the day-to-day -day costs. People can adjust to that. It's unexpected expenses that are crippling. Darn straight. I just had to drop 2K on my car all of a sudden. It would be better if they had to live with their lowest salaried employee for a month or two. IMO. In their house, dinner with the family, travel to and from work together, same lunch, kids with homework, the works. I doubt a month is really enough to feel the real effect. It would be incredibly self-serving and boring. They would never truly experience what it is like to be in the precarious position of a minimum wage employee living hand to mouth and the novelty is just salt in the wound. It would be more interesting to see the reverse. Hmm, three months minimum and I'd watch it. Thanks for the gold. I love reality shows, so I'd watch it depending on who produces it. If it's too fake with too many emotional moments, advertising and people shouting, I'm out. Yeah, I can agree with pretty much all of those, honestly. Make it a little more interesting for us. What life-changing item can you buy for less than $100? Two pet ducks. You may be tempted to go for one, but trust me, you need two. And you'll have about $76 left over. Huh? People who have OnlyFans, what's stopping you from upgrading to an air conditioner? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I like talking into it and sounding like a robot. Hmm, good point. I'm still waiting for my only fan so I can afford one. Ah, I'm Korean and I enjoy the thrill of electric fans. You just don't get that genuine life or death scenario with air conditioners. Source, <laughs> a wiki page called fan death? No thanks. I used to have an air conditioner, but then I switched to only using a fan as it really helps me wake up better in the morning. My mouth is less dry. It makes waking up easier too, since I won't drag my waking body from being too comfy. The sound of the fan drowns out the deafening silence of dread in my life. Oh yeah, you can just leave that sucker running forever. Took me way too long to get this joke. I need more coffee and possibly an air conditioner. You might be having a heat stroke. The fan chops up the oxygen molecules and makes it more easier for me to suck them down. Oh, that's true. Which legendary Reddit post or comment can you still not get over? <laughs> there was a post on r slash awe of a gorilla using sign language to tell people not to feed it or something to that effect. To this day, I still laugh when I think about a comment that said, it's a shame there's so many deaf gorillas. This comment from Arnold Schwarzenegger lifting up a guy who had a terrible day at the gym. I always say don't be afraid of failure because how far can you really fall? You found out to the ground. It's right there. Now you know it isn't anything that should scare you. Man, I love that dude. Someone in r slash homeowners trying to get rid of ants in their house. Tons of comments. One fellow Redditor suggested maybe there were no ants, that they were hallucinations due to carbon monoxide poisoning. OP had his house tested and turns out there were in fact, no ants, and he was hallucinating them due to carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> That's why I think they're required now. I mean, least required if you're a smart enough person. That stuff will destroy you. This one guy was on the toilet, and he sneezed while he was taking a shit. That same moment, the power in his house went out. He then proceeded to cry because he thought he shit himself blind. <laughs> Maybe someone can help me find the actual post. It was from five years ago on a post about what you would do with a specific amount of money, like five million dollars from the lottery. Someone replied with, is that enough to rent an orange cat for two years? And it was so far out of left field and hilarious to me that I haven't stopped thinking about it. Well, I need an answer to that question. That time a person on r slash Formula One asked, if you could eliminate a race within the year, which would it be and why? Which looked rather bad when taken out of context, especially in r slash all. <laughs> oh no. 
Steve Irwin has you pinned down in a headlock. What cool facts does he tell the audience about you and your habit? This little fella looks upset, but he actually craves physical contact. Edit. A lot of you weirdos are into thumbs and buttholes. Nah, we just like South Park. And thumbs and buttholes. Be very careful. We have to show dominance. If we show any affection towards this creature, he'll get attached to us and never leave us alone. Truly one of the most terrifying beasts in North America. I don't care. He calls me a beaut, and I really needed to hear it. Wow. Get a load of this, Sheila. I can imagine this one spending all of her free time sleeping in her little hidey hole. Only coming out five times a week to spend hours at a place where she probably regrets being in at the first place. So, she'll do this most weeks of her life all the way up until she dies. This one's pretty big for a female, too. Bigger than most average males, actually. <laughs> don't think that gives her any luck during the mating season, laughs an Australian. Well, you don't have to dog on yourself that hard. Ah, look at this fella. He's one of the hairless variety. Rare and silky smooth to the touch. He actually likes it when you rub his head. Look at his leg going! Bill Gates said, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. What's a real life example of this? I was working as a stock boy in a supermarket, and when we had to fill the milk cooler, people would bust open a 12 pack of milk cartons and put them in one by one. On my first day, I placed the 12 pack in the cooler, cut the plastic off on one side with my box cutter, and yanked it from underneath. And the look of the store manager and other employees who were training me was pure bewilderment. From that day, everyone did it my way. I mean, that just feels like it makes the most sense, right? Start of lockdown. My nine-year-old son was having worksheets emailed to complete at home. One day, I left him at the laptop doing his math while I made some dinner with my three-year-old daughter. Walked into the living room with his dinner to find him asking the Alexa all of his math questions. <laughs> That's only gonna work until he has to start showing his work. I worked as a laborer at a nursery one summer. Daily tasks included manually watering 15,000 plants each day. Put together a back-of-the-napkin plan to build an irrigation system and spent the next few weeks building it with some money from the boss. That system is still running 15 years later and does all the work now. I did automate myself out of the job and had to find another one eventually. A couple of years later, I got my engineering degree. I'm convinced engineers are inherently lazy people that will spend a disproportionate effort to make things easier. I feel like that's explicitly their job description at this point, right? It took me like three months, but I automated a data pipeline to extract data, clean it up, and spit it out in an Excel or PDF format to one of our clients. I walked over to shoot the shit with the lady who handles my client and gives me tasks, and she told me we make 40k off of them every month for that automated job. What do you make? The clerk was asking to bring 145 white papers into the office. He doesn't usually want to count the papers manually, so he printed 145 blank sheets and took them in. Huh. I had a math teacher that actively encouraged his students to be as lazy as possible. Defining lazy is actively searching for ways to do as little work as possible. His logic was that the way math is now, it could always be simplified and still work the same. Someone just needs to be lazy enough to find it. Aha! I plug clocks in at midnight so they're already set. You genius! Oh my god! Wow! Eating dinner out of the pot so there's fewer dishes to wash. Oh, I do that all the time. Absolutely. If I need directions, I'm not asking a man with one tooth. I'm asking a man with one leg. Because he definitely knows the easiest way to get there. Yep, if there's a shortcut, that one-legged fucker knows where it is. You won't be hopping fences either. <laughs> what free things online should everyone take advantage of. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. USPS and UPS will both deliver free packaging boxes, envelopes, bubble wrap, etc. to your house. Literally doesn't cost a thing, and you can get like 50 boxes at a time. You know, I worked for UPS for a few years, and I don't know if that's true. I'm gonna have to verify that. I know USPS does, but really? UPS? Dang, I'll have to check. Freecycle.org is literally people giving away stuff they don't need or want anymore, and they can't or don't care enough to sell it. Ooh, I've got a couple of broken PlayStation 1s I could throw on there, just for parts, you know. The Noun Project has a wide selection of icons. I use them for presentations. Open Learn from the UK's Open University. Free courses for all levels of study. Samples of university materials, study skills, and tie-ins to BBC documentaries. Everything is under Creative Commons license, so you can use it as you see fit. Ah, Flight Radar 24. It allows you to see plane traffic live. The No BA Project? The Noba Project? It's a website that's compiled psychology topics into easy-to-read modules. They've been compiled by psychology university professors to help facilitate free education for students. You can even download the ones you're interested in as a PDF as many times as you want. All of this is free. Maybe not everyone, but for students, Zotero is a lifesaver. It will store your sources, import them into a bibliography and whatever citation you need, and even create in-text citations in your paper. It saves hours of work. I know at least three people right now that 
that would absolutely be able to improve their life with this one. With all of the negative headlines dominating the news these days, it can be difficult to spot signs of progress. What makes you optimistic about the future? Oh man, have we ever needed this. Solar energy plus desalination plus gene therapy. Oh yeah, man. Space. So much is unknown right now. Excited to see what can come in the future. Oh man, I am going to be watching the touchdown on Mars all day. The possible return of the American chestnut tree. Fast growing, rot resistant, and perhaps most importantly, produces enough calories from the nuts to feed a population. The good news is often quiet and subtle. The bad news is always loud. I try to remember that. All seven of my honeybee colonies are currently surviving the winter, and today they're bringing in the first pollen of the year. That one excites me a lot. My students. They handle a complex, globally interconnected society in ways my generation, undergraduate at university in the 70s, couldn't hold a candle to. Any color, sexual orientation, disability or ability, any nationality, it's all good, so long as you're not an asshole. We may be approximating Dr. Martin Luther King's hope for a world where people are judged by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. Advancements in health studies and science for health have improved living conditions tenfold and continue to do so. So that makes me pretty optimistic. What if Earth is like one of those uncontacted tribes in South America? Like the whole galaxy knows we're here, but they've agreed not to contact us until we figure it out for ourselves? I just hope they don't try to put us through a test, you know what I mean? Don't want a baby Fark McGee's ex on our hands. What if the people that were abducted by aliens were actually abducted by some alien TV host equivalent of the Crocodile Hunter, where he abducts a human and shows it off? Crikey, what an interesting little fella this is. Where are my royalties? They probably treat us like animals on National Geographic. That's actually one of many theories about SETI and alien life. That they're so far ahead of us on the Kardashev scale that for them to try to communicate with us would be like us trying to communicate with ants or amoebas. Man, come on, make yourselves known. What if aliens showed up here millions of years ago, saw a planet inhabited by enormous lizard monsters and said, fuck that, don't come back to this place. <laughs> They'd want to study the dinos, come on. That's the premise of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, except for the waiting for us to figure it out part. I mean, we could always just be cosmic ants. How often do you go out to your garden and try to communicate with the bugs? Never, I hate bugs, man. So, the Prime Directive? And crop circles are just teenager aliens doing graffiti. I knew it! Reddit, how would you feel about a law that bans radio stations from playing commercials with honking, beeping, and siren noises in them? Oh, that would be dreamy. I would feel like, finally, lawmakers taking the public issues to heart. I agree. And any ad for auto service shops that play squealing brakes or ominous engine sounds as well. Oh, dang straight. There's an auto shop near me with an LED sign. Sometimes, they have police lights flashing red and blue promoting state car inspections. I hate that sign driving home at night. It looks like there's a cop behind me. How is that legal? I mean, I know it's illegal to put red and blue flashing lights on your car, but weird. Also, doorbells on commercials because my dogs. I'd be fine with it. Hell, I'd encourage the ban. I flinch whenever those commercials are played. I usually do because they're not funny and kind of cringe. I was driving one day and listening to a very popular radio station in my region, and I saw all cars around me on the highway swerve a little bit when a commercial with sirens came on. Very dangerous stuff, if you ask me. Oh yeah, it is. George Carlin once said, think of how stupid the average person is, and then realize half of them are stupider than that. What real life examples have you seen that validates this view? Oh, this is gonna be good. One guy I met said English is the true language of God because the Bible's written in English. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Old boss had a morning routine of walking around the office with a bucket. He was watering all of the plastic flowers. Oh, no one told him. I would do that crap if I thought they looked real enough. A girl in one of my college classes argued that heart transplants shouldn't be allowed because that's where the feelings are, and the person receiving the heart wouldn't be the same person anymore. Oof, good one. Okay, so my favorite was a guy who was planning his honeymoon, but he didn't have a lot of money. He was bummed out about the cost of air travel. A friend suggested a train ride might be cheaper. He became frustrated after a few days of trying and complained that he couldn't find any trains going to Hawaii. Ah, I see. I see his problem there. Getting a misdialed call from a random person who gets mad at you because you're not the one he or she was looking for. Happens with me several times a year, dude. About half the calls I take on a daily basis. People call 911 to ask whether Walmart is open. To report that they didn't get enough mayo on their burger. To complain that cleanup at a fatality wreck is taking too long. All sorts of silly, out of 
touch shit. I really, really hope you get to cuss these people out every now and then out of sheer frustration. You deserve it, and they deserve it. Friend of mine showered in cold water for a year because he never thought of turning the other tap to see what it would do. <laughs> He's been living the more healthy life though, man. I mean, come on, I need that ice cold water. Good way to wake up in the morning. Customers arguing that their tattoo is backwards, while their artist tries to explain that no, the tattoo is fine, it's just backwards like that because that's how mirrors work. <laughs> Sweet, what does mine say? Dude, what about mine? Sweet, what does mine say? You're offered the ability to absorb the knowledge of any book you touch instantly, but the way it works is that time freezes and won't unfreeze until you finish reading that book cover to cover. Do you accept this power or curse? Why or why not? I have my own answer. Yes, so that I can finally reread all the Warrior Cats books and know every little detail. So I can move freely when time is frozen, or am I stuck there reading? Because if it's the former, then what's the problem? If it's the latter, I can learn a lot of skills easily or freeze time by touching Clifford and having a nap. I can't see a downside either way. Hey, could you hold these textbooks for me? Oh my god, yeah, that's- I wasn't even thinking about that. Hell yeah! I get to take my time reading, absorb all the info, and I get enough time to actually read books instead of just skimming? Sign me up! One, I can effectively teleport by reading a book. Two, I am technically immortal as long as I read. Three, there's all the time I ever wanted. What happens if you touch an e-reader or Kindle? Oh boy. I think you'd be fine just so long as it wasn't connected to the internet. Girls who took notes using 50 different colored pens, where are you now? Do you still continue to write using all of those colors? Am I allowed to answer if I'm a guy? Because I ended up becoming the Excel guy in my office. All of my spreadsheets are exquisitely color-coded. There's a PM at my company that does this. No idea how the hell she has the focus and time to take such detailed Technicolor dream notes during meetings, but I've never had a problem with getting any relevant info from her, so gotta respect note-taking game like that. Oh man, I always wished I could take good notes. Certain law school prep guides teach you to take notes on court opinions using different colors. 90% of the first-year law students show up with four different color highlighters. By the end of the last year, few still use them. I will never forget sitting in class and asking the girl sitting next to me for a pen, and she turns back to me with a straight face to say, what color? Eh, I still color code based on class. Each class has a color. This color includes the folder color, the pen color, the sticky note color that the assignments are written on, and placed in my planner on the date they're due. Good God. Unfortunately, not allowed in the line of work I chose. So now, I use 50 different colored post-it notes. Improvise. Adapt. Overcome. You have just been cheated out of a thousand dollars for a stupid brick. How do you take revenge? Dude, I have a brick. Perfect weapon. Beat the shit out of myself with the brick for being that dumb. Say, hey, what's red and bad for your teeth? And when they open their mouths to say something, hit them in the face with a brick. Paint a stick figure on it, call it a Banksy, and sell it for two million dollars like the first guy should have done. Sell it on eBay as the brick from that Reddit thread, and hopefully somebody rich buys it for more than a thousand dollars. Ah, the resale value on scams. I returned it for two thousand dollars. No revenge needed. Clearly this brick is magic. Start a GoFundMe about a homeless brick that was caught on camera giving its only slice of pizza to another person. Take the money, destroy the brick so it doesn't sue you. Ah! A new dating app is launched. Instead of a photo of the person, it shows you a photo of their bedroom, car, kitchen, shoes, how they have their tea or coffee, things like that. What photo would tell you the most about someone and would be the most interested to see to choose a potential date? The subreddits they're subscribed to. Oh no, that's worse than internet history, dude. How they load the dishwasher. Very important, I must say. I'm a big clean bedroom person. I know everyone would just tidy their room for their photo, but if it was honest, it'd be really handy for me. To be honest, I just need an audio file of them chewing. Oh, uh, that's a lot of bad to get through before you find the good. Their bathroom. I feel like I judge a person on the state of it. I feel uncomfortable if it's in a state of real uncleanliness due to you using it to be clean. Also, if their towels are constantly damp. Ugh. I would never have married my wife if I knew how her room looked. Feels like a scene from Indiana Jones some days. Instead of snakes, cats jump up from under piles of stuff. Cats. Why does it always have to be cats? Their kitchen sink. Oh, yeah, it better be empty, bro. You gain control of JK 
Rowling's Twitter account for a day. What unnecessary piece of information do you add to Harry Potter lore? Potter Puppet Pals is now canon. Oh, finally, when they killed Voldemort with the Uzis. Oh, it was awesome. Buckbeak is an Animagus who was fully intelligent and capable of turning back into a human at any time, but he doesn't because it's his fetish. Ah, Harry's favorite finger for no reason. It's his left index finger. <laughs> All Hogwarts students are required to take a sex ed course. The teacher? Hagrid. Make that fan theory that the surviving Weasley twin becomes the Gene Wilder Willy Wonka later in life. I don't know. I still prefer the theory that Snowpiercer is a sequel to that same Willy Wonka. Ron grew up to become Ed Sheeran. I don't know, we saw him grow up. He didn't look that much like him. The Sorting Hat was 100% unnecessary for class distribution, and its primary purpose was to get rid of head lice. Ooh, I like that one more. If OK Boomer was a digital assistant like OK Google, what sorts of answers would it give you to certain questions? OK Boomer, where's the nearest recycling center? We have trash cans. OK Boomer, directions to 5th and Montgomery. We don't need a map, I know where it is. Wait a minute, uh, OK Boomer, engineering job listings in my area. Job listings? You're just playing around on the internet. Figure out where you want to work and go down there. Ask to speak with the manager, shake his hand, look him in the eye, and ask for a job. OK Boomer, wake me up at 6. Wakes you up at 5. Get up, it's 6. Okay, Boomer. How's the weather today? Open the window and stick your arm out. Is it wet? That must mean it's raining. Is it cold? Put on a sweater. Try figuring out things on your own, kiddo. Okay, Boomer. Open YouTube. How? Can you show me? Okay, Boomer. Call my husband. Only if you tell me when I'm gonna get grandkids. It's about time. Former Flat Earthers. What made you come round? The Mobius Strip Earthers had more compelling arguments. Quote I got from somewhere. For five years, I believed the Earth was flat. Then I turned six. A serious answer here. The thing that made me stop was just the question, why would NASA lie to you? Had to travel to Japan. Gave up on my beliefs in order to make a shorter trip. Ah! I was tired of living life on the edge. Where do you live? Other than the edge. Surprisingly enough, facts and logic, more specifically star patterns. What we can observe cannot happen on a flat Earth. No one took me seriously. You know what? Good for all of the ones that were trying to be serious there. Good for them, man. If instead of rebooting movies, retelling them from a different point of view became possible, popular, which movie would you like retold? The Game, starring Michael Douglas. I want to see it from Consumer Reaction Services' point of view. I want to see how they manage all the actors and situations to make sure everything goes the way they want it. Final Destination? From Death's perspective. I imagine it would just be a skeleton hand setting up deadly Rube Goldberg machines with some classical music in the background. Oh, I would kill for that. Groundhog Day. A day in the life of Ned Ryerson. Mean Girls told by the girl who doesn't even go there. Oh. Sir David Attenborough's Jaws. How about Cloverfield from the view of a professional camera crew? <laughs> This is what makes Cobra Kai so damn good. He's right, though. Not a movie, but I would definitely watch Breaking Bad from the perspective of Gus Fring. That dude has a crazy story to tell. E.T., from his point of view, though. Very important. How the F do you make friends as an adult if you don't drink? I would also like to know. Slowly. Hobbies, community involvement, through work. Good luck. I started inviting people from online dating sites who said they were looking for friends to play D&D. Some of them were actually looking looking for friends. I also started a fencing group in my area and advertised it in relevant Facebook groups. A few people showed up and now we occasionally do things that aren't fencing related. You see someone doing something you do or like to do or are curious, hit them with a compliment and then with a follow-up question. Met some of my best friends because I liked the colon they were wearing. <laughs> Edit cologne, keeping the error I am not myself today. Have you considered joining a cult? They're not your real friends, you know. Join clubs, meetups, activities, hobbies, work, volunteer online or simply go out to socialize during the day or early evenings. Hey, look, people are day drinking in droves these days, all right? You stand too close to random people at grocery stores, and when they ask you what's your problem, you tell them you don't have any friends. Then hug it out, and you become friends. What's the coolest website you visited that no one knows about? Ah, this one. It's an interactive website that showcases what makes the prisoner's dilemma cool. Ah, presidential ham. My high school substitute son is an artist who painted each U.S 
U.S. president holding a ham. I have no idea why, but I go there sometimes for a laugh. Temp Mail. This website instantly gives you a new unused email, and also one that you can use for junk and crap and getting past things. It's great! The Candy Box 2 is one of the best websites out there. It's an RPG-style quest made completely of text and symbols. Nation States. Online Nation Simulator. The core of the game is pretty simple. Answer multiple choice issues that appear once every six hours. Depending on what you pick, the stats of your nation, everything from cheese export to citizen rudeness, will change. The fun really starts on the forums, in my opinion. Radio Garden. Listen to radio stations from any country on the planet. K-pop from Seoul? J-pop from Tokyo? Want to marvel at the fact that everyone and their dog has a radio station in the Netherlands and Belgium? Huh, I'm going to use this website all the time, unironically, for realsies. What mind-blowing but simple facts would satisfy a four-year-old daughter's daily request for one fact before bedtime? Dogs can tell when you're coming home by how much of your scent is left in the house if you have a daily routine. Most people have more than the average number of arms. Oh, a day on Venus takes longer to complete than a year on Venus. How? It simply takes longer for Venus to do one complete rotation around its own axis than it does for the planet to rotate around the sun. The name for the Arctic comes from the ancient Greek word for bear, Arctos. Named after one of the constellations Ursa Major, Big Bear, or Ursa Minor, Little Bear. But there are bears living there too, so basically the Arctic is called Bear, and the Antarctic is called Not Bear. <laughs> Otters have skin pockets for their favorite rocks. Oh, cashews come from a fruit. Most elephants weigh less than a blue whale's tongue. In Switzerland, it's illegal to own just one guinea pig. If you have any, you have to have at least two. They get lonely. People who downloaded their Google data and went through it, what were the most unsettling things you found out they had stored about you. Oh, I found out they store every single question you ask your Google Assistant, all the way back to when it first arrived at your house. Creepy. That there's a map of everywhere I went in the last couple of years that's accurate to the hour. Oh yeah, I know all about that. I'm a contributor on Google Maps. I'm the vice president of a company that I've never heard of, and I can't find any other info on it. Huh. I got drunk once and proceeded to lose the way home. Well, ended up cycling on some highway. For two years, I wondered where the hell I'd been until I saw Google's location history for that night. Apparently, I sleepwalk thousands of kilometers and then manage to get back home in time for work. Also, a bunch of recordings of my computer's fan spinning. My activity is empty. It has been for a long time, so there shouldn't be anything for me to download, right? Nope. Six gigabytes of data. Now, what do you know is true without evidence? What are you certain of right down to your bones without proof? The Truman Show was made to make me think the entire world watching my every move was a ridiculous notion. But I know better. That my cousin stole my holographic first edition Charizard Pokemon card back in the early 2000s. Jerk. I know for certain that the comments on this post would look different on Facebook. <laughs> my brother deleted my game save on purpose. He was old enough to read and knew what he was doing. For every sock that goes missing, a Tupperware lid appears. This is the truth. That my last boss secretly hated me even though we had, on the surface, a very positive relationship. Yeah, I felt the same way about one of my ex's families, specifically your sister. That a lot more famous actors than we realize are secretly the children of other famous actors from the previous generation. I call it the Hollywood bastard theory. No, I don't think it's a bastard theory. I think it's just nepotism. Want to be a famous actor? Have Will Smith as your dad. <laughs> no matter what people think of your career, you will be famous. People who can fall asleep within eight seconds of their head hitting the pillow? How the hell do you fall asleep within eight seconds of your head hitting the pillow? I would love to know. That's my secret, Cap. I'm always tired. Stay awake until you fall asleep on the couch, then groggily walk to the bed when you inevitably wake up. Yes, but couch tired doesn't translate to bed tired. I'm a firefighter, and my one partner says what he likes least about me is my ability to fall asleep so fast after returning from a call. It helps to be physically tired. Much easier to fall asleep when your body's been engaged in physical activity during the day. That's very true. When I worked for the stage union, IATSE, bro, I would come home and just, pff, I'm done. My brother is one of these people, and I asked him this recently. Him. The trick is a clean conscience. I got nothing to think about. How do you not think about anything? I don't know. I just stop thinking. What a gift. I turn on Netflix or Hulu to a show I've seen a million times. I turn away from the screen and fall asleep. That's how my mom has to sleep. Also, I can't sleep without a fan. Not possible. My friend does this. We'll be playing video games, then he'll suddenly be tired and good night. Literally seconds later, I can hear him snoring in his room. I've worked 20 plus shifts and uh, being ridiculously tired. It still takes me 20 to 30 minutes at least. So I don't know what the answer is. I think it's just brain chemistry. How 
would you feel about school taking up an extra hour of your day to teach basic adult stuff like washing clothes, basic cooking, paying taxes? Oh, hey, you mean home economics and shit like that? Teaching kids how to be adults? I don't know anybody in my age group that took home ec, but I got to, thank God. When I was working at a UPS store once, I had a dude that was at least 40 years old ask me how to address a letter. I mean, come on. I'd be opposed to the extra hour, but not the activities. School was already an eight hour a day thing. Pushing it up to nine means it actually becomes longer than a full-time job, and that's before you get to homework and other shit like that. Yes, we need to replace something that's not really useful to kids and give them this as an option, I'd say. They do it already. It's called life skills here. Edit. Eight hours. It's only six here and we get it done. What the fuck are you wasting three hours on every day? My public school had classes that teach these things. I graduated high school a decade ago. I took home economics and learned how to cook. I took financial literacy to learn about taxes and budgeting and investing. Yep, don't know where that's going. Your grandparents had home economics classes for the girls and shop trade classes for the boys. Every once in a while, a member of the opposite sex would sign up for and take the wrong class to much humor. They don't teach home ec or have shop classes anymore? Just depends on where you're going. I haven't seen a shop class since the seventh grade. I just, I don't know, man. Although my high school did have wood, metal, and auto shop, although they got rid of the driver's ed class. Very confusing shit. I think that they already waste enough time and it would be worse for kids whose parents already taught them that stuff. Make it an elective then. Washing clothes really is a 20 minute lesson and cooking and taxes have their own elective classes already. Never seen a tax class. <laughs> I know that's not all it is. You know what I mean. It's so funny how many of you think that kids will actually be interested in learning about taxes, stocks, etc. In what world do you think high schoolers would be attentive in a class about budgeting or taxes? Have any of you met high school kids before? Yeah, try to invalidate the whole question by saying, kids stupid. Yeah, I was a high schooler, so were you. We were shitheads. What was the best you have no power here moment you've ever seen? Oh boy. The first time I had dinner at my parents' house after I got my own apartment. My dad was giving me grief as usual. Finally, I stood up and said, I don't live here anymore. I don't have to put up with you this way any longer. I'm going home and walked out. Most liberating moment of my life. My boss calling me at 7 a.m. on a Saturday to ask if I could lay some flooring for a friend of his at nearly half my normal rate. <laughs> yeah, Hard pass, Andy. Woman complained that we wouldn't fill her clearly fraudulent C2 prescription. Brought the brand new store manager back to the pharmacy to make us fill it. She says you have to fill it. God himself cannot make us fill anything if it fails the checks. No. My parents came to visit, and my mother, who's very old-fashioned, the woman should be a homemaker, and if not, she shouldn't out-earn the man kind of old-fashioned, told my wife, who makes stacks as a dev team manager compared to my peanuts as a sports sports writer. You know, dear, you really should try to keep a cleaner house. And without looking up from her making lunch, my wife said, yeah, your son forgot to clean this week before you guys flew in. The stunned look on my mom's face was priceless. I fucking bet it was, dude. When an unhappy client threatens to go hire a better lawyer, they don't seem to get that this isn't a threat when they aren't paying me. <laughs> What's your favorite poverty meal that you still eat regardless of where you are financially? Bowl of cereal. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm Mexican. For us, it's usually quesadillas without meat, rice, and black beans as the side. Boiled potatoes and butter. Don't care if I'm rich or poor, that is my go-to snack. Doll? I have no idea what doll is. That doll? Dal? Doll? Aside from turmeric, you can buy all the ingredients for less than $2 a pound. Oven-baked potatoes with salt and margarine. Cheap ingredients found in almost every home and easy to make. Also, the starch in the potatoes makes you feel full for pretty long. Soup boiled down with rice to bulk it up. Peanut butter sandwich. Based. That's, that's, hey, that's mine. My go-to. Stew. There could be anything in there, but it's still delicious. Hot dog in baked beans jail hello everybody my name is Mason and welcome to MK asks what are some methods you can use to protect your lemon tree from those lemon stealing <laughs> Never take more than 10 seconds without looking at your lemon tree. I like to keep my lemon tree next to my bathtub. If I need to look away, my lifeguard can keep an eye on it. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Marry one. Then she will chase away the other lemon stealing. <laughs> Automated lemon juice turrets that will target your eyes. This way, they can't have any lemons and you have a lot of ammo. Plant two lemon trees. Set a banner in front of one mentioning for me and of another for lemon stealing. <laughs>
trapped. No one can stop them. The bear traps only delay the inevitable. Install a sign that says, Those who venture from Shelbyville to this sacred lemon tree, beware, beware, for Springfieldians will hunt and kill thee. Australians of Reddit, since no peace treaty has been signed to officially conclude the Emu War, how has life in this constant state of war been for you? We've kind of reached a balance of mutually assured destruction. We don't bring in the tanks and nukes, and they don't bring in the cassowaries and drop bears. Pretty brutal, really. My dad was attacked by an emu once. He's bald, and his head's a little shiny. He was sitting on a bench at a wildlife park, and the emu must have been attracted to that shiny reflection. Snuck up behind him and bit his head. I've never seen someone jump so far in one leap before, or since. As a child, this traumatized me a little, and now I am pretty uneasy around all kinds of birds. We took back the cities, but it's in our minds that any day could be the day that we need to pick up our whacking sticks to defend our barbecue retreats from another invasion. After months of negotiations, the koalas and kangaroos are now our allies. We had to give the kangaroos half of Sydney as part of the terms. The large emus left in Sydney are ostracized. Ostrich size. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's a good one. Some of them are immovable. Hey, hey. We are moving into spring. It is a terrifying time for us all as their allies, the magpies, launch sorties. Pray for us. Pray for us. Currently in the green zone, otherwise known as Tasmania. Everything is back to normal life now. Things got scary for a little while, but our premier looked after us. Got our border shut down early and it's paid off. Everyone knows that emus can't fly over the base straight. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then and crawl, but whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. What are your life examples of this? Exercise. A couple months ago, I was crawling. Now I'm walking. Dad, I'll ever be flying, but at least I'm stronger than I was. What, did a baby write this? My career. I feel like I'm flying now, but holy smokes, did I start off as a slow crawl, though. Hey, proud of you. This is extremely minor, but I completed a 5K. I'm not a runner. In fact, I hate running. I have short legs and small feet. I'm slow and overweight. I did train, albeit not much. The first thing that came to mind was getting sober from drugs and alcohol. This process describes perfectly what I went through. Excellent quote. I don't know if this has been said before in this post, but there's a phrase that I constantly think of whenever I feel like I can't move forward. An arrow has to go back in order to move forward. That's nice. I, I like that. I, I like that a lot. That's nice. When you're lying in bed at night, do you ever randomly remember some relatively minor social missteps or poorly chosen words you did slash said years earlier and then beat yourself up over it even though it wasn't really a big deal? If so, what happened? I went to Dairy Queen with my daughter. She brought along her kitten. The cute girl at the walk-up window asked my daughter what the kitten's name was. Princess was the response. Smiling and feebly attempting to make conversation, I said today to indicate that my daughter changed the cat's name frequently. I got a dirty look and the girl left the window to go make whatever cold treat we had ordered. It wasn't until later on the walk home that I realized she thought I was telling her to hurry the hell up and make my order. Still haunts me years later. When I walked down the aisle at my wedding, I was so nervous and focused on not tripping that I did not acknowledge my dad. Oh, <laughs> what? I didn't realize this until I saw the video my aunt had made for me. You can see my dad lean in to give me a kiss on the cheek, but I just keep walking. He kind of shrugs and then goes to sit down. It's been 18 18 years and this still flashes through my head when I'm trying to fall asleep. In seventh grade, a cute girl asked me to sit next to her. I said my mom won't let me sit next to girls. My mom said no such thing. Junior prom, I blurted out during dinner to my date. I'm so bored and I have no idea why it came out of my mouth. I'm pretty well mannered and quiet. I forget how I tried to play it off, but I felt so bad. Freshman year of high school. It was one of those days before school starts and you meet your teacher and your parents are there. My teacher was handing me a piece of paper and I didn't see the paper, so I shook his hand. He said, oh, and my mom said, um, and I panicked and said, Said I just wanted to be polite. You're gifted 24 straight hours where you and your pets are suddenly able to understand each other and have real conversations like your old BFFs just catching up on some lost time. What would you want to tell them and how would you want to spend those hours with them? I've thought about this before. To figure out what name he gave me. I'd take mine up to the mountains, hike, camp, and just get to know the real them. What makes them happy? Sad. Why do they pee on my husband's pillow? I would tell them how much I truly love them and always will. How happy they make me. Why I don't want them barking at the mail carrier in the very very nice UPS guy. Me to them. Quit eating actual piles of shit, including your own. Them likely to me. Then feed me more. Write down every single quality of life improvement I can make for you. Let's go find your perfect food to eat. Let's make sure there aren't any aches and pains you have that we can't address. Tell me all of your favorite spots, what you like, what you don't, literally everything. Why do you eat so fast and puke on my belongings? Why? Stop knocking over glasses, please. Stop freaking out when I left the house. I will be back like always. If 
people use breakup lines instead of pickup lines, what would some of them be? I will always cherish my initial misconceptions of you. Damn. Damn. Holy crap. If you take the L out of lover, it's over. Raise your hand if you have a boyfriend. Not so fast. Brutal. That's brutal as hell. We need to cover more ground, so we should split up. Hey, babe, I think it's about time we cancel our gym membership. We're not working out anymore. Girl, you're looking like a snack, and I'm going on a diet. Our relationship is like my financial status. Broke. I knew this girl in middle school who would break up with boys by saying, Roses are red, violets are blue, trash is dumped, and so are you. You can't time travel, but your phone has the internet. From five years in the future, what do you search for first? Lottery numbers, stock prices, my name. You may ask why my name, but it's very simple, as I then can learn if I died until then or got caught for some shit. I would start a blog on my PC and then switch to my phone to check if it has updates from the future. If so, my future self could talk to my present self. I could read about my mistakes and try to avoid them. If a post disappears, that would mean I did it right. I'd search to see if the Winds of Winter has been published yet. All sports betting wins of the last five years. How close are we to be able to go to Mars? Like a fax from future me? Do not drink that coffee. Thank memes from the future so I can pre-repost them for that sweet karma. Spoken like a true Redditor. Do you ever look at yourself one day and think you're hot as shit? but then the next day comes and you've become Quasimodo? Why do you think this happens? I know I'm a handsome man from the front, but I have a weird head shape from the side, so I avoid turning my head at all times. If I'm far enough away from the mirror, I look okay. 100% sure I angered a very petty warlock at some point in my youth or adolescence. It explained a lot, really. I look great in my mirror when getting ready to go out, then I show up in pictures looking like LOL. I call it my magic mirror. Put my contacts in. Oh, buddy. Oh, no. <laughs> Quantity of water versus alcohol I've had. Well hydrated and sober looks a lot better. Lighting is a big influence. There was a gif I saw on Reddit a while back showing a light circling someone's face, and they look different every second. Also, if you're pale as f like me, you'd probably look better in yellow lighting than white. What are some slang terms a 50-year-old dad can say to his daughter to embarrass her? Just say, what up, fam? Then when they get mad, yell, world star! I am taking my 14-year-old daughter and her friends to an anime convention. They are all dressing up to cosplay animal characters. I decided to dress up as Indiana Jones, and I guess that is the worst thing in the world and I am now an asshole, it seems. No, no, that's based. When something surprises you, say you are shook. Add an ETH after that for extra effect. You are shooketh. I must be getting old because I came into this thread intending to contribute, but instead I'm taking notes. What's poppin', Jimbo? <laughs> say bruh after literally every sentence. Bruh. <laughs> It's good. That's good. I, I, I'm taking notes myself. I, I'm, I'm only 23. I don't have kids and won't have kids, but uh, I just like to say stupid shit. So, so I, my, I got my pen pad writing down right now. To agree with something she says, reply facts. Elon Musk is now worth $197 billion. How do we sell him? Sell him off as a stock. Start a subreddit for owners called r slash Elon Musk bets and watch as the owners fight over whether he is overpriced or not. By the gram. I know a couple of guys, but the best they can do is $50. Find an alien bidder, preferably one from Mars considering he's a little obsessed with it. Advertise him for 196.9 billion. Perfect example of the ineffable nature of money. If there is no market for Elon, no buyer if you will, then is he really worth anything? The words low battery appear right before your eyes. You take off your VR headset and realize your whole life has been just a VR simulation, which you've been playing for only a few minutes. How do you react? Ah, uh, I tell you how I react, I'd freak the hell out, first of all. Dude, I saw Suck at this. No, oh, me too, buddy. Post a very strongly worded review on how shitty and boring the game is. I go online and find a walkthrough so I don't fail miserably again. Well, since I can afford a VR setup, I must be richer in this new life, so I'd be pretty stoked, honestly. Did I save? Did I save? I'll be amazed how I managed to get fucked up in a game where I'm supposed to be the protagonist. I turn down the difficulty and try again. Steal batteries from the TV remote and keep playing. Duh. What do you think of the idea of adopting elderly people whose children have died as parents or grandparents? Much the same way we adopt children whose parents have died as our own. This reminds me of the programs where kindergartners take the children into aged care facilities and the children pick a buddy and then write letters, draw pictures, and visit their buddy. My town actually has an adopt a grandparent program at some of the nursing homes. They made up profiles with their interests and what they like to talk about so you could choose a grandparent you get along with well. Volunteer to do anything at a senior center. They'll adopt you first. You mean I can get a mom or grandma who will love me and bake me shit and I can entertain and show them my crazy life? Where can I sign up? 
I think it's lovely. Majority of my parents' friends are child-free, and I've done something similar. I visit a lot of them and send them packages. It's always nice to have more great people in your life. You are given a baby on your 21st birthday. The child turns out to be you as a baby. Raising him won't change your life, only his. How would you raise this child to give it a better life than the one you have? Give it to my parents. Don't mock him when he tells me about liking or dating a girl. I hated when my parents did that to me. Make him brush his damn teeth twice a day. Send him to a Tibetan monastery to learn ancient martial arts so he can come back and be the Batman. Listen, bucko, this town ain't big enough for the two of us. Yeet! I too would probably throw the baby. Listen, tell her that she always has someone to talk to, and if she doesn't feel comfortable with me, then we can find the appropriate people. Not downplaying her anxiety with cheer up, it'll get better, it'll be fine. What are subtle red flags at a job interview that say, working here would suck? I always ask about training and learning curves. Every job I've had that went wrong, I noticed that when the question comes up, they stumble. The current job I have, when I asked the question, they had sparks in their eyes as they explained the whole process from day one of shadowing to the transition to working solo. Even when COVID hit, they managed to continue without skipping a beat. They told me all about their generous severance packages. In the initial interview, turnover city. Well, the overtime isn't mandatory, but most folks stick around after hours most days. Spoilers, the overtime is mandatory. Was interviewed by a senior programmer and the department head. The department head was continuously making condescending remarks towards the other interviewer. Poor guy just sounded broken. Hope he's somewhere else now. Besides always hiring, they seem almost overly eager to say, yes, we could do that to everything you ask. No job will have literally everything you want. And if your gut is telling you they seem to be promising a bit more than they can offer, they likely are. My favorite is, there's a lot of people waiting in line to work here. Count yourself lucky. Huge red flag. If they make shifts seven and a half hours long so you don't get a lunch. Waiters, what Valentine Day disasters have you witnessed? I blew my car's tire and my friend came in to bail me out. We're both straight dudes and forgot it was Valentine's. Decided to have dinner and both were coming from important meetings so had suits on. We didn't catch on until the end on how the entire wait staff thought we were just the cutest gay couple. I served at a Japanese hibachi restaurant and once had a couple come and the dude dumps her after the meal. She then gets up and throws up a trail probably a good 20 feet as she runs to the bathroom. The dude got up and left the girl and I was left to clean the mess. There was a note in our reservations that it was an engagement. They wanted champagne, a specific seat, bunch of other stuff. The server comes up to the table with something like, so I read we're celebrating an engagement. Congratulations. Confusion from the woman glaring from the guy. He hadn't proposed yet. She ruined it. Wow. These two were on a date and the guy went to go use the bathroom. The girl just up and leaves after he went to the restroom. When the guy came back, he sat around for a while until asking his waitress where she went. She replied with saying that she left. The guy then asked the waitress if she would go on a date with him. The waitress said no. Okay, buddy. Okay, <laughs> okay, buddy. Sure. He proposed. She said no. He cried and tried to change her mind for 20 minutes while she sat there stone faced. She finally got up and walked out. He paid and left in tears. A guy did a backflip and asked a girl to be his valentine. She declined. I walked up to him and asked if he was fine. He said it took him a week to perfect. Wow. Mmm, man. Redditors who work at remote places like forest officers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? I've been fishing out in the Gulf of Mexico where they have some oil rigs. This rig wasn't being used from what we knew, so we would get pretty close to it to fish for red snapper. While we were out there, we could have sworn we heard screams of a woman over and over. It was some shit, but the explanation was the wind making the noises as it blew through the rig. I work as a polar bear guard, as in, I escort people across tundra and mountains and protect them from polar bears. I once saw a snowman totem with reindeer antlers coming out of its head. It was deformed, full of bullet holes, and rather creepy. I work off a secluded, wooded area here in Texas. Every now and again when I finish with a job site, I'll pop into the head office. It's the creepiest feeling at night, mostly no light, and I've seen a bobcat a couple times. The kicker is, the walls are all glass, so when I have the light on inside, I know I'm being watched by something or someone. I used to work in the Gulf of Mexico on oil rigs for years, and it may not exactly be creepy, but I found it really unsettling. In deep open water, the water itself is really clear, so everyone can plainly see all the tuna and barracudas hanging around the rig, waiting for the onboard cook to throw off whatever food waste he needs to. Every once in a while, a huge great white shark would swim up from underneath and snatch a tuna, and it really took like less than a second. They're really scary. I work on large ships. If you get a clear view of a hall or passage that runs the whole length, you can actually see the whole ship warp and twist with the sea. If the passage isn't very well lit, it can look like a scene from a horror movie. People who are 40 plus and happy with their life, what is your advice to people in their 20s? Don't fall for the trap that your life needs to be one long narrative that you should be building. Life is best when it's a bunch of happy moments that just happen to be connected. Don't try to make your life into a novel. Make it a book of poems. Chris Rock said it best. Now, people tell you life is short. No, it's not. Life is long. 
wrong, especially if you make the wrong decisions. It's never too late to start again. Maintain your friendships. In 20 years, you will be so grateful for those people who saw you through marriages, children, illness, and health. People who will go for a trip with you, love your kids, remember you as a young person, relax more. Don't get angry over little things. Everything you get becomes something you have. Learn how to be happy with having things instead of getting them. 300 to 400 years ago, pirates were a terrifying force to be reckoned with. Now they're family-friendly figures of fun. What will be their modern-day equivalent a few centuries from now? It's already true of Prohibition-era gangsters. Narcos. We don't even need a century to know that just how people idealize these figures of Pablo Escobar and other famous narcos in Latin America. Next on ABC Sports, it's the Tennessee terrorists versus the Indianapolis insurgents. The mafia are already portrayed that way at times. Look at Fat Tony in The Simpsons. Still pirates with a splash of early 20th century American gangsters. I remember seeing a restaurant kids menu with a pirate theme that said, remember kids, a good pirate never takes something that doesn't belong to them. Okay, buddy. Okay, sure. Clowns. In a couple of centuries, we'll have lost our fear of them, and they'll be seen as something lighthearted and slightly wacky with their impractical footwear and whatnot. Wait a minute. What if you suddenly feel a touch on the shoulder following with the words, are you sleeping during my class? You open your eyes and you are at your seventh grade math class. All of the life leading up to this point was just a dream and you are a seventh grader. What are your thoughts? Please, no. I can't go back to middle school. Immediately forgets what I was dreaming about? No, Mr. Teacher. I was just resting my eyes and listening. Depends if you vividly keep your memories or they start fading away like dreams eventually do. Am I able to play flute like Jean-Luc Picard? After 26 years, I finally understand how to do the math. I can get an A now. I lost my wife and kids. Can I find her and meet her sooner? Man, that was one long dream. First thought is they are all still alive and I can hug them. Three siblings and both parents. Second thought is I can live it different this time now that I know what matters in life. What's the best kept secret on the internet? www.acksofgord.com This website has been online since the mid 90s. It's a collection of stories from a guy working at a video game store in Canada. It's like a collection of r slash malicious compliance posts. The gourd is just, but ruthless. The writing style is great and the stories are usually pretty funny. Libgen.is is a source to get almost every fiction or non-fiction book out there. For non-fiction, you press the SciTech button and for fiction, you press the fiction button. You can also get comics and textbooks all for free. It's not Libgen. It's 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 like lib Libgen. It's Libgen. Oh boy. The Minecraft World Seed you found that is amazing. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto, creator of Bitcoin? Who the f my one follower is? Control plus shift plus escape brings up the task manager directly instead of pressing control, I'll delete and then clicking task manager. Well, I learned something today. The Wayback Machine and how you can recover deleted news articles, posts, and otherwise unreachable pages. It's the reason nothing on the internet is truly ever deleted. The identity of the creator or creators of the Cicada 3301 puzzles. People who take massive war crime level dumps in public bathrooms but don't flush. Why? For me, I get confused when there's no paper and no way in hell they had a ghosty. As a janitor, I'd like to know the answer to this as well. Also, why poop in the urinal? I believe it's called the fight or flight response. What if it's so large it just doesn't flush? Can't flush it if it's on the floor now, can I? You're a bastard, Mr. Nathaniel Bennett. Bastard. Jail. Some people like to show off. Not the place to show off, I would say. Probably the most valid question I've come across on this page yet. Working in construction and seeing some of these toilets, I need to know. What is the greatest comeback to an insult you've ever heard? My best friend, after an argument with some kid from our school in a shop, we began walking away down the street. Kid. Where are you going? <laughs> friend. Your mom's house? Kid. My mom lives the other way, idiot. Friend. Nah, I meant your real mom. Air traffic control doing a poor job of vectoring an Airbus A330 in for landing. Pilot. You've left us too high. I don't think we can make the approach. ATC. You've got speed brakes on that thing, don't you? Pilot. After a noticeable pause. Yes, but those are for my mistakes, not yours. A dude in my class called out a semi-friend of mine that people are talking behind his back. In fact, that wasn't the case. As far as I know, and that guy said, well, you know what they say about you? Nothing. Nobody f***ing cares. So there was two girls fighting and one of them looks at my sister who was minding her own business and says, you go to hell too. My sister. Do you want me to say anything to your mom? Dude. No shot. You said that. Oh my God. Context. John Oliver from HBO interviews Stephen Hawking. May he rest in peace. John Oliver. And there may be a universe where I am more intelligent than you? And then Stephen Hawking says, there may even be a universe where you're funny. Get his ass. A guy makes fun of his bald friend by rubbing his head and saying, wow, your head is as smooth as my wife's bottom. The friend
friend also rubs his head and says, wow, you're right. To every Redditor who feels lonely. Hi, how was your day? Lonely. Also, I had a lot of stuff to do. Didn't do any of them. I actually like my own company, but it can get tiring. I am trying to slowly teach myself after a six month breakup now to love. Not those around me, but myself. As I have forgot to care for myself like I care for others. I ate a lot of iceberg lettuce. It was great. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Guy's name, the guy, the Redditor's name is Lettuce Lover. Oh my god. I mean, hey, really, really fitting username. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. That was good. That's really good. Thanks for asking. I stayed in bed most of the day, not feeling up to seeing humans today. Wish I didn't have to work so I could play video games today. What if 2020 isn't the bad year, but it's the start of a bad decade? Not much I can do except make the best decisions for me and keep chugging along. Mad Max, here we come. The last Reddit post will be a picture of a desolate planet with an endless F comment section. No problem. Just wait for the smartass who comments, the decade starts on 2021. It doesn't. Why do you say this? I will go to the CEO of Bad Stuff and personally ask them to stop. Take one for the team, Michael. We appreciate it. Which job is a lot less fun than most people expect? Oh my gosh, build a bear. Weirdest and most frustrating thing. Granted, I didn't make it a super long time in the job and seeing kids so happy is great, but they are really strict and the bad times get pretty bad. I'm a forensic scientist and it's literally the only thing people ask me about on dating apps. It's very very technical work and extremely routine. Professional photographer. Not like hobbyist, but business owning photographer. Sucks the love right out of your work because you started the business to take pictures. Then Karen doesn't like the way she looks in one of them, so she wants the whole set for free, plus a reshoot for free, plus those images for free. Now get a, get a life, Karen. Barnes and Noble. Your job has literally nothing to do with books, and it obviously attracts a lot of that type, myself included. I do closed captioning. While I joke that yes, I get paid to watch TV, it's actually very tedious. And if you don't actually enjoy the programming, you're being forced to watch something you don't care for. I'm a marine biologist. I spent the last week measuring defrosted fish heads. Goodbye. What Bible story would qualify as a Florida man story? Florida man kills his brother in a field, says he was jealous of what the Lord gave him. Florida man, whose wife went missing, claims she turned into something that looked like bath salts. Left-handed Florida man stabs overweight politician with sword. The sword disappears into the politician's body, never to be seen again. Florida man caught with a bath containing 200 foreskins of men from his neighboring community. Reports indicate that this is the same individual who killed local heavyweight celebrity by flinging a pebble at his head several years ago as a teen. Is that what happened to that guy? And the Bible has some weird character development. Florida men try to build a tower to the heavens but abandons project due to poor communication skills. I'm your host Robin. Welcome back to Ask MK. People who shove their school papers in their backpack with no binder or folder etc. Where are you now? Wildland firefighter. Don't really have put any papers in my bag anymore. Though I do subscribe to the stuff your tent in the bag strategy over folding it because the folding strategy doesn't work and we have to talk about that. Lost in a sea of overwhelming guilt for my lost exam papers from six years ago. Shoving papers into my laptop bag or tool bag desk drawer man. I'm a doctor now so I just shove them in my white coat instead. I like that image. I'm working on a sweet potato farm. I guess that tracks. Decent office job. I no longer shove my papers into a backpack. That's what my desk drawers are for. Redditors who have tried to hide on your cruise when it ended so that you could stay on the ship the next round. How how did that go? This one seems pretty darn specific, I must say. There was an episode of This American Life, I think, where a woman did this, but back in the day, like 60s or early 70s, there were seating charts or something in the dining room so she couldn't sneak in to eat, and things that she assumed would be open most of the night, like bars, weren't. She lived on a lot of bar garnishes and had to pretend she was drunk. Huh, that doesn't sound very fun. How's that worth the effort? I work for Carnival. We will find you. We know you're on the ship, and we all want you to get off so I can take a short nap before I have to do it all over again in a few hours. Ugh, the cruise industry needs to go bankrupt now. I know you're planning something, OP. <laughs> Maybe. It is all electronic hard swipe now. Everyone monitored all the time. All of the japes and scrapes of being a stowaway, one step ahead of the steward, is in the past now. I don't know if this counts, but my dad got locked in a toilet cubicle on a ferry to France, and it took several people to find him. The toilet was right out of the way, and you couldn't hear him yelling even right outside in the corridor because the doors were so massive. I guess he could have gone immediately back to England? Could have, become a ship toilet hermit, though. <laughs> oh, that's my backup career choice. Been doing this for a couple of years now. They slapped a name tag on me, and now I work here. 
Oh, shoot, my condolences. What are some little-known relationship green flags? Ah, good question. Willingness to forgive when you make a mistake or speak in anger rather than hold on to a grudge or try to punish you doesn't mean they won't still be upset, of course. When you like the person that you become when you're with them, everyone projects a different version of themselves around different people. And if you don't like who you become when you're with someone, it's probably not going to be the healthiest relationship. Your SO should bring out the best in you. The ability to coexist in very companionable silence. Oh, that was actually a tough word to read. I don't know why. If it's a chore that you both hate, you do it together. My late husband and I both hated folding laundry, but it had to be done, so we always did it together. Made the chore less of a pain. Wow. Sharing the burden of the house life. It's a pretty convoluted story, but I was dating a guy, had to drive his car to get him from a situation, and wrecked his car due to a mechanical failure. I called my mom to come get me so we could go get him. Rescued him. Then had to tell him I'd wrecked his car. His first question, are you okay? My mom overheard. That one's a keeper. Yeah, that should be your first goddamn question. Came home from working a 12-hour shift one night to a full dinner with my favorite dessert. Never had a girlfriend just decide to cook me a full meal, you know? Damn. I feel like there's a lot of detailed examples that largely boil down to things like this. Empathy and emotional maturity. Wow. Communication really is important, isn't it? Who woulda thunk a lunk it? If you could take a pill to skip sleep, allowing you to feel fully rested with no side effects, would you do it? What would you do with a full 24 hours? Honestly, not much. I think I'd go crazy with boredom, man. That sleep is just a nice reset on the day, especially once I've lately run out of ideas for things to do. Probably procrastinate more. Here's a webcomic about an entire society that starts taking that pill. Society stretches the workday out to 18 or 20 hours, often of meaningless stuff. The main character is allergic to pills and needs to sleep, so it's considered a disability that he can only work 16 hours a day now. And there's a bunch of other side effects. Huh, so it sounds like living in hell. Complete the stack of games I don't have time to start. Complete the stack of books I'm too busy to read. I'd probably save that pill forever and use it on one of those rare but miserable times where I have to drive late at night. Not very exciting, I know, but dying is very exciting either. Hell no, I sleep to escape. Learn to play guitar and paint. Hmm, sounds fun. No, I enjoy sleep and dreams, so you can keep your fancy stay awake all day pill. Yeah, remember what that other guy said? If something like this actually existed, the powers that be would never let you stop working. You would die standing. What teen movie is the epitome of the older I get, the more I agree with the adult. Rewatching Scrubs, I realize I'm no longer a JD. I've become a cox. Yeah, doesn't take too long. I watched 16 Candles recently, and now I do not approve of Samantha going anywhere near Jake Ryan. Sadly, the wonder years. I always couldn't believe the dad was real, with his pissed off attitude from work. Now, I understand. The movie Juno. Jennifer Garner's character is at first portrayed as a square. Then you realize she's a mature adult, and her husband is a man baby. Oh, yeah, he is. He's such a fucking child, dude. Not a teen movie, but Father of the Bride. Watching it as a kid, Steve Martin seemed like an old rump. Rewatching it as an adult, holy shit, he's the only sane person in that movie. Winnie the Pooh. Rabbit was never against playtime, but can you just not do it in his house or garden, you little... What is... I've never seen that word before. A popular saying is, nothing is ever lost on the internet. But what's something you've been searching for for years that you haven't found yet? Ooh, I got one. It's an old World of Warcraft video where some guy solos a boss from Black Fathom Deeps on his own. Not for the content of said video, but because of the song. This really weird, peppy, upbeat song in a language that, well, I could say for what it was when I was a child, but I think it's gone. The night that Tony Hawk did verse 900 back at the 99X Games. They played a music video-like thing with Peter's The Perfect Day showing all his misses, and then finally the hit. It basically doesn't exist, and it bothers me. The Antique Roadshow episode where the appraiser asked the owner if they had cleaned a priceless hell, and they responded with, I hit it with a little lemon pledge, and the appraiser visibly shivers. There was a quote that I read on the title of a post that went something like, just because you've gone down 90% doesn't mean you can't go down another 90%. It's related to the stock market, but can also apply to life. I've wanted to find out who said that for the longest time. What color is Groglin Gray? Grandfather always talked about painting his house Groglin Gray, but I can't find any reference for it. Yeah, that does sound a little odd, doesn't it? That song I can kinda hum, but only know one word to, and to Google song lyrics plus love would, well, clearly be ridiculous. <laughs> All the shitty Fruity Loops music I made in my early 20s that was on MySpace. See, they say nothing's ever lost on the internet, but when you actually delete something, well, over a certain period of time ago, it's probably gone. Like my original YouTube channel, I deleted that like 11 years ago and all the content on it. It can't be found again. Guaranteed. If you could telepathically say something that all 7.8 billion people on Earth could hear at once, what would it be? Ooh, this one's gonna be fun. Whomever just farted managed to disturb the eternal conscience. I don't like that one. Something along the lines of 19 remain. They won't know what the 19 are. People? Hours? Deaths? This will most likely spiral them into insanity. Ah, calm down, Satan. According to my YouTube statistics, only a small 
small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, please subscribe. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Also, there's been a YouTube clip that's been going around that makes you unsubscribe randomly. So if you could just scroll down and check if you're subscribed, it would help me out a lot. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Uh, <laughs> no. Wake up. We all miss you. You picked the correct religion. I am real and this is the proof you've been asking for. Dude, that would just end the world. Uh... That'll get the message across. <laughs> Hello, world. Oh, huh, that's fair. That's a classic. What song is 10 out of 10? Yet hardly anyone has heard the song. Okay, well, I can't read that by air. There's a group called air. Take my head. Turnover. Medicine by daughter. Also by daughter is very good too. Whisper. The deer hunter. Anesthetize. Porcupine tree. Ooh, I like that group name. Thank you, scientist. Mr. Invisible. Pretty much this entire band. This is their most popular song. Their sound is really hard to describe. It's part rock, part jazz, part prog. Yes, I know it stands for something else. <clears throat> I've seen the live twice and they're as good if not better than in the studio, which is stupid impressive. Anything by Gregory Allen Isakov? His music is really calming and always makes me feel sick. Ghost Ride by Crumb. Alright, who's gonna make the Spotify playlist with all of these? You know, I've actually got a couple that come to mind. Make a New Dance Up by Hey Ocean, or really anything by Hey Ocean, or Miniature Tigers for that matter, like Cannibal Queen or Crying in the Sunshine. People who quit their jobs on the first day, what was your I'm out of here moment? Not technically the first day, but the second. When I was 20 or so, I got hired to be a temporary floor member for Forever 21 during the holiday season. My training started a week before Black Friday, so the store was already kind of in chaos. On my first day of training, I walked in and the floor manager gave all the new hires a tour, showing us the facility and layout of the store. After this, I was assigned to a veteran floor member to shadow and get an idea of what my job was and what my duties would be. As soon as I was assigned, the manager dipped never to be seen again. I used to work at a craft store as a cashier, but quit when I moved. Ended up going back a couple of years later to make some extra cash, but this time in the framing department. During the interview, they swore up and down I would only ever be a backup cashier because I said I refused to have full cashier shifts. First shift after interview is listed as framing, but I'm put on cash and told that actually most of my shifts would be cashiering since they found someone else for framing. I spent the next six hours giving everyone who came by register 20% off of everything and then never went back. When I burned my hands all night on the tops of hot plates as a food runner, they wouldn't let me use towels to carry them and said I just had to get used to it. Nope, I was 17 and working precast concrete. Refused to use a rusted to shit ladder. Supervisor called me a pussy. Got up about seven rungs before his foot went through one. Heard his foot snap as he fell. I called an ambulance and then walked to my car in the parking lot. On the first day of working at Amazon's warehouse, the managers broke down to everyone how a 15 minute break works here. Walking to the break room was two and a half minutes. 10 minutes of actual break and then two and a half minutes to go back to your stations. It took me two and a half minutes to walk to my car and I took a forever break. Oh yeah, my buddy Brandon, who's actually about to start on this channel very, very soon, had almost this exact experience. Don't work for Amazon. I noped out of an interview one time, thanked them at the end, and said it wasn't for me. Those interviewing, management level folks, started arguing with each other in front of me during the interview. I figured if this was the vibe at the management level, then I sure as hell don't want to be your employee. Oh yeah, that would have been terrible, dude. Have you ever woken up in the middle of a dream, and the dream was so interesting that you wanted to go back to sleep to see the end of it? If so, what was the dream? When I wake up in the morning, I usually usually have around 30 more minutes before I actually get out of bed. If I'm having a dream before I wake up and I go back to sleep, I can usually continue. Last night, I had a dream that I was in some kind of resort or Jurassic Park-like area. I went back to sleep this morning and managed to get into a relationship with a pretty hot dude who was working at the resort. I dreamt I was part of some Eastern European resistance movement who had to speak in code and hide out in abandoned manors in the forest to plan our attacks against some fascist regime. We enlisted the Pope to help us, but when we went to meet him, he double-crossed us because the regime we were fighting somehow knew the Pope was gay and was going to tell everyone. I woke up then, not knowing if my resistance group was executed or if we escaped somehow. I call it my gay Pope dream. I was friends with Jesus in the modern day and he was sound, not preachy. One of the lads, like, I was eating the most delicious chicken nuggets ever. I learned I could fly, but I had to teach myself. Woke up right as I was gearing up for the big test to see how high I could go. Forced myself back to sleep and let me tell you, flying in a dream is way too fun. I used to have lucid 
dreams in my early to mid-20s. As soon as I'd realize I was asleep, I'd start flying or just rising to the ceiling because it was cool. Then my who should I pretend to sleep with? And the excitement over that possibility woke me up every damn time. Imagine having a reverse yell where we rate customers on their attitudes, manners, and how well they tip. What review would you leave? Her kids dropped the popcorn, so she asked me for a broom to let them clean it up themselves. I said it wasn't necessary, but she insisted that she wanted to raise them to be conscious of the fact that, well, if they make a mess, someone has to clean it up. Nice lady. Very polite, but also incredibly awkward for some reason. Me. Very friendly. Usually gets a root beer to start and a coffee after their meal. Eats out on break from lunch daily. Usually wants quick service and minimal interruptions. Sometimes eat with a client. Usually tips well. Made many additional requests throughout the meal during peak dinner hour. Left the table disgustingly messy and did not tip well. The lady who yelled at me on the second day of my first job over the price of milk can have a solid one star. Came on opening weekend. One of the biggest movies of the year. Five minutes before the showtime and was shocked that they'd have to stand in line for their sessions. Then complained to management that they missed their movie. Like, what the hell did you think was going to happen? Like we'd have a reserve place in line for them because of their obvious VIP status as King Douche Lord of Assland came in, ordered, ate their food in silence, left minimal mess and a reasonable tip, then fucked off. My perfect customer. Five stars. People will let their mom count to zero. What happened after? She's currently on one, though I'm not reading that. I'll let you know if she ever gets there. Everything goes black and the last thing I see is my mother's slipper speeding towards me. She was bluffing, but only the first time. Wooden spoon impact. Pussies. My mom started at zero. Oh, I had my sister's Hello Kitty belt imprint left on my ass. Tried it once. She gave a defeated sigh, then chuckled. Then said something like, you're getting too old. That was the day I became a man. I'll never forget my 32nd birthday. What wedding moment made you think, they're not gonna last long? When they were doing the vows and the priest got to the for richer or poorer part, and she said for richer or richer and maybe for poorer. The officiant was not pleased. I think they made it a year. The groom showed up to his own reception wearing a t-shirt with restroom style stick figures depicting a bride and groom captioned game over. As a wedding photographer, I have been to more than my share of weddings. One, it was a real shotgun wedding. Dad didn't realize it would not stand up in court. Only time the groom was more excited to have photos than the bride. She wanted a limo, he thought a hearse would be better, and kept doing lurch impressions from the Adams family. Her friends took turns motorboating her, females, and he said, get it out of your system, as after tonight you'll never get to do that again. Was a good sign. Also, when she dove into the pool with her bridesmaids at reception, in her wedding dress. Don't know what happened, sat down with the bride and groom filling out contract, got the deposit, he stood up and said forget it, and walked out. Two months later, I get told the wedding is off. Three months later, she calls to rebook a different groom. Day of the wedding, I'm at the church, got final payment the week before, no one shows. No one. Just me and the DJ. Huh. You got completely paid for hanging out with the DJ? I'm witnessing one from the sidelines now. My wife's brother just got married this past May. Bride's mother is a big DIY person and went a little nuts with extra flowers, table pieces, decorations, etc. Note I said extra. It was already decorated by the venue. She just took it upon herself to buy and add way more stuff. Anyway, a few weeks ago, she sends my mother-in-law, groom's mom, an email with receipts of all the extra stuff she bought. $7,000 worth. And asked that she pay half since it was technically set up in time for the rehearsal dinner for guests to enjoy. <laughs> it's causing a huge rift between the newlyweds since the bride is taking her mom's side. Damn, you're trying to charge me $3,500 for something I didn't ask you to do? That kind of sounds like your fucking problem. When my sister married her first husband, she mouthed to my father walking her down the aisle. I can make this work, right? They were divorced six months later. My whole family knew it wasn't a good idea since the uh, original engagement a year prior. A fun, light-hearted dance with the groom followed by a close and slow dance with her male best friend. Yikes. There's a population of 7.5 billion humans and 19 billion chickens at any given time. If there was a chicken rebellion, how would you prepare to fight off your 2.7 chickens? Give or take a few. Don't worry, I'm ready for this. I played Fable growing up. The question is, who will the geese support? I've got 10 German short-haired pointers. I just opened the door. You mean a chicken coo? I'm going to wear my snow pants, winter coat, hat, gloves, etc. So they can't peck at me or claw at me. And then I'm just going to whack them in the head with a baseball bat. That sure is the most boring answer. Throw styrofoam on the ground. Those dumb shits never stop hecking it, trying to eat it, or realize it's inedible. Then, pecking it again. It pockets sand for ground birds. I will attack the eyes of my .39 human. My fellow chicken or chickens will attack the groin. In a video game, if you come across an empty room with a health pack, extra ammo, and a save point, you know some serious shit's about to go down. What's the real life equivalent of this? Recent experience. 11 p.m. in a particularly rough neighborhood. Random guy on a bicycle calls out from a distance and is riding towards us at an alarming pace. Me and my friend stand firm, expecting trouble as the cyclist slows his pace. Cyclist, go! Keep walking. What? Cyclist begins to pick up pace again. Madness just happened down the road. Keep moving. Say no more. Couple of minutes later, sirens ring out a couple blocks over. Found out the next day somebody's body was found chopped up and left out in the street. Oh, shit. Your parents bringing you your favorite food and talking in a higher voice.
Chris. Oh no. Hi, I'm Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC. Have a seat. If you can use all your material for an exam, you know you're gonna need it. Coming in early for a quick chat with your boss and all the partners are there. Signing a waiver for your consent. Ooh, no thanks. Your doctor wants to see you in person to discuss the results. When you're walking through the woods and everything gets silent, no crickets, no birds, nothing. People who ask for a pencil every single day in school, how's life going for you? I'd love to give you the long version, but my phone's about to die. Can I borrow your charger? So my best friend did this. We're both adults jobs now. I asked him the other day if he remembers a pen, and he said his co-workers had gotten together to give him a humongous pen stand stuffed with pen to stop him from asking. <laughs> ah, the irresponsibility. Well, I became a nurse. Now I ask for pens instead of pencils, and other nurses hunt me down if I take their pen. I have a sewer in my office that's full of pens, pencils, markers, highlighters, low-temp sharpies, so on and so forth. Anyone can access it that needs one. <laughs> I also have a secret drawer that only I can access. I knew a guy in high school that would say, oh, there's my pencil, anytime he'd see a pencil that someone didn't actively have next to them. Then, he'd put it in his pencil case and go on with his life. Very few people caught on because he was so casual about it. <laughs> I'd ask to borrow a pencil almost any time I saw him do it, and he'd just casually take one out, hand it to me, and say, don't forget to give it back. I never did. What do you use to remind yourself that everything isn't that bad? I remember that Yahoo hasn't given up, so why should I? I'm not homeless anymore. My chronic illness is in remission, so I can feed myself and even work outside of the house. Life is good. I try to remember that we're all just making it up as we go along. I have a roof over my head. I text a friend to see if they want to have dinner. We plan something and cook it with a good drink. Then, another. Repeat as necessary. Life feels pretty good after a few drinks and dinner with friends. Also, I try out a lot of new recipes. That experiences with people is what matters most, not money or material. I think about the fact that all things considered, I'm reasonably healthy and there's no warrant out for my arrest. What are some guys' secrets that girls don't know about? Many men have anxiety and or depression, but we're not going to talk about it and we'll get moderately annoyed at you for bringing it up. And there's a reason for that because we're usually treated like shit or brushed off for it still. Let's get better though. Much, much better. Sometimes we pee on the poo stains in the toilet because we're too lazy to use the scrub. I mean, it's obviously a thing that guys do, but it's not like some big conspiracy level secret or some shit. You know, just clean your toilet. If we haven't carried all the shopping in in one trip, we haven't done it right. Okay. Maybe this is more of a dad secret, but I don't babysit my own kids. That's called fathering, damn it. And if you compliment my appearance, I'll probably remember forever. I still remember when a girl in college told me I look nice with my beard when I first grew it out. I've had a beard ever since. We have the magical power of thinking about nothing. Not true. That's not just a guy thing across the bar. I can't think about nothing. Nice try, Audrey. I'm not telling you what I got you for your birthday. Man spreading isn't a sexual thing. We're trying not to crush our balls between our legs, dude. What video or recording is perfectly innocent but becomes terrifying when you look into the story behind it? The dating game. The concept appeared innocent enough. A woman chooses a bachelor out of the three available contestants and they go on a date. However, the game in 1978 turned dark when serial killer Rodney, you know what, fuck your name, you're a serial killer, was nominated to be a contestant and won the game. The contestant refused to go out with him on the date because she thought he was actually creepy afterwards. She dodged a bullet. Was it literally? One day I saw a news report on a woman's body dropped in a lake. The police were still looking for the body. They interviewed a man who said, that could have been someone's mother. A few hours later, they find out the body was that man's mother. I'm from Czech Republic, and on YouTube, there's a video of who wants to be a millionaire contender, Victor, last name I'm not gonna mispronounce. He's a pretty smart guy and performs better than well. However, later, he's become one of the most famous mass murderers in the history of our country. Oh, all right then. The 2004 tsunami videos. People having fun on a gorgeous day, enjoying the now very wide beach, not knowing the wave of death coming towards them. These teens found a suitcase in Seattle by the sea while filming a TikTok, only to discover that the suitcase contained two bodies. I do remember that, yeah. Tommy Cooper, death on stage. People were thinking that he was acting when he collapsed around dead from a heart attack. What old video games do you still play regularly? Ooh. Command and Conquer Red Alert 2. Worms. This blew up. Stupid, simple, awesome game. Ratchet and Clank. Ooh, damn right. I play Deadlock all the time, man. The Sims 2. Everything about it is perfect to me. The music especially. It has a goofiness and warmth that we don't see much these days. 007 Nightfire. I play through the Baldur's Gate series every year or two. It's still my favorite series of all time. For me, I play through Okami at least once a year. Until recently, Age of Empires 2. Only reason I stopped was because I switched to Definitive Edition when it came out. San Andreas. I sometimes love to play it and drive around the city and cry for the old days. The Secret of Monkey Island. I've spoken with apes more polite than you. If HBO's Chernobyl was a series with a new disaster every season, what event would you like to see covered? I would like the 1917 Canadian Blast. The largest man-made explosion until nuclear bombs in 1945. Not so much for the blast, but for the rebuilding and dealing with it. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire in 1911. 150 died, most of them young women, because the doors were locked to prevent workers from 
taking breaks and inventory, and they couldn't leave the building. This sparked outrage and spurred the development of many work safety standards we have today. Would have been a tragic show, but interesting to see how it changed the safety of work in the West. The owners of the building escaped alive via the roof and then were indicted for manslaughter, got off with paying a fine, and then were found to have locked the doors at their next factory as well. Surprised nobody uh, killed them, honestly. Centralia, Pennsylvania. It's a ghost town because the coal that runs under the city is on fire, and it has been for many years. Thank you for the precious metals. Also, if you're intrigued by Centralia, look up the Times Beach, Missouri disaster that also required the town be evacuated. I'm pretty sure Centralia was one of the towns that helped inspire Silent Hill. What's clearly a scam, but is so normalized people don't notice. Ink cartridges. Printer companies make barely any profit off the printers. They're just vessels to make you buy unreasonably priced cartridges. Hey, please print this document black and white. Fuck you, give me magenta. Yeah, and they do that because they have chips in them programmed to use little amounts of magenta in the red for a better black. No joke. Internet data cap. Fucking scammers. Looking at you, Comcast. The diamond industry. Specifically as it relates to jewelry. Everything that the average person knows about it stems from propaganda and advertisements created by De Beers. They aren't rare. They're not worth what you pay for them. They don't appreciate in value and are a terrible investment. They aren't special. Yeah, you see quartz all the time. It's the same fucking thing. It's just not as hard. Starbucks. I paid $10 for 51 ounces of Folgers ground coffee. Roughly 388 ounce cups. That comes out to about two cents per cup of coffee. At Starbucks, a tall dark roast costs $1.85. I could have 92.5 cups of Folgers at home before I pay for one Starbucks. My tub of Folgers is worth about $703 if I were to sell it at the same price as Starbucks. And I'm using reusable cups every day. I'm just gonna let you know right now. Buying coffee away from home for $1.85? I'm not calling that a scam. I definitely agree on the reusable cups thing every single day, though. That's much better. But, oh no, $1.85 for my coffee? Whoa, no! Why don't you look at the fucking mixed drinks that cost 30 bucks a piece at Starbucks rather than their base coffee, dude? Also, to be as fair as possible, multi-billion dollar corporation that is Starbucks, Folgers sucks ass. Those Keymaster games that usually have something like a Switch and a pair of Beats and stuff. I work part-time at an arcade and physically cannot win a prize until the machine has taken its retail equivalent in cash. The school picture industry. $80 for an awkward picture of my baby? No, I just paid for the privilege of setting up my router. <laughs> they make you pay for that now? Ooh, I'm getting real sick of this shit. If scientists invent a teleportation system but the death rate was 1 in 5 million, would you use it? Why or why not? Just Google, what has a 1 in 5 million chance of happening? The answer? Death by hot tap water. Haven't heard of too many cases, so I take my chances there. 1 in 5 million? Yeah, I absolutely would. Those odds aren't that bad. Depends. What's the death like? If it's like Stephen King's The Jaunt, then hell no. Yeah, without question. With odds like that, it's probably the safest mode of transportation you could find. Sure, I live in London. I'm sure the death rate for just stepping outside of my house is worse than this. That's better odd than flying in an airplane at 1 in 3 million. Damn, really? 1 in 3 million? I don't know why I thought it was worse than that. Lawyers of Reddit, what's a detail that your client failed to bring up to you that completely lost you the case? Opposing counsel, isn't it true you hit the victim in the face with a brick? No, Marcus hit him with a brick. I hit him in the back with a piece of wood. Ah, so your client was guilty and they neglected to mention that. Kinda weird. He'd sent a photo of his wife's beaten face to his wife with a message saying something along the lines of, do you want this to happen again? He came across very well in court up to that point, but his mask slipped when that came out. A buddy of mine's case as a public defender. A gal was busted on drug charges and told him she didn't have any drugs on her when they arrested her. He thought, okay, we'll use that. Turns out she didn't have any drugs on her when they arrested her because she just sold them to an undercover cop. Ah, employment case. We got the deposition of my client and all set up. The first question is, please state your name. The client looks at me and says, can we take a break? We do, and she pulls me out in the hall to tell me she's lied to me about her identity. She's apparently a serial fraudster and has changed identity seven times since the 90s. She's apparently thought the other attorneys had somehow figured it out, and that's why they asked question. Friend of mine's a defense attorney. He was representing a guy with a lengthy record for assault. Basically, this guy took an AC unit, threw it at his girlfriend. My buddy tells me he was able to get a plea deal for one year probation, no jail time. The judge is all ready to accept the deal when he asks the defendant if he had anything he would like to say. The defendant responds, yeah, I don't know why they're charging me with assault. I never touched her. I just threw an AC at her. This is bullshit. <laughs> judge rescinded the plea deal because of the defendant's attitude and lack of remorse. Went to trial, got a year in jail. Oh, dipshit. I mean, he deserved though, so. What's the fastest you've ever seen a new co-worker get fired? Oh, baby. During their onboarding training, they stole my boss's wallet on camera. One hour in. This is the opposite route here, but I found it amusing. My boss was out of town and I managed a tea shop near a Starbucks years ago. This kid came in for it and said he was supposed to start today. We were hiring and I trained him, etc. My boss came back two days later and had no idea. The kid was in the wrong place, but he stayed with us, hired on the spot without even applying. We had a recent college grad that used his corporate card for personal purchases. He figured that the company would just keep deducting from his payroll until it was paid off. He was fired after three months of content reminders 
years to stop doing it. I don't think it qualifies as the fastest because it lasted three months, but it was pretty idiotic. New guy drove a forklift into a fire hydrant in front of a safety rep company. His supervisor was called over and he immediately tells the supervisor that he won't pass a piss test as he used his only bottle of clean piss earlier that day when he was hired in. <laughs> Everybody standing there immediately burst into laughter, which continued as security, also laughing, escorted him off site. Was everyone clapping? Even the supervisor was all smiles. Just gave him a pat on the back and wished him the best of luck. It was wild. I work construction. We had two new hires that were friends starting the same day. Boss told me to take a coffee order and come back. Took everyone's money, said he needed his friend to go with him because it was a big order, and they never came back. What's some juicy gossip you just found out in your personal lives? My cousin's wife finally caught his cheating ass. Three years he's been playing her for a fool, but she actually knew. She just loves him too much. Heard that the asshole who got me fired got fired because of the email that I sent to the company's VP. Apparently, I'm adopted. Not really sure if the ancestry thing works, but I want to find my biological parents. So much stuff is happening, I don't even know anymore. My friend just dropped out of university to become an escort. He's happier, apparently, that my brother asked my mom for $1,000 in rent. She gave him $1,400 so he could also pay back a loan. Then he turned around and also asked my dad for $1,000 for rent, which he also gave him. Then turned around and used the money to buy tickets to Burning Man. My parents aren't going to lend out any more money without talking to each other first. That's a lot of money for Burning Man, dude. What? I just found out my neighbor's been having an affair with another one of my neighbors and the kids figured it out. I used to see them go jogging sometimes. My ex, after one week of being single, started dating this SoundCloud rapper. Now she's pregnant with twins. We're still in our teens. My dad is having an affair. Just found out 30 minutes ago. My mom is devastated, although I had my suspicions. They've been married for 46 years. Dad is 73. Good lord. People who force others into listening to the music by driving a car with windows wide open and the volume 100% on? Why do you do that? See, I hate questions like this because it makes me think, oh, I'm not allowed to listen to my music when one of my windows is down. Oh no, I know you mean the jackasses that vibrate the parking lots and shit, but still, because everyone should be listening to Dance Mix 95 too. My dad does this at 6 a.m. in residential areas with me in the car while dropping me off at my mom's house in said area. Send help. Love the music. Love the wind. My car smells weird. How else am I going to show off my obviously superior taste in music? That's a fair question. It's how I attract others of my kind, like a mating call. What are some tricks in bed that everyone should know? Ooh, spicy. If your sheets keep popping off the corners of your mattress, you need deep or deep pocket sheets. If you have a fan on low, even if it's not pointed at you, it can create the kind of noise that prevents you from hearing every little house click and thing happening outside. Ooh, yeah, that is a dangerous game you're playing there. When it comes to pillows, quality is more important than quantity. Also, don't sleep in your day wear. Sleeping in jeans? Not me. Tuck the most inaccessible corner first when changing the sheets. Change your bed sheets. Having a clean bed sheet really changes the ambience and put your thermostat down a few degrees. Putting one arm under the pillow makes it more comfortable. That is true. Make sure to place torches all around your bed so monsters don't spawn and you can jump into bed right away. What is that, a Roblox joke? Anyways, my name's Brandy and I'll be your narrator for the evening. Welcome back to Ask MK. You get a billion dollars if you can start a massive argument at your family's Thanksgiving dinner. What's your game plan? Announce I'm getting a billion dollars and I'm only sharing with my three favorite people. Can you guess my favorites? First, we would have to have a Thanksgiving dinner. Then I would pay my sister 500k to not come to it. After that, all I have to do is sit back and watch. So Thanksgiving is the same, but I get a billion dollars. Best Thanksgiving ever. Say, I just won a billion dollars and I don't think I'm going to share it with any of you. So my wife and I decided it's the perfect time to become full-time missionaries in China. We're bringing the kids too. You know, my mother-in-law's Thanksgiving dinner tastes better. What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? My mom was driving and a guy ran out in the road, so she stopped so she couldn't hit him. It was nighttime, so it was pretty dark out and three other men emerged from the forest around, all trying to use door handles of her car to get in. She locked them, luckily, and gassed it to the nearest town. Remember to always lock your car after you start it, because if it wasn't unlocked, who knows what would have happened to her. Just like they said, remember kids, always lock your car doors. Artemis Pyle, the drummer from Leonard Skinner, survived a plane crash and walked to a nearby house only to be shot by the homeowner. The homeowner saw a bloody, long-haired man and winged him. Pyle survived that as well and made a full recovery. Okay, that guy just sounds invincible to me. My friend tripped and fell onto the tracks, landing his face onto the third rail. We kind of stood there in absolute shock because we thought he was dead. But then he said, can I move? Will I be electrocuted? We told him to move instantly and he did. We got him off the tracks and no less than two minutes later, a train went zipping by. I think the third rail turned on seconds after his face came off it. I know that's not scary to a lot of people, but to me, it was because I would have lost a close friend back when I was about 12. Oh no, he was a child. Oh no. I was in a crappy motel.
well. The room had bed bugs. I was too exhausted to go to the front desk. I just needed to make it until the morning. I slept in the tub. Hours later, I hear someone break through the window. I had a big knife with me and ran out into the room to find a man halfway through my window. We stared for a while at each other in shock. I think we both were scared. Then he says, is this your room? I'm like, yes, this is my room, man. More staring. Then he slowly starts backing out while cursing me for leaving my window unlocked and not expecting him to break in. What kind of person gets mad at you for leaving your motel window unlocked when they're breaking in? All right, next up. What's a good TV series that can pass time in, let's say, 14 days? I beg you to watch Orphan Black. You know, if you're begging, I guess I'll, I guess I'll give it a shot. I think I'd go for an assortment of miniseries, like The Bridge, Broadchurch, The Night Manager, these kinds of things. I'd probably also watch my way through some classic crime like Perot or the Sherlock Holmes series from the 80s. I haven't heard of half of those, so I might as well give him a shot too. Gravity Falls. I wish it didn't fit within two weeks, but it's gold. That's true. Uh, that is 100% amazing show to watch. Band of Brothers and the Pacific. I guess, I'm guessing this one's a bit of a war buff, if you know what I mean. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. 14 seasons, 14 days. One season per day. That is homework right there. That is, like, I love that show, but that is a lot. The Expanse. It's on Prime, and it's basically Game of Thrones in space, but the White Walker storyline pays off. That right there is how you sell a show. I, I slept on The Expanse, but now I'm gonna give it a shot. If they made a show called White Mirror that was about all the positive aspects of the human technology relationship, what would be the plot of certain episodes? Interesting. Ooh, I wonder what people came up with. I read something a little while back about an AI escaping its lab and living on the internet and subtly manipulating things for the better as it learns about humanity. I would really like to see that idea expanded on. It's like if Ultron didn't hate the world after he went on the internet for four seconds. Fed up with apps like Snapchat and Instagram showing you what you're missing out on, a young girl creates an app which shows all the good memories you don't remember. Now that actually has a lot of potential. I would watch that. Disease and aging are eliminated by science. The earth comes a giant nursery. Once people reach a certain level of maturity, they're sent out to forge their destiny among the stars. The episode would be about the person left on earth the longest and their journey to discover why. A lonely person finds a not horrible group of people with similar interests and eventually meets up with some of them in real life. Remember that episode of Futurama where Fry gets to go back and see his mom in her dream? That would definitely be plot of one. A daughter grows up video chatting with her dad, who rambles on and barely lets her get a word in edgewise, giving loving advice and accolades and familial anecdotes, but who is absent at every major life event up to marriage and always apologizes. She is accompanied to the altar by her mother. Afterwards, the chat with dad has him in tears because he regrets more than anything, missing walking her down the aisle because he passed away while mom was pregnant. What a twist. Oh my god, I need that. How do you deal with an overly friendly neighbor who asks too many questions about your life when you happen to be outdoors at the same time? This is a problem I run into a lot, so hopefully I'll get some good answers here. I live in an extremely religious community, Mormons, so this happens all the time. I used to try to be vague and give hints, but the best technique I have found is this one. I'm kind of a private person, and then I compliment them on something I have noticed. Nice grass, or hey, thanks for checking on me. I know it comes from a good place. Mm, yeah, that's probably the best middle ground option you can go for. I'm that neighbor. I'm an older lady who lives alone and I'm just trying to make a connection with my neighbors. If something happens to me or my pets, I'd like someone nearby to at least notice they haven't seen me in a while or worry about my pets. That's actually sweet. It's a fair, fair response. If you're not very open to chat, just keep things polite, yet quick. It's nice to have a good relationship with your neighbors. If they do delve into personal questions, just say, that's a bit personal, I'd rather not talk about that. Most important thing to do is be polite. Don't be an asshole or act standoffish when it's not necessary. Honestly, just use some common sense. Don't be a Redditor is all I'm saying. Ooh, the shade of it all. <laughs> Sell your house and try again. That's, uh, you know, if that's your only option, uh-huh. I think maybe they're not so much intrusive, just trying to spark conversation. I would say stop what you're doing, give them five minutes of undivided attention. Don't have to reveal too much, just get to know each other. Then wrap it up with an, all right, good to see you. I gotta get back to this. Yeah, but I still don't want to talk to him, you know? What moment made you say, yep, I'm definitely dead, but survive with no major injuries? I had an idiot friend and we were hiking. We got 
to this waterfall and he goes, dude, let's climb it. I said, no f***ing way. He says, well, I'm going to do it. And if I fall and die, it's on you for not coming. So I climbed it with him. Got stuck halfway up on a slick ass rock. Pinched a nerve in my shoulder so my right arm was useless. I thought I was certain to slip off the rock to my doom. But we managed to get me unstuck. So I climbed it with him. Got stuck halfway up on a slick ass rock. Pinched a nerve in my shoulder so my right arm was useless. I thought I was certain to slip off the rock to my doom. But we managed to get me unstuck. That was the beginning of the end for that friendship. Yeah, that, that seems reasonable enough. I survived a car crash that wrecked my car. Rolled twice. Landed upside down. Learned the hard way that I didn't have airbags, or at least they didn't deploy, did have my seatbelt on though. That probably saved me. Paramedic said he hadn't seen a wreckage like that and have it end well. Very, very lucky user here. Very happy they're safe. Parachute deployed, but failed to open. That was one of those moments. Then training kicked in. Cutaway failed shoot, deploy secondary. But for a brief moment, life was about to be over in my mind. And that is why I will not be skydiving. Tire popped going over a two lane road with steep drops on both sides. My car jerked to the side hard and my car went sideways. Half my car hung over the side and luckily it's low so it bottomed out. I climbed into the back seat and jumped out back door. Some dude in a truck pulled me out and I drove on a flat to the other side and swapped my tire out. Went whitewater rafting on the Gali River and my raft flipped on Pillow Rock, one of the most famous Class V rapids. Scariest moment of my life. But other than unexpectedly swallowing some water and almost vomiting, I came out completely unharmed. Whitewater rafting is so scary to me. It is, oh no. You have been accepted for an experiment. You must stay in a room with nothing but bed, toilet, food, water, and no human contact for one month. If you succeed for the whole month without giving up, you get five million dollars. Do you accept? And what are your coping strategies to avoid mental breakdown? No human contact. I've already got that down. I'd probably figure out how to carve on the walls, create art. Yeah, that's actually a good use of your time while you're in there. I would try. I'm a pretty big daydreamer, and I think that between daydreaming and sleeping, I would manage. Their daydreams can only get you so far, I promise. For five million dollars, I would try and I would succeed. You could put me in a pitch black room with a photographer by Nickelback on repeat the whole month and I'd still make it. Day 29, they turn on the night vision and see my ass with a poop hat on, still grinning from ear to ear, daydreaming about all the dope shit I'm gonna zip zap with a million, <laughs> 11 million Nickelbacks. Come on. I think I would start talking to all of the hallucinations I would start having. I would probably do a lot of stuff that involves moving my muscles and touching the walls, floor, so I don't feel so alone. What really obvious thing have you only just realized? That when I was a kid and my dad would take me to the video store on Friday nights and he would go into the back room where only adults were allowed, that he was looking at Oh no. That the phrase mint condition means like new because it's the condition coins leave the mint in. I must have been around 11, 12 years old when I realized that in order of appearance during the end credits of a movie doesn't list the actors slash actresses by who is the most good looking. I learned a couple years ago that it is not the mayor of bad news. It's actually the bearer of bad news. I'm 25. Oh buddy. Oh no. I only just today realized that the walk the plank plank on a boat is not a special edition pirate added to their ships as a means of public execution that looked like a little wood diving board. It is, in fact, the very same plank as the gang plank you'd normally use to get on and off the ship. It is not presence of the plank that is threatening, but the absence of a dock. You have five minutes to hide a paperclip in your home. A detective has 24 hours to find it. If they don't, you get $10,000. Where are you going to hide the paperclip? Up oh, my <laughs> I doubt he's gonna spend 24 hours investigating there, and if he does, win-win, baby. <laughs> no. Give it to my three-year-old. Tell her it's important and to remember where she leaves it. Oh, the reverse. The reverse psychology of it all. Open it out and slide it inside a chicken breast. Put chicken breast in the freezer. Between the radiator fins of the split-type air conditioner, it's easy to insert, yet position is not very accessible and would need to disassemble that aircon just to get a glimpse of it. Burying it with the last detective who tried. Oh man. Men with an anime girl as your profile picture? Why? On all levels except physical? I am a cute anime girl. My cousin's logic was that because the enemy is distracted by the anime, they hesitate before shooting you in the head. My cousin was better than me at Counter-Strike, so I did not voice my many questions of this bit of lobby Q wisdom. It's so my waifu can protect my virginity. Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. I used to use a kid's cartoon character in my online poker profile. I selected it purely so that the other players would underestimate my gameplay and fall easier to my traps. Worked really well. What is not a fun fact? 
bus seats are designed so that you cannot tell how dirty they really are. There is a whale called 52 Blue that only sings at their frequency, meaning it cannot communicate with other whales. It is nicknamed the loneliest whale on the planet. Aw, poor little guy. Your skeleton is wet. Ugh, that just shivers my timbers. Your intestines will wriggle themselves back into the correct position. Doctors who do any type of intestinal surgery don't have to worry too much about how they put the intestine back in. That's the grossest game of operation I've ever heard. A certain type of anglerfish reproduce via the male burrowing into the side of the female, eventually fusing. The male life is lost in the process. Oh, here, gross, ew. When you get a sunburn, it's actually your cells dying so they don't get tumorous. Redditors who cut their grass at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning and wake up the whole neighborhood. Why do you do it? Because 5 a.m. seemed inappropriate. Because my parents made me. I used to have a neighbor that I guess wanted to take advantage of the headlights on the front of his riding lawnmower, so he would mow after 10 p.m. at night. It didn't keep me from sleeping, but it was weird to hear a mower going at bedtime. I distinctly remember my neighbor across the street mowing his lawn during the solar eclipse a few years back. You know how birds and insects supposedly go quiet during these things? We still don't know if that's true. We were trying to figure out why the dude couldn't give it literally two minutes of rest. Damn, Mike, look up. Neighborhood's asshole rooster woke me up at 6.30, so I might as well mow. How else am I supposed to get my white New Balance shoes dyed green? What's an industry secret in the field you work in? I design slot machines for casinos. Don't play slots. I'm an attorney. The secret is shut the f up. Manage boarding and grooming kennels for eight years. The secret is that the employees actually do love your pets too. Even the difficult ones. Most of us realize they just miss their people. The number of times I've weeped when a pet died or spent way too many hours comforting a dog with separation anxiety or spent hours off the clock with a boarder who needed to be rushed to a vet office. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Some pets just suck though. Not gonna lie. I'm a server. No matter how much we insist it's okay that you're keeping the entire restaurant open after we've closed, please know we are 100% lying. We will get fired if we deviate from anything other than pure delight that you are keeping us from going home. We dread it. Please don't believe us. Almost every hairstylist gets the heebie-jeebies when we shampoo their hair and you just stare up at us. Close your damn eyes at the shampoo bowl. Use to screen resumes for small companies. Job requirements are more of a wish list situation. Never let some unchecked boxes deter you from applying. You have no idea what the app can pool is like. The biggest boon, especially at small companies, is someone who legitimately cares. If you have never posted something using your 10-year-old account, what would your first post be? Damn, your Wi-Fi must be terrible. Things I've learned observing Reddit for the past 10 years. I'd be upset that I ruined my 10-year no-post streak. Sorry, guys. I think I was muted. Did you get my posts? Holy crap. You waited 10 years for this? Lol. LL. Laughing out loud. Best time to post on Reddit is like the best time to plant a tree. Best time was 10 years ago. The next best time is now. People who choose to be kind every day despite of not receiving the same kindness back. What motivates you? Because I could be the other person. That's something everyone needs to remember. It could always be you. I try not to reproduce behavior I don't like in other people. Makes me like myself more. I'm kind because I'm kind, not because other people are. Because I know how it feels when you're down in your day, week, month, year just f***ing sucks. And if there's a chance I can make just one person who feels like that have a better day and feel good for a bit, then it's worth it. To be honest, for me, it takes a lot of effort to be a that is also true. It's a lot harder to be mean. How do you feel about a four-day work week? Working a five-day work week just makes life seem so much more pointless. By the time I get the other things I need to do, grocery shopping appointments, etc. done, it's Sunday night. Four-day work week might give me time to play the piano I bought to combat depression. My employer gives us every other Friday off. We work 80 hours over nine days. It's really helpful to have those Fridays to schedule appointments, and I have less desire to burn PTO throughout the year just to take a much-needed Friday off. Through the end of October, October, I had only used 2.5 PTO hours for the year, mostly for doctor's visits. The only real downside is that on the Fridays that we do work, nobody wants to do anything. I'd probably hate Mondays less. Life would be that much better. I would have somewhere around 50 extra days a year to do all the yard work and home projects that I don't want to spend all weekend doing. They talked about this in the 70s. Yay, everyone said. My dad did it. He worked four 12 plus hour days and took off Friday. Everyone else was like, if I work the 12 hours, the four days plus another 12, I can make even more more money. Yay! What's the most amazing thing about the universe? The only way we can see the universe is from inside it. We will likely never possess any way of viewing our universe from outside its physicality. A single human brain has as many neurons as there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Around 100 billion. Source? I'm a neuroscientist filled with useless facts about brain. This is one I thought about recently. I believe that Carl Sagan said that we, sentient entities, are a way for the cosmos to know itself. With this in mind, when we think about the end of our universe, whether it be 
through a big shrink, big cooling, or what have you, we get apprehensive. We probably will never see this end, many of us will be dead. Yet, we still get a cold fear in our hearts. We are also a way for the cosmos to fear its demise. If you were on a planet 65 million light years away from Earth and had a really good telescope, you could see the dinosaurs. Whales are the biggest known creature in the known universe. That every single random event since the dawn of creation, the birth and death of stars, planets and galaxies, the very genesis of life has led to you being here right now to ask this question. Which conspiracy theory is so believable that it might be true that your phone's microphone is constantly hot and it's listening for keywords to target advertising? The most glaring instance where this happened to me was when I walked into a colleague's office. He had just gotten a standing desk, but one that goes on top of his existing desk rather than a standalone model. That's important to know. I said, nice standing desk. When'd you get that? Thanks, just today, he replied. That was literally all that was said about desks. We talked about work-related stuff, and as I walked out and checked my phone, there was an ad on Facebook for that exact model of standing desk. Full credit to the user, the next village, for this one. The arms on a Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton are backwards. They ought to be rotated 180 degrees. What good are these stubby little arms for? We found out relatively recently that T-Rex have feathers. It is now an established fact. T-Rex were not covered in scales, but in feathers, like a bird. Take the arms on a T-Rex and flip them 180 degrees. Now you have wings, like an ostrich. Here's an illustration of an ostrich skeleton. See the small arms? Wings? All rocks are soft until you go to touch them. The ballistic missile threat that was sent to Hawaiian cell phones saying, seek shelter, this is not a drill, that was later deemed a mistake, was a real missile that was intercepted before impact. Dyson purposefully made the cable shorter over time just before announcing the cordless version. My DC-01 has a 12 meter flex, my DC-14 has a 6.5 meter flex. They purposefully made the flex shorter to be an inconvenience and make people want the cordless version. Cops go on ways and leave random police sightings to cause people to slow without actually having to stay and check on people. Assuming athletes would be nude at modern Olympics as they were in the ancient times, which discipline would be the most cringy or the most awkward to watch? Speed walking. Everything just flopping around. That would be... What a sight. Judo, karate, and rugby. Just a bunch of men hugging up on each other. Nothing wrong with that. Vince Carter's dunk of death would be ten times more disrespectful nude, and it's already the most disrespectful dunk of all time. Fencing's gonna be painful, but the shooting is probably gonna be one of those kinks I didn't know I had. Synchronized swimming would just be aquatic <laughs> presentment. Ice skating or speed skating. One crash and it's bye-bye junk. Probably best just to cancel the Winter Olympics entirely. Have you ever laughed so hysterically at something so simple you were starting to get legitimately worried that you were losing your sanity? About what were you laughing so hard then? Every time I see this one vine where it's the GameCube startup sound but it ends with a guy tripping and yelling <laughs> I bust out laughing. I cannot explain why. I was in a large multi-floor bookstore walking down a flight of stairs when I heard a phone ring. A sales clerk answered it. Self-help. May I help you? Me and two friends were working on a movie but we messed up some files and accidentally replaced black screen after a character's sewer slide with a panorama of cinnamon rolls. I was working in a group home, finishing up some paperwork after an overnight shift, and accidentally wrote shampoo instead of shampoo. One of the residents asked me if I needed help. I was laughing so hard. I was in an SAT class and we were going over practice questions. The instructor read out a group of spoon collectors and I began laughing so hard and for so long that I had to leave the classroom. I'm over it now, but it was troubling. Wet soup? Just the idea of going into a restaurant and asking how the soup is and being told wet. Children of I want to talk to your manager. Parents what has been your most embarrassing experience? I was 13 when this happened. My mom had made a reservation at a hotel for a trip but when she got there the lady said there was some error with the reservation and that my mom's payment didn't go through. So the lady offered us a double bedroom for a discount. Rather than just taking the room, thanking the lady and leaving, my mom decided the best course of action would be to scream in the middle of a hotel lobby. Nobody's going anywhere until I get my effing room. She then proceeded to pester the lady, who clearly couldn't do anything about it, until eventually she called the police on my mom for public disturbance. Mortifying. Not my parent, but my grandparent. When I was around 10 years old, my grandmother went out and got us, her, my brother, and me, McDonald's. We got home, and we didn't have napkins in the bags. No big deal, right? We have paper towels and napkins in the house. Also, me and my brother are pretty good with not making any messes while we eat. Nope. Grandmother got us in the car, drove back to McDonald's, demanded a manager, and screeched about how upset she was that we didn't get any napkins. I wanted to just melt into the floor and disappear. It's just napkins, nanny. When I was a young child on a long distance flight, my mother let me and my brother sleep on the floor. For safety reasons, the flight attendant told my mother that we were not allowed to sleep on the floor. She started to argue with the flight attendants 
who then turned to the pilots. The pilots threatened to turn the plane around unless we get up from the floor, but she continued to argue. The pilots announced they were about to turn around because of my mother, so all the passengers got pissed. Eventually, she caved in when she had all passengers and flight crew on a Boeing 747 against her. Before Value Village changed policies, she would cut tags to get discounts since the cashier would basically make up whatever price they thought it would be on the spot. If they highballed it, she would get a manager involved, and I hated that. My mom demanded to see a cafe's hygiene certificate when she saw an employee go from cutting cake in the kitchen to handling money at the till, even though the real problem is going the other way. Oh, you're a programmer? I have a problem with my printer. What's the equivalent of this in your job? Oh, you work in finance? What stock slash fund should I buy? Slash, you must be making a boatload on your personal investments with all the insider information you have access to. You're in the Air Force, so you fly planes? Nah, I fly a desk. Oh, you're a teacher? Please explain to me how my child's teacher had the audacity to give them a C, despite it being very obvious that my child is a genius. Bonus points if they want you to explain the grading criteria in a completely different subject and level of schooling than you teach. Like, I teach high school and community college English and social studies. Why do you expect me to know the grading criteria for middle school math? Oh, you're an airplane mechanic? What part do you work on? Every part. Do you get discounts on flights? Free. On my airline, if there's a seat open. Can I get a buddy pass? Do I know you? Oh, you're a paramedic? I have this thing on my toe. W will you check it? Oh, you're an accountant? Can you add or multiply these huge numbers in your head lightning fast? No. You have no idea what I do. Robin Williams once said, God gave man a brain and a and only enough blood to run one at a time. What are some real life examples of this? My boyfriend and I will be having a perfectly normal conversation. Then I'll start changing for bed and he just short circuits, loses his train of thought, completely forgets what he's talking about and immediately comes to hold me every time. He's seen me naked for the last 10 years. That's why you should always have an extra flask of fresh blood with you. You never know when you need your brain. I sent my boyfriend nudes once and he ran his truck into a tree because he wouldn't stop thinking about it. Girl behind the register started flirting with me. Blue screen so hard I paid for my groceries but forgot to take them with me. Didn't realize until hours later. That captain who crashed a mega yacht showing off for some chick on the bridge? Millions of dollars. People no longer bound by their non-disclosure agreements. What can you now disclose? This one's gonna be spicy. I disclosed to a minority partner that the majority partner owed him 100k. He could have easily received a check for that amount but he sued for 700k, spent 300 on a lawyer, and got nothing. The book you're reading might only be a bestseller because the author had an enough money to buy thousands and thousands of copies, have them shipped to a warehouse for storage, and eventually destroyed. The secret ingredient in Jimmy John's tuna salad is Kikoman soy sauce. That is in fact true. I, I work there, and that is 100% true. I worked at a small bakery in New York City when I was younger. Every morning, the bakery would take their day-old cupcakes and deliver them to a tour company that did Sex in the City tours. Tour company would pass our cupcakes off as cupcakes from Magnolia, and significantly much more popular bakery. You know NDAs are only good if you have the money to sue. Worked with a company that didn't pay me, so I told them their NDA didn't apply. They threatened to sue. My response, you can't even afford to pay me. You sure as hell can't afford to sue. I used to work for a large gas station chain. I worked at a warehouse where it creates a lot of donuts. The room was really hot, so we were always sweating. There's some machines where the donuts get glazed in chocolate. They're these small machines. They look almost like a barbecue grill. They always wanted us to be super fast glazing the donuts. Working in a hot room and working at super fast speeds, it was natural for a lot of people's sweat to just drip into the chocolate underneath us. Never eat the chocolate donuts from a gas station. My last company, a medium-sized airline, paid their CEO a $10 million bonus after he bankrupted the company. 20 years from now, what will be the new? You are not always going to have a calculator in your pocket. You're not going to have internet access everywhere. You're not always going to have someone to clean up after you. Robot Butler has entered the chat. What if your car runs out of gas? That still seems like a common issue. And what if your phone doesn't have service? Then I guess I'll die. You won't always be living with your parents. That is true. I have a right to online privacy. Adults have read it. What is something every teenager needs to know? It's okay to say no to anyone. Don't let anyone in your life guilt trip you into doing something you don't want to do or are uncomfortable with. It's exactly as lame to not do something you want to do because it's too mainstream or popular as it is to do something only because it's cool and the cool kids are doing it. Learn a second language. It's good for your brain and it's a lot easier when you're young. Get active and fit. Make it a habit. This is one of the most important ways to stave off cognitive decline as you get older. Plus, it's great for managing mental health during the transition to adulthood. The first step to being good at something is being bad at something. Paraphrased from Jake the Dog. Start trying to save money now. You will definitely thank yourself later on. Get a marketable skill. Unskilled labor sucks. You need something that's going to pay you. 
It doesn't have to be your life's passion, contrary to what my peers were saying at that age, but you do need to be able to tolerate it. What's the cringiest thing you've seen a bride and groom do for their wedding? Long ago, I worked at a banquet hall and witnessed a fully NASCAR-themed wedding. During the reception, they played the audio of the proposal going out over the PA at the track. It was fully unintelligible. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. Other highlights were the owner locking himself in his office to avoid the bride's father because he was threatening him to haggle on the costs. In the end, we had to call the police because the bride in gown climbed over the bar to steal more sweet, sweet MGD after we had closed the taps and the event was over. In-law's wedding and groom and all groomsmen were wearing a tux and a ball cap. The groom had a dip of tobacco in during the wedding and I you not, his groom's cake was designed like a Copenhagen can. That is just revolting. I was a photographer for a wedding where the bride was marrying a man with two kids from a previous relationship. I was in the bridal suite when the bridal party was getting ready and all of the bridesmaids had matching silk robes. The flower girl, groom's daughter, was there too. They asked me to take a group photo of the bridal party and one of the women in a silk robe was standing awkwardly to the side. I thought she was just shy or something so I waved her into the photo and the room got dead silent and the bride was like, oh no, we don't want her in the photos and glared at me like I should have known that. Apparently, she was the groom's ex-wife and was there to take care of the flower girl. But why did you give her a matching bridesmaid's robe? I wanted to crawl in a hole and die. At my cousin's wedding, they did the thing where the groom removes the bride's garter and tosses it to all the single guys. I guess none of the guys wanted to be next be married because once the groom tossed the garter, no one grabbed it. It just landed on the ground a few feet in front of a crowd of motionless guys. The groom tossed the garter three times before one guy half-heartedly picked it off the ground. The bride wouldn't look at any of those guys for the rest of the night. My uncle not only brought up his daughter's ex-boyfriend in his speech, but talked about their toxic relationship for a solid five minutes. I highly recommend preparing a speech before talking in front of a room full of people. Not the couple, the pastor kept saying, our heavenly father, daddy God, while marrying them. For context, it was a military wedding. It was just the couple and the pastor. It was live streamed on Twitch and the pastor was probably about 25. It was in Hawaii. He was wearing flip-flops and a lei made of fake flowers. What's a relatively unknown technological invention that will have a huge impact on the future? I was talking with my spine surgeon, <laughs> who just has a spine surgeon, and he said in 30 years, they'll be able to regenerate the gel in your spine, practically giving you a new back. A little more background. I've herniated the same two discs in my lower back twice by the time I was 30. My doctor told me that by the time I'm 50, I'll most likely need back surgery, but it shouldn't be a big deal since they can replace the gel, not sure technical name, that's been impacted by the slip discs. Research into bacteriophages, bacteria target viruses, could cure antibiotic resistant bacterium such as MRSA. Gene therapy is no longer science fiction. My girlfriend got Lux Turna surgery and the results have been amazing. She used to be unable to see it all at night and now she can guide herself without a cane. More treatments like that are going to keep coming and be standard before we realize it. Printed human skin and organs. That could actually be very interesting seeing a 3D printer print out replacement organs like a liver or something. Thing, that, that's cool. I saw a new solar panel that is like glad wrap that goes on windows. Clear thin film that covers windows and collects solar power. So you don't need to put the large panels on rooftops. So if you think about it on city skyscrapers, there is more surface area on the sides of the buildings than the roof. Everyone east and west of the building having invisible solar panels. And for our last question, what is the pettiest, silliest, most meaningless hill you are willing to die on? The people on the elevator exit first. That means before the losers waiting for the elevator enter. Always. Every time. No exceptions. After you've finished using something, say, a pair of scissors or a flashlight. Put them back where they belong so the next person can use them. You lose loose change. Your team did not lose. You did not lose your wallet. You don't have lose change. This is my Waterloo. Having any sound coming from your phone over the speaker in public. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't want to hear your be music or your conversation. Scrape your dang plate off before putting dishes in the dishwasher. I'm home from college right now living in a five-person home, and my sister is the only person who understands this. Everyone else basically puts meals in the dishwasher, or they let things like cereal get stuck to the plates and cups, which drives me crazy. It's a dishwasher, not a garbage can. Calm down there, fella. Chew with your mouth closed. That is a pet peeve. I will agree. Lawyers, what's a law that isn't real that normal people insist exists? In the UK, people often claim that if an item is
is listed for sale in the shop, then the shop legally has to sell it to you at that price. This is not true at all, as the shop doesn't have to sell you anything at any price. Often as a gesture of goodwill, shops will honor horrendous prices, but they are under absolutely no obligation to do so. That commercial use of a photograph means selling the photograph. Commercial use means that there is an implied endorsement. You can take and sell photos of Eric Clapton all day long. Put that same photo in an advertisement for a certain guitar without a release and you can be sued. Probate attorney here, I've had many people ask me when the reading of the will is going to take place. I explained to them that that only happens in movies, but one of these days I'm going to have one and hire a mysterious blonde wearing a veil to sit in the corner quietly. Then I'll tell everyone that she inherits everything. Provided, of course, that she must adopt the descendant's cute but troublemaking six-year-old child that no one knew about. Or she can spend the night in a haunted house. Her choice. Am a lawyer. This is not a law that doesn't exist, but a law that is misunderstood. Typically, you can't just go get a restraining order against somebody. Most states have specific laws for who you can get a restraining order against. Typically, household members or former romantic interests. Usually, it's only in domestic violence cases or victims of crimes. You can't just get a restraining order and comically use it to keep someone 100 feet away. In the United States, at least. R.E. My father, who is a lawyer. Policemen cannot lie to you. This is false. They can and they do. In California, it's not illegal to discuss your wages with your coworkers, despite what your boss might say. I'm a lawyer in California. I assume it's the same in the other 49 states, but don't want to speculate. What's up, everybody? My name is Mason, and welcome back to Ask MK. You get teleported to the day you were born with all of the memories from your past, but now you're an infant. What do you do? I would cry like a baby. Come out of the womb not crying, eyes fully opened with the most serious face I can make as a baby and say, this human form is limiting. Probably have some form of internal crisis. Knowing me, forget it all. Start talking and people would absolutely freak the f*** out. Suddenly on Christmas, you get a PC made of pulsating flesh, blood, and bone with all of the normal PC ports. Hold on. It has a thousand times more computing power than your current PC, but you have to feed it with a rat once a month. How would you react to that? Who made this PC? I guess I misspelled Santa on my wish list. Is this the beginning of my Bitcoin mining career? I don't live in a Doom level, so it doesn't quite go with the interior, so I'll probably buy an external casing with a hole for the rat to go in, which I can buy at my local reptile shop. If it needs to eat, then it needs to poop. Forget it. Oh god, do I still need a mouse? If it's a thousand times faster just feeding on rats, imagine how powerful it could be if you fed it on humans. Dude? Bro? There is a new restaurant called Karma. It doesn't have a menu. You just get what you deserve. What are you getting? Probably a one dollar McDonald's cheeseburger. It replicates the amount of effort I put into most things in life. I've been called thrifty cheap before, so I'm probably getting the bill. A relative plain meal with just under the amount of calories I would need to feel satisfied. Knowing what I deserve is a huge karmic achievement. I don't think I am that enlightened yet. Alphabet soup with eight letters. Get a life. My town used to have a restaurant ironically called Serves You Right. So my answer is botulism? What video games show that graphics truly aren't everything? What? Rimworld. Endless possibilities for your floating head and torso columns. Dwarf Fortress and NetHack are the classics. Crusader Kings 2 is just a map of Europe. Pretty much everything Seth Sench, the YouTube reviewer, like Underrail and Neo Scavenger come to mind, are slightly more modern examples. NetHack, focusing on gameplay instead of graphics, it spawned the dev team thinks of everything catchphrase in its fan base. Star Wars Battlefront 2, the original. Oregon Trail comes to mind. Thomas was alone. I was really hooked from the very beginning. What's the most overpriced thing you've ever seen? When I was in Dubai two years ago, there was a cell phone store in the mall that sold phones that ranged from 30k to 120k. They were basically phones covered in diamonds and gold. That's 100k for something that is probably already obsolete. A couple of years ago, Marks and Spencer Food, a high-end supermarket in the UK, tried selling cauliflower steak, which was a thick slice of cauliflower for £2.50, pence. I think is how you say that. It was covered in plastic. You could literally buy a whole cauliflower in the same row a bit further down for 40p. They were crucified for it. It was hilarious. $800,000 for a square foot condo in Toronto. The $700 juicero, as if a Wi-Fi connecting juicer was even necessary, let alone worth the price point. I remember seeing a basic scientific calculator for like $300. I swear, people sell oddly shaped Cheetos for thousands. Literally thousands. I've actually seen that before on eBay. It's so funny. There was like a Harambe one. What is a good starter video game for a middle-aged man who has never really played before? I'd recommend starting off with a more casual game to get your feet in the water before you dive right in, just so you get to know how things work. Recommend Plants vs. Zombies or Spyro Reignited as great starters. Though you have to have a damn good PC to play Spyro. Minecraft, true. Stardew Valley, you all can play together. It's wholesome, takes time, and a lot of things to discover. I don't play video games, ever, but got the hang of this pretty easily. Once I got the fishing and mining figured out, nothing could stop me. It's like $15 on Steam and I use my laptop. Get a Nintendo, like my parents used to say in the olden days. Today, this means a Nintendo Switch. If you are alone, you can play Zelda or Mario Odyssey. If you have people to play with, you can play games like Mario Kart. I started with a game called Super Mario. I strongly recommend the Lego games. So much fun. I believe most of them have multiplayer as well. Teachers of Reddit. What was the best excuse for being late that turned out to be true? Hmm. I had a student whose father had died and had not done any homework or prep for the geography class. From what I heard, the teacher scolded him for not doing so, but the student didn't want to say anything. Presumably sensitive issue. So his best friend shouted at the teacher, don't you have any shame?
shame. His father died last night, and the teacher said, I don't care. There was an audible gasp, and I was in the next room. Holy crap. Imagine being that kind of teacher. My auto teacher let me practice removing and adding the tires on his vehicle. The next morning, it was about 20 minutes into his first period and no sign of him. He comes back, running into the classroom out of breath, and his hair is all messed up. He points to me and says, you. What is a torque wrench used for? I respond with, I don't know. He says, I know you don't know. Turns out one of his tires came off while driving down the highway. Uh-oh. She had to take her sister to school and drive her mom to rehab. She was always late to class because her mom just wanted to sleep in. Problem was, if the mom was late or did not go, she would have violated her probation and gone to prison. I never marked her late. If she missed anything important, she could come in at lunch or after school to make it up. Student here, I headed into school early to get some studying done in the library for my night class. I was one exit away when I was caught in a three-car accident. Most of the expressway afterwards was gridlock with only one lane open. I did eventually make it into my lab class 15 minutes late. The few scrapes and bruises. My professor's reaction was simply, oh, that was you. Told me he got pulled over by the cops for wobbly driving on his bike and they thought he was drunk. Turned out he was just dodging all of the slugs on the street. What's a small act of kindness you were once shown that you'll never forget? Neighbor asked to borrow my truck. Told them I could not trust my truck because the tires were bad. The next day, Mr. Neighbor called and said he was getting new tires for his Suburban and I could have his old ones. Told me just to show up at the certain tire shop and they would put them on. Get the tire shop and they put on brand new Goodyear tires. I asked what happened to the old tires I was supposed to receive. Shop owner said the old tires was just a story to get me in the shop. Mr. Neighbor brought me a full set of new tires instead of the old tires he said I could have. Riding my bike on a long trip through Canada with about 50 miles to go, I had a major mechanical failure. Stuck on the side of the road in a foreign country within five minutes, at least 10 cars had stopped check on me. One guy loaded my bike in the back of his truck and drove me 30 miles to the border where I catch a ferry back to the US. Amazing kindness and generosity toward a stranger. He just asked that I pay it forward and to date I've helped five cyclists who were broken down in honor of that promise. I was given access to a shower and a hot meal after being homeless for nine months. Alternator died while driving home from university. Engine died as I exited the freeway in the middle of the night in a not so pleasant part of town in the days before cell phones. As I'm pushing my car out of the intersection a guy in a truck comes up and offers to push my car to my neighborhood a good three miles away. He does so and I'm pulling into my neighborhood he simply gives a wave and drives off into the night. I never even had the chance to thank him. I took my sister who's in a wheelchair to the cinema for the first time on my own. At the end, I realized I couldn't undo the brakes and was blocking him. I felt like crying because I thought everyone was pissed at me, but some nice lady helped me. She then took me and my sister out. She said she once had a son who needed a wheelchair, and that was long ago, but I'll never forget. What's something that's not a cult, but feels like a cult? Salesforce. No. I don't want to build a community, go hiking, or join a hundred online classes to learn the basics. Make a couple of well-explained, to-the-point training videos for f**k's sake. Essential oils. We get it. You're a single mom and want to work from home, but damn, you guys are sure drank the Kool-Aid. Beach body, especially the coaches, the Herbalife organization. They were charged with being a pyramid scheme, but they still operate in a similar way. There are several people I grew up with who became hooked on it, and they definitely act like they're in a cult. Some workplaces, the ones that push the we're all family here attitude, especially. Working at Amazon. Hell, just interviewing with Amazon feels like an initiation with all the leadership principles and whatnot. Zookeepers of Reddit, how are the animals acting differently now that there are no visitors at the zoo? I'm on day 25 of working at a closed zoo. I work with great apes, and their behavior has changed a bit. They are generally very interactive with public, so they are seeking more attention than usual from us. Some of them were suspicious at first of the overwhelming silence outside now. They were climbing up high and scanning the area looking for everyone. Most of our animals are happy as long as we keep their routines, feeding times, etc. For some, they need a little bit extra. We do public encounters with our koalas, wombats, and snakes, among others, so we spend an hour or so a day cuddling and handling these animals to keep them happy. A few of our koalas really fret if they don't get their cuddles. Otherwise, we just try to continue to spend time with animals that are expecting interaction. And of course, we can take things for walks around the place like I'm sure you've seen at other zoos. Our wombats love a run and sniff. Dingoes as well. In our local zoo, the apes started to miss the visitors, so they brought in an artist who's now just painting in an empty monkey house so the apes have someone to watch. Due to temporary staff cuts, they no longer have the people to regularly walk the wombats. Some of the wombats are holding the keepers personally responsible. Imagine having a 20 kilogram chunk of muscle with big rodent teeth mad at you. I take care of fish, but mostly jellyfish. The jellies don't give a single f It's been nice for me though, because I can turn most of their display lights off so less algae grows and I have to do less scrubbing. My actual fish don't care. The beluga whales were screeching at the cleaning crew the other day, which was hilarious. I don't work with the whales, but it seems like they enjoy, or at least are interested in, seeing others around. You found a suitcase full of $750,000 in cash in $100 bills in the brush next to a highway. You can tell that it's been there for at least a year. How would you integrate this money into your life without raising red flags? I wouldn't make an extremely suspicious Reddit post about it. I'd go get my old job back with my particularly shady
city boss, he was perfectly fine to report whatever income you wanted or not to file a 1099 at all. He also was in the habit of buying extravagant gifts for his staff. It wouldn't be hard clean the money through him. Step one is figure out if the bills are clean or marked. I currently work at a pizza joint. I'll just say I'm getting tipped very, very generous. Not really on topic, but it reminds me of when I worked for a security company. There had been an armed robbery on an armored truck. The police thought it was an inside job, but couldn't prove it. Six weeks later, just before he was due to go on holiday, the armored truck driver turned up for work in a huge brand new car, towing a giant boat. People are stupid. I'd eat out a lot more and pay in cash. Right from now, your need for sleep is gone. You can now stay awake till your eventual death without any consequences. How would the extra time that you get from not sleeping affect your life? More time for civilization. Do you remember that episode of American Dad where Stan is taking pills so he doesn't need sleep and does dumb things like write this song and play beat man? But when Francine does it, she becomes an internationally recognized and published scientist. I'll probably end up more like Stan. Depends if my kids still need sleep. If they do, I might actually get on top of my life. If they don't, I'm even more royal. Fuck the time I would save from not needing to sleep. I'm fucking ecstatic for the first time I get back while stressing because I can't sleep because I'm stressing about being able to sleep. In 40 years, what will people be nostalgic for? Honestly, probably malls. I feel like a lot of them are going out of business and getting torn down. Well, at least the old mall experience. The internet. Hell, I'm nostalgic for it now. Not the final form that the internet has taken over the past decade or so, but those Wild West days before YouTube, Facebook, social media, Reddit, finding weird ass sites, GeoCities pages, looking up cheat codes for GTA, hanging out on forums, seeing people go truly grassroots viral and not just because it's trending on Instagram or something. Those days when no company knew what the hell the internet was or how to market on it. It was just left to the nerds and the kids who were making up the rules as they went along. Poppable bubble wrap. That's true. That's true. As, that's true as hell. Movie DVDs. With everything going digital, I think production houses will stop soon making DVDs and just start streaming the movies in either their respective streaming platforms or sell them to other platforms like Netflix. I think YouTube. Like how 80s, 90s babies miss early Nickelodeon and Saturday morning cartoons. I think future generations will miss the unlimited content. Why do you like to be alone? I can be myself. I'm not annoying anyone. In my opinion, it is nice to be alone every now and then, as it is allowing you to self-reflect and enjoy some quality time with yourself. However, in a more permanent level, I have seen it wrecking my mood and leading me to a state close to depression. Balance does the trick for me. This got really sad really quick. What the f***? Solitude is comforting. When I'm alone, I don't have to be scared to be myself, and I don't have to pretend I'm feeling fine all the time. My friends are annoying sometimes, because it's nice to be alone with your thoughts and enjoy alone time. I hate the stress of having to constantly be present in mind and when I'm with other people. I love being able to space out and sit in silence and just be in my own head. Adults of Reddit. What is something that sucks about being an adult that most teenagers don't realize? The adult part. The moment you need to pay for everything and the realization that fresh food spoils faster than you ever noticed for was eye-opening. For me, it's watching my parents get old. And as a teenager, I thought they were all about keeping me restricted and controlled. Now I realize they're just two people who never had a kid before. Did the best they knew and, and fucked up at times like all other humans on the planet. I never realized how much I needed them emotionally until I saw my father through his open heart surgery and saw Parkinson's take my mother's independence. So here I am, still feeling like a teenager on the inside, staring down the barrel of a 50, wondering what the hell happened. Okay, you can count your friends on one hand and most of those have been grandfathered in. You can do whatever you want, but most of the time you either have commitments that prevent it or you can't afford it. You are always cleaning the kitchen. Parents of Reddit, how do you feel when your kid brings back a girlfriend or boyfriend? How do you decide whether you like them or not? It's not up to me to like them, it's up to her. If she does, then I do. I care that my daughter is safe, happy, motivated, handling her own business. Apart from that, I'm just enjoying watching her experience things and hoping she includes me in some of that. Met my daughter's boyfriend the other day. First boyfriend. She's 17, he's 18. I must admit, I was a bit nervous and I remember very well being 18 and what I was thinking wanting, but had a word with myself to be welcoming and warm and treat him as an equal. My daughter's friend and therefore my friend. Anyway, he's a nice young man, so it's all good. But to answer your question, I guess if he's nice, I'll like him and if he's a d I won't. Either way, as far as my daughter is concerned, I'll like him. Not a parent, but this was my experience with my mother when I was a teen. So as a teen, my mother pulled me to the side and gave me the gay talk. You know, the I'll still love you even if you were gay talk. I asked her why she thought I was gay and she said it was because I never bring any girls to the house. Guess what I did within the next few days? I brought a girl in the house. Guess what my mother did? She kicked her out and gave me a lecture on how inappropriate it was to bring girls to the house. Yeah, it makes no sense. Okay. My four-year-old daughter introduced me to the five-year-old neighbor kid as a boyfriend. She told me he's really good at running fast and he appreciates snails as much as she does. Needless to say, this is a keeper. My daughter just started dating. She was mortified when I picked them up and asked if everything was Gucci. People who wear hoodies when it is 100 degrees outside. Why? How else do you expect me to steal the ducks from the park? My fashion in high school was put a hoodie on and suck it up. Is it 100 degrees? Put a hoodie on and suck it up. Is it negative 30 degrees? Put a hoodie on and suck it up. Mosquitoes. They love me. I hate them. I want to know about the people who wear shorts when it's below freezing out. That used to be me. It was just comfy. Because I don't like to carry a purse 
but still need pockets for my few things. Keys, phone, wallet. Women's clothing is so stupid, the pockets are typically too shallow to fit anything useful. Also, when a dress has pockets, and I carry things in them, the items in my pocket hit against my legs when I walk. Hoodies solve the problem. Not gonna lie, it's usually low self-esteem or confidence issues, or aesthetic fashion purposes, I guess. But I used to wear hoodies every day to hide my body, and I live in Florida, until I passed out from the heat one day. What movie could have been over in 10 minutes if the main character wasn't such a fool? The Visit. Kids, we are going to visit our grandparents. I don't want you to go, but if you feel like you really want to go, I'll drive you to their house. Hey, y'all ain't my parents. I'm calling the police. The end. The ring. Hey, do you want to watch the tape that kills you in seven days? No thanks. Imperial Officer 1. There goes another one. Hold your fire. There's no life forms. Dude, we're looking for an inanimate set of plans in a galaxy full of sentient robots. Oh, right. I mean, Dorothy should have asked a few more questions about the ruby slippers. Jurassic Park if Hammond actually spared no expense. Aladdin. If Jafar would have just paid Aladdin what he promised him instead of betraying him at the cave, he would have had the lamp and become king and be mighty powerful. Aladdin just wanted his money in return for the lamp. What scientific experiment would you run if money and ethics weren't an issue? I'd raise a group of children from birth to adulthood, kind of like the Truman Show, without any contact with music and see how it affects their lives and personalities. I'd make sure everything else would be normal, but music would be edited out of their lives. The Doctor Who episode, wherein they bred artificially grown humans, infect them each with all known diseases so that they can develop antibodies and cures. Not necessarily a scientific experiment, but a series of experiments to see how you can control the nerve sensations from the brain and whether you can create VR that can perfectly mimic the sensation of touch whilst being motionless. As if you're moving and touching something in a virtual world, but not in the real world, is that even possible? Redesigning the human sinus. I wish to find a way to modify the body to fix that mess of an airway. Force compliance on specific diets with a diverse sample of people in a well-regulated control group. Follow for 10 plus years. Is veganism really healthy? How about paleo? Should we never be eating gluten or dairy? What's the fastest you've seen a crowd go from excited to horrified? I was at a Bo Burnham show he was recording for hit Netflix special, but unfortunately this part didn't make the cut. He was cracking jokes as usual, then asked everyone in the audience to crack their knuckles on the count of three. It was the most horrifying evil sound any of us had ever heard. During a Buffalo Sabres game, Clint Malarchuk took an ice skate to the neck, severing his carotid artery and partially cutting his jugular vein. He almost bled out on the ice. The sight was so horrifying, two fans had heart attacks and 11 others fainted. Numerous fans vomited at the sight of all the blood. Malarchuk thought he was going to die on the ice, so his only thought was getting off the ice so his mom didn't have to watch him die on TV. He asked for a priest and had the equipment manager call his mom to tell her he loved her. The only reason he didn't die is the Sabres athletic trainer was a combat medic in Vietnam. My parents were at the game and said most of the fans assumed the worst and that seeing the ice turn red was one of the more horrifying things they'd seen in person. I was at a Russell Peters stand-up show in a large theater. He starts some banter with the guy in the first row who had a huge tattoo on his arm saying Skyler or a similar name. He asked all about Skyler, it's the guy's daughter, he starts making jokes about daughters, some sexual innuendos, and then asks how old Skyler is. The guy in the audience goes, she passed away. It was pure crickets after that. Oh no. Ar nar. I was brought to Corita once and the matador got his leg impaled by the bull while he was trying to get over a fence. The crowd started screaming and booing the bull like it was a foul move. I was like, Lamau? Dude, fucking stabbed it. What was it supposed to do? Recite poetry? <sighs> Woodstock 99. Everyone was super cool and chill and all of a sudden it felt like the wind shifted. It was palpable like you cut the air it was so heavy. Got a super bad vibe and packed up immediately and left. By the time we got to the first gas station, reports of fire and rioting start. You get one million dollars. However, it's because a hundred dollars is taken from 10,000 random people. If nobody knows that you got the money, why would you do it and why not? Wasn't there a film where they stole one cent from one billion people so they wouldn't notice or did I dream it? I'll be the asshole here. If nobody knew, yes, I would take the money. I'm so tired of worrying about money. It wouldn't matter where I got it from. Nice try, IRS. I would like to say no, but people do shittier things for less money. I would hope, <clears throat> I would hope that my integrity would hold out when faced with the choice. Okay, so if one day a hundred dollars magically disappears from my account, I'll know someone out of you motherfuckers took that deal. Nope, I've been in the situation where a hundred dollars gone missing would have been real bad. I'm not struggling financially now, so I don't think I could live with myself if I stole from random people. Probably not. I know how hard a hundred dollars can hurt for someone in need or living paycheck to paycheck. Even though nobody will know, I'd still feel guilty. What fan theory do you 100% accept is true? Not sure if this counts, but Donkey from Shrek being one of the kids from Pinocchio who turned into a donkey is pretty mind-blowing. The reason each It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode starts with a date and time is because they're all testifying against each other in court. Marty McFly develops the inability to back down when he called chicken in the second movie and on because in the first film, he creates a timeline where his father has confidence, changing the parenting style of his own background. That Loki was controlled by the Tesseract more than he let on. His eyes glowed multiple times and he shed a tear when Thor tried to talk sense in. In Disney's Ratatouille, the old lady in the beginning of the movie living in the house next to the river is the food critic Anton Ego's mother. In the flashback scene where he eats the ratatouille, you can see similarities of the house from the beginning.
beginning, her face, and I think bridge. The Jetsons and the Flintstones are living at the same time in a dystopian future where the haves live above the clouds and the have-nots are stuck on the wasted earth. The signs include that Flintstones celebrate things like Christmas and other holidays, which doesn't make sense, and the great gazoo alien appears in both series. What are some ridiculous history facts? In 1895, the entire state of Ohio only had two cars. Both cars managed to still smash into each other. 101 years ago, a massive tank of molasses burst open in Boston, causing a sticky wave that killed 21 people and injured well over 100. The Great Molasses Flood spread at about 35 miles per hour. Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, was present at three different presidential assassinations. After McKinley, he decided not to accept any more invitations. When Alexander the Great was a child, he was reprimanded by a teacher for wastefully throwing two whole fistfuls of rare incense into a sacrificial fire. When he was an adult and captured Gaza, which happened to be the prime agricultural source of the incense he wasted, he sent 18 tons of it home to the same teacher as a gift. Karl Marx's great-great-grandson has a YouTube video of him doing parkour called exclamation marks. No way. I don't believe that for a second. Pepsi once had the sixth largest military in the world after the price of Russian vodka couldn't cover their deal for Pepsi Prox. So they traded 17 submarines, a frigate, a cruiser, and a destroyer for a trade deal. Fun fact, president of PepsiCo at the time told the National Security Advisor, we are disarming the USSR faster than you are. That's funny. What's cool now, but probably won't be in five years? The insert name here, nutrition drink shops. Multi-level marketing bright teas that have no actual nutritional value can't last forever. Instagram is going to be an online shopping mall far removed from the cool microblogging site it used to be. Galaxy print is probably going to go the way of the bowling alley carpet patterns we used to wear on our clothes in the 90s. It'll come back ironically in 10 years. Daenerys and Khaleesi as girl names. Brazilian butt lifts. I feel like it will not age well. A lot of plastic surgeries collapse over time and have complications as it degrades. The bowl cut. For some reason it came back in South Houston. Looks ridiculous. You are given three hundred million dollars to make a movie, but it has to bomb at the box office or else you die. What do you make? Someone sitting in a room, hand counting the three hundred million dollar bills, but every now and then he loses count and has to start over. Live action Yu-Gi-Oh movie with real time card matches, no CGI, an official rule with current ban list. Take two hundred ninety five million as the exec producer and make the movie with amateurs and filmed on a cell phone. Something with a ten hour plus runtime, an enormously complicated storyline, no particular actors of note, and a trailer that's full of long dead jokes. A live action adaptation of another manga anime cartoon. I remember a Twitter post saying, recreate the Twilight movies, but instead of Robert Pattinson as Edward, it's Kanye West. Except he doesn't know he's an actor in the movie, so I'd probably do that. Arnold Schwarzenegger as a struggling elderly man whose life dream is to be a party clown. He eventually becomes a clown and everyone is terrified of him. Bank tellers of Reddit, what is your plan if someone sends bees through the tube? Home Depot used to have a tube system. One day, the garden center caught a yellow jacket in the tube. Everyone was freaking out and sending the tube back and forth until a brave soul had cashier managed to cram a bag with a roll of dimes into the tube while the yellow jacket was stunned on the bottom. It was just enough to remove the threat and save the day. Pushes back bees out the tube. Wrong currency, mate. Not a bank teller. Okay, first of all, I want to know how someone got bees into a tube in the first place. I feel like this question raises many other questions. It would allow me to shout, NOT THE BEES! I'd expect the robber would be so thoroughly amused by the Nicolas Cage reference that he would shake my hand, have a good laugh, and hand himself into the police. Open a beesness account. What is your favorite dead video game franchise? Space and <clears throat> Of all time, it's got to be Ultima. Ultima's 1, 3, and 6 revolutionized graphic RPGs. Age of Mythology. I would like to see a Dino Crisis reboot on current gen consoles. Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Monkey Island. Telltale brought it back and made a great five-part series. They set up so much. That will never happen now. Spore! It had such potential. Especially sad that Galactic Adventures never took off. I know No Man's Sky is kind of taking over what that was supposed to be, but I miss the customization in Spore. Jet Set Radio! What are you the 1% of? According to my smartwatch, I'm in the top 1% of step count in the past seven days. Wild and also boring. I'm in the seventh generation in my family with the same name. At the end of my name, I legally have a VII. I figured I have to be in the top 1% of deaf guitar players worldwide. I heard completely fine for like 25 years and spent 19 of that to practice guitar playing. Been legally deaf for three years now and still can play well. Muscle memory. I kind of want to start a band called Deaf Metal or something. Probably less than 1%, but I am sucrose and fructose intolerant. No fruit, no candy, no ice cream, even some veggies for me. I'm a pilot. In the USA, about 0.01% of the population has a pilot's license. I'm also an amputee, which in the USA is about 1% of the population. Not sure what percent of the populace are amputee pilots, but it's gotta be pretty small. Got my wisdom teeth hold. One side grew back over a year from a fragment left. Dennis published an article about it and was so happy. I was not with another oral surgery. Douglas Adams once wrote, I may not have gone where I intended to go, but I think I have ended up where I needed to be. How might this quote describe an experience in your life? While getting my degree,
degree. I was just taking classes that interested me that I also had to do a little with my major. Turns out I was getting my minor in chemistry without even realizing. Good for that guy. Never planned to divorce. Never planned to leave Arizona. Never planned to remarry. Never planned to leave a career I love. Never planned to be hit by a car. I've done all that in the last two years. I completely rewrote my entire life and every plan I had in every way imaginable. Would not have it any other way. My new husband and my new life are a level of happiness I've never known. Seriously, even recovering from a serious injury? Everything that has gone with that is better than my previous life because of who I have to love me now. I got home once from absentmindedly threw away my socks for no reason. I just took them off and put them in the trash. When I realized what I did, I dug through the trash only to find out that both socks had holes in them. Turns out they belonged in the trash anyway. I've never found a quote that described the situation more perfectly than this one. I think life is happier when you learn to let go of the what ifs and appreciate what you have. When I was younger, I used to sleepwalk. I slept walked straight to the end of the hall where there were two doors, one to the bathroom and one to my older brother's room, opened the door, lit the lid and peed. Turns out I had opened the door, lifted my brother's blanket and peed. Not where I intended, but it finally got back at the jerk for farting on me for years. <laughs> what are you still salty about? In a fifth grade science test, the question was, are there any stars in the solar system? I answered, yes. Teacher marked it wrong. I went up afterwards and said, what about the sun? He said, he meant that all the other stars are not in our solar system and kept it marked wrong. What a nerd. The teacher, I mean, not the student. When I was in high school, someone tagged up the school. They announced there would be a reward for anyone who rats anyone out. I get called in the office and find out I'm suspended for vandalization. I didn't do it and had no idea who. Four days later, I'm allowed to come back to school because they found who actually did it. I just got an apology. Me and some others in primary school were saying the biggest numbers we knew of. Everyone was saying like a hundred thousand and a million and then I'm like a trillion and they refused to believe it was a real number. Being charged a thousand dollars for a battery and alternator change. They also destroyed my starter motor in the process and rounded a bunch of my bolts. They left tools in the engine bay. I don't even have that car anymore and I'm still salty. I would be too. They borderline ruined your car. Three months ago I went on maternity leave. The woman hired to cover for me was being paid three dollars more than I'm currently paid. She was going to be kept on as a full-time accounting assistant after I returned but she couldn't keep up with my daily tasks and completely fucked up several databases that I had to correct when I returned to work the following month. When I asked for a raise, they offered me 50 cents after telling me how crucial I am to the structure of the company. Needless to say, I'm looking for a new job. Our wedding photographer left part of their lens cap on, so every photo is shrouded in a massive black ring. No good photos from the wedding. Oh, that is such a bummer. Ugh. Hey, howdy, hey, everybody. My name's Brandon, and welcome back to Ask MK. Owners of Volkswagen Beetles, how do you feel knowing that when you drive your car, countless people punch each other for being the first to see it? Driving next to a school School is priceless. All the kids punching each other never fails to make me laugh. Now that is one sadistic little guy. Or girl. I take a joy ride, not for myself, but for the tradition. It's one of the reasons I got it. At least they're being honest. When I was in middle school, the school bus would drive by a used VW car lot. It was like Fight Club on wheels. If you're not dodging bad grades, then you're dodging fists apparently at this school. I have no siblings, and so I got into a violent altercation in elementary school when a kid decided to teach me that game with no warning. Yeah, I'd probably be about on the same page, not knowing about this game and then getting hit out of nowhere. That would cause some problems. It was always funny to see it happen, like sitting at a stoplight and the 12-ish year old girl slugging the crap out of maybe her older brother. You could see the gleam in her eyes as she punched him in the arm. I sold my bug several years back. I miss that car. Maybe they'll bring them back to the States in another 10 or so years. Are they not in America anymore? I, I didn't know that. What is the greatest f*** it? I'll do it myself. In history. Let's not forget that Isaac Newton ran out of math to work with and was like, I guess I'll just invent calculus then. Yeah, and Isaac Newton was also the kid at the end of class like, hey, you didn't give us homework. Ugh. Otis invented pretty much what we consider the modern elevator. Nobody was convinced it was safe, so he hoisted himself up extremely high and had somebody cut the cable with an axe to prove how confident he was that the elevator was safe, regardless of almost worst case scenarios. Everyone doubted this guy and he really pulled out the Uno reverse card. In 1888, Almond Brown Strauger, an undertaker, noticed he was losing a lot of business to the other undertaker in town. He found out that the other undertaker's wife was a telephone operator, and when she intercepted people asking to be connected to Strauger's funeral home, the operator would route the call to her husband's funeral home instead. Three years later, Strauger patented the automatic teller exchange, a system which allowed telephone users to make calls without the need for human operators, single-handedly destroying an entire workforce. Huh. You learn something new every day. Cliff Stahl.
Stahl, the cuckoo's egg, noticed weird traffic on his university servers. No one believed him that there was any risk occurring. Ended up uncovering a major hacking attempt to steal missile designs and basically created internet security. I think it was a missile design. It's been a long time. You see, why couldn't Zuckerberg be that cool? Jon Snow? Not that one. The father of epidemiology. No one believed him that the cholera outbreak in what is now Soho was because of a contaminated water pump. He broke it. They arrested him for vandalism and held him until the outbreak suddenly ended. Imagine sitting in that cell like, you don't understand. I just saved everyone. And they're still like, yeah, whatever, you criminal. Brian Acton interviewed at Facebook and got turned down. He said fuck it and built WhatsApp. Several years later, Facebook bought WhatsApp for $19 billion. Yeah, stick it to the Zuck man. What is a good weakness to mention on a job interview? What is your greatest weakness? Um, probably that I have no strengths. I've tried that one. It doesn't work. So why do you want to work here? I'd say my greatest weakness is listening. Sounds like a man to me. <laughs> I have a hard time saying no. Probably don't say that one because they'll just work you until you die. If you're changing industries, your biggest weakness is not knowing the industry yet. If you are younger, say inexperience. Anything to show your willingness to learn and develop. For my current job, I said that I had a hard time sharing my ideas with new groups. Probably not the best weakness to mention, especially if you go into, say, something like marketing. I'm terrible at interviews. You and me both, sister. What are you supposed to do when having happy birthday sung to you? My suggestion is sit there like a dead fish, but let's see what other people did. Stare at the cake. Correct. Block everyone out. Only stare at the cake. That has been your goal for the whole year. Sing back under your breath and make eye contact with only one person. That's the real gift of a birthday, is making someone uncomfortable. Close mouth smile and wide eyes scanning the room. That just makes it sound like you're being held hostage, which honestly, you kind of are. Blend in the crowd and sing with them. I don't know how much that would work because you'd be sat at the end of the table. They'd all be looking at you. You can't really disappear. If it works, it works. Overthinkers of Reddit. What unlikely scenario actually came true that you were completely prepared for because you're an overthinker? I always carry a small sewing kit whenever I go to a wedding. I have sewed two brides into their dresses so far. That's actually a very thoughtful thing to do, just in case there might be some issues. Th that You're a nice person. When my son was still a baby, we had to take an 11-hour flight. As an overthinker, I brought at least 25 diapers for him to go through. He didn't need that many, but the mom sitting close to us was very grateful when she ran out of diapers not even halfway through the flight, and I gave her a few. It's stories like these that really prove to me that there are some good people, but only some. One time, I way overthought a concern I had around dryer vent fire. When the time came that we had a clog, didn't know, and there was a wee burst of flames, I was ready. Ah, such a nice feeling when you thought you were crazy, but you weren't. I carry scissors in my glove compartment. They came in handy when a kid tightened a skinny zip tie around my nine-year-old's finger at a park. Completely cut off the circulation. Also, the other kid's mom was a nurse, so that was helpful too. Carry scissors and a nurse at all times. The scissors I can handle, but I don't know if I could stuff a full human being into my glove compartment. That seems a little excessive. I bought and learned to use a Slim Jim, open lock cars. I carry one in my car and have been able to help no less than 10 people who have locked their keys in their car. My brother was visiting me from out of town and he needed something from Target. He called me and said an elderly man had locked his keys in his car and I was able to drive over and help. Also have jumper cables that have helped start a few stranded drivers. Not gonna lie, when I read Slim Jim, I really thought he just meant he went to the gas station and just bought a, one of the Slim Jim beef stick things and that was opening locked cars? I don't even understand. I don't know. Postal workers of Reddit, what do you need right now? How can we brighten your day when we see you on your routes? Husband delivers mail and he loves just about anything people do. From pictures drawn from kids along the route to thank you letters to cold water and ding dongs. He's appreciative of it all. Just remember folks, next time you see your mailman, be sure to give him a big fat sloppy wet kiss. For me of course. Keep in mind that mail carriers don't have air conditioning in their vehicles. There was one that got baked alive in California last year. The collection drivers don't have AC as well, but they don't hit the residential areas for the most part. Oh my god, that's horrible. I, I guess that explains why they usually have their doors wide open. Former carrier here had one house that always left me a bottle of ice cold water. Highlight of that route. My father has been a postal worker for decades. What makes him smile the most is when people just reach out and be nice and friendly. He would always tell us stories about the people who would put a smile on his face. Note slash card go a long way, but also just say hi and ask them how their day is going. Never underestimate how much a small act of kindness can really just brighten somebody's day. Former mail carrier here, number one, get a bigger mailbox. Water and treats are nice, but a box they don't have to get out at 
that to deliver things is the gift that keeps on giving. If I didn't live in an apartment, I would definitely take that advice because anything to make somebody's job easier, it's it's worth it. Stop locking the mailbox when you park on the street. I never thought about it, but next time I will definitely make sure to avoid the mailbox. What has simultaneously gotten worse and more expensive? One thing's for sure, that would be gas. Gas prices going up and it's still killing the earth? Come on. Big Macs. That burger patty is a stone's throw away from being a slice of roast beef. Might as well just go to Arby's at that point. Ugh, gross. Cable slash internet providers. Oh yeah, sorry, your trial period was over. Your bill went up $200. Oh no, we didn't promise you 200 megabits download speed constantly. We said up to. Read the fine print. Ugh, this just reminding me of what I have to deal with. Cable television. More commercials, channels upon channels of crap. Ridiculous bill. Do people even still get cable television with how many streaming services there are? It's unnecessary. I swear that Reese's peanut butter cups have gotten worse over the years. The peanut butter seems chalkier and the chocolate tastes blander. Plus, I can't ever seem to pry them out of that little cup wrapper without leaving the bottom chocolate skin stuck to it. I think the push to put them in the freezer and eat them chilled is a ploy to cover the declining quality. Interesting. You've got a good theory going there. I myself am not that much of a Reese's fan, but this does seem very possible. As someone shopping for a house, I have to say, homes. Not only has the real estate market been ridiculously inflated, especially in New York City, my residence, I'm finding the actual quality of a lot of these homes are absolute crap. Due to the ability to find and source cheap materials and labor, developers are able to make huge profits off high prices and low costs. It makes me really rethink if I want to buy a house or just use all that money to aggressively invest. My advice would maybe be don't buy a house in New York City. As nice as it may be, you can find a lot better houses for a lot cheaper. Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't know if it's just me, but their prices have gone up and the quality has gone down. I haven't been to Buffalo in a while, but last time I had it, it was okay. I'll have to give it a shot to see if they're if they're onto something. Clothes. Very few companies make clothes to last, and fast fashion is rising while the cost of items continue to increase. That's why I just stick with the classics. I got a whole closet full of old GameStop t-shirts I got in middle school, so I'm set for life. Doctors of Reddit. What's the biggest case of faking it you've ever seen? Dermatologist here. Patient was convinced she had a melanoma and needed a biopsy and would need to be on workers comp. I told her it looked like ink from a marker. She demanded a biopsy. I wiped the area off with an alcohol swab and showed her the ink and that there was no spot on her skin anywhere. She stormed out, threatening to sue. I'm just glad I cured her melanoma. I appreciate her hustle, but you kind of got caught in your lie, so you gotta admit it. Had a patient come in for a fall who now couldn't move their legs at all. Did a bunch of tests, didn't find anything. The patient was not at all phased or suddenly being paralyzed, which was the first red flag. Didn't really believe anything was wrong, but the patient was still not moving their legs. My options are to admit for a huge workup or get them to walk. So I update them saying everything is fine. Tests are negative. You can go home. Patient gets up, gets dressed, and walks out without a word. At least that patient knew when to fold them because they they were caught red-handed more or less. We had a patient faking a seizure, so my supervisor told one of us to get the brain needle. The patient made a miraculous and swift recovery without intervention. Yeah, that's probably a good way to catch someone. Threaten a massive needle. Yeah, that's, that's gonna get me jumping and probably running. Physical therapist here. Working mom comes into the clinic with her infant in a stroller. She's limping like she's got a nail in her foot, wincing in pain and tears in her eyes. She's crying during her visit with the PT. None of us thinks she's faking it. She limped out of the clinic. I glanced out the window and saw this woman bounding down the sidewalk, hips swaying, full stride, going places. She's a strong, independent woman with her baby. She doesn't need no physical therapist. Whenever we had kids, usually teenagers, playing up their symptoms to extend their hospital stay, we would order them into a healthy lifestyle. Lights out at nine, no screen time for two hours before bedtime. Healthy diet, chock full of fruits and vegetables, screen time limits, minimum number of laps around the unit per day to get in their exercise. They got better so much faster with our healthy lifestyle tips. Those teens thought they were slick until they had them doing PE at the ER. What golden nugget of information do you have to share? In the center courtyard of the Pentagon, you don't have to salute superior officers. It's a recreation lunch area and you'd basically spend the whole time saluting, so it's not required there. Source, my uncle, a Navy corpsman who currently works at the Pentagon. Obviously, I've never been inside, but 
I'm inclined to believe them. Stonehenge, the most famous henge, isn't actually a henge. A henge is a Neolithic earthworks, oval or circular in shape, sometimes containing wooden or stone structures and surrounded by a perimeter of a bank with internal ditch. So the famous stones of Stonehenge aren't even a necessary part of a henge, just an optional extra. But more importantly, the bank and ditch at Stonehenge are the wrong way around to make it an official henge. After reading all of that, I still don't really know what a henge is. If you don't have a toilet plunger and you've clogged it up, pour in a bit of dish soap and some hot water. The hotter, the better. Let's stand for 15 minutes and flush. Learned this when immediately upon arriving at our hotel, my eight-year-old clogged up our toilet and I googled. Found this gem. Realized I'd packed a tiny travel bottle of dish soap. Warmed water up in the microwave and lo and behold, it worked. I still use it sometimes at home when I don't want to be grossed out by plunging. Yes, my child has a tendency to clog toilets, so there you go. Not sure if this is fact or cap, but I guess I'll have to try it out. If your older parents slash grandparents are suddenly acting strange, get them checked for a UTI. In older people, UTIs can cause a psychotic or delusional episode. Fascinating. I don't spend much time around older people, but that is a good to know just on the off chance that it happens. At the beginning of every relationship, agree to assume positive intent. Talk about it often. Don't forget about it and make it the most important rule. Fights will be less, empathy will be greater, and your relationship will be stronger. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna write that down there. Perfect, got it, okay. Next one, you are teleported back to 2001, Terminator style, but it's naked and end up in the middle of Times Square. What do you do or say to convince people you're not a stoned homeless person? I'd emulate old Biff and try to predict something that I knew would be coming up. They'd at least figure that I was either a time traveler or a psychic. If you really want this plan to go off without a hitch, you need to be sure when you go back in time, you have a sports almanac. Did they just see me come out of a ball of electricity? I'll need no explanation. I feel like if you came out of a giant ball of electricity in the middle of Times Square, I'm sure you would have a lot more police on your back. What's the date? I feel the city might be a little preoccupied. Okay, okay, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about the day that Halo Combat Evolved was released and it was really busy at all of the game stores. I'd probably just cry. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will understand that, seeing a crazy naked dude crying in the middle of Times Square. Just normal New York activity. I would start with, your clothes, give them to me now. I'd call 2001 me to wire me some money, then get back home to talk about the next 20 years. I'd be expecting that call, so it wouldn't have been a stretch. See, if I tried to do that, I would be, let's see, one, two, one. I'd be one years old and that wouldn't work. What's a quote that permanently changed the way you look at things? Let go or be dragged. An old Zen proverb I heard at a meditation class really changed the way I let myself worry about things. Do you listen or just wait to speak? That sounds like a bit of a wake up call to me. I had a professor in college. He called it the 1090 rule. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Changed my life. That's actually a really cool way of thinking about it. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not who someone else is today. Honesty without kindness is brutality. Kindness without honesty is manipulation. Girl boss, gatekeep, gaslight. That's all I need. Luck favors the prepared. No wonder I'm so unlucky. I am never prepared. No one raindrop thinks it causes the flood. You might be the sweetest peach on the tree, but some people just don't like peaches. If when you die, someone takes the VR headset off your head and asks you how the virtual life was, what's the first thing you say? Can I have creative mode now? Oh, that would be so awesome seeing somebody just levitating, T-posing through the sky at maximum speed. Are there any autosaves I can load? I'd like to try a couple things over. The AI needs a major buff to their driving ability. That's the only thing Grand Theft Auto got correct, that nobody knows how to drive. Is there anyone from that life who is real here? That's the fun thing. We're actually in the metaverse right now. Leaves negative review. Would not recommend. Boring, buggy, and a huge grind fest. The anxiety feature is way too much, guys. While it might increase your immersion, it can also take you out of it. What's an oh sh moment where you realized you've been doing something the wrong way for years? When I was five, a Pizza Hut employee told me that the powder on the breadsticks was called fairy dust. Ordered extra fairy dust on my breadsticks until I was around 14 when an employee said, do you mean garlic salt? It still devastates me to realize how obtuse I was. It wasn't very long, but when I was learning to drive, my dad was explaining the rule of thumb regarding a safe distance to be behind the car in front of you. I thought it meant to hold your thumb up, and if your thumb didn't cover the entire car, you were too close to it. When he caught me doing that, he asked me what I was doing. When I explained, he burst out laughing, then considered it, and concluded it wasn't a bad 
bad idea, but perhaps a bit distracting. Yeah, that is that isn't the worst idea. It's still strange, but it works. We bought a nice liquor cabinet. We got it delivered and noticed it was a bit shorter than we thought. No biggie. Three years later, we're moving. Lift up the cabinet and these beautiful, ornate, screw-on legs wrapped in tape and bubble wrap fall off the bottom. Looks so much better now. Always inspect your new furniture. You never know what you're going to find. Like, required parts for it. Until last week, when my father-in-law would make a phone call on his very basic non-touchscreen flip phone, he would open the menu, scroll to the phone icon, open it, hit the soft key for contacts, scroll to the person he wanted to call, press OK, then press the soft key to call. When he mentioned how he preferred his landline because he could just dial the number, I said, humor me. Just dial the number and hit the talk button. I've never seen a man so simultaneously grateful and embarrassed. A couple years ago, I was trying to open some toothpaste and had to break the seal of the tube. I used to look for something like a nail to break it, then one one day I looked at the pointy end of the cap and thought, what if I could use this to break it? And oh shit, it did fit and broke it effortlessly. And so did every other tube product I had in the house and their respective cap. My mind was blown. I only recently found out that most caps for tube products do that. Unlike YouTube, ha ha ha. Get it? Because there's a tube in the name? Never mind. What invention is so good that it actually can't be improved upon? I've heard the pin setter machine and bowling alleys have never had a redesign. It was perfect already. Already. Yeah, I can't think of any way you would make it better. I mean, it cleans the pins and puts them back, so that's all you need. P-trap, a simple, elegant way to prevent odor from coming into your house via sink, toilet, etc. I'm not sure what that is, but that doesn't sound like a good name. A mirror is as good as it gets for its usage. While I agree, have you ever been to a fun house? Those mirrors are funky and weird. Paper clips, last major patent was in 1880. You know what? Because I'm petty, I'm gonna try and reinvent the paper clip. You watch me. Cast iron skillet. Estimated 1707. Yeah, but I don't know how that thing works. The brick. It's been made of mud, then mud with straw, then mud with clay, then finally with clay alone. That is as far as progress has taken the brick in the, guess, 8,000 years since it was invented, and it is still in use today. The only new update you could do to a brick is full metal. Full metal brick. Pizza. You can change it up, you can ruin it, and you can fold it in half like a crazy calzone munching madman, but you can't beat perfection. What are some lesser known secondary uses for an everyday product? Use salt as an abrasive and absorber when cleaning. I spray my stove top with a general household cleaner, then sprinkle salt liberally over the top. It gets grease out easily. For liquid stains like wine, I pour salt over the stain to soak up excess liquid, then come through with hydrogen peroxide. Finally, I get absorbent towels and dab clean it. Scuba diver here. Instead of using those expensive defogger gels and sprays on your mask, smear a bunch of dish soap in it. Rinse once or twice and your mask will never fog during the dive. You can also use this method to keep your windshield from fogging. Smear a bunch of dish soap on a towel, then rub it all over the insides of your windshield. Take another damp towel and rub the soap off until your windshield is clear. I did this three weeks ago and have not had to defog a single time since. Bleach to keep away cockroaches. I used to get big cockroaches in the summer that came up my drain. Ew. My exterminator told me to pour one cup of bleach down my drain each week. You have to pour it down the drain in the room you see them. I started 18 months ago and haven't seen a cockroach since. Clear nail polish. Prevent skin going green from brass. Permanently stop fabric from fraying. Same goes with yarn. And sealing paint. The $2 quick dry stuff is the best for me. Add salt to your hand wash to get gasoline smell off. Shaving foam reduces slash stops misting on bathroom mirrors and car windows. Toilet seat covers are the same as blotting paper for oily skin. Ew, are you saying you have an oily... <laughs> gross. Any cooking oil is a great way to remove the residue from stickers. I don't know if this is recommended, but if you get scratches on wood furniture, I've always taken a matching washable marker, colored over the scratch, and then wiped it with a damp cloth to effectively stain the wood back to match. What was supposed to be the next big thing, but totally flopped? Amazon's shopping buttons. They pushed really hard for those, and I never saw the point. I'm sure mothers loved it when their children decided to play with the Tide Pod button. Crystal Pepsi. New Coke. Orange juice and toothpaste flavored Lay's potato chips. Gross. They made those? Yuck. Coney 2012. I don't know if that was the next big thing, but it was a thing. My friend who studies medicine had to install Second Life about two years ago for a class meeting. I don't get why they couldn't have used Skype, but okay. McDonald's pizza. Ugh. I remember hearing whispers about those a few years ago. Nothing good. Soap shoes. These were like normal shoes, but you could grind on rails with them via an indent in the sole. If you heard of these things from 
somewhere that wasn't Sonic Adventure 2. Please tell me where, and please tell me where I can buy a pair. They got me there. I have only ever heard of them from Sonic Adventure 2, but I did see people using them back in the day, so I do need to know where you get them. Man, I remember as a kid seeing the Ninja Turtles and Dick Tracy use video comms and thinking it was so cool and wanting one for myself. And now if someone FaceTimes me, I have a panic attack. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, the ways we thought technology would be cool and now it's scary. What is that one fact you know that always makes people respond? And why do you know that? This will get buried, but don't ever bury a dead body in an area without any vegetation. The high nitrogen content in our bodies helps plants to grow and there will be a weird grassy patch at the top of the burial site and anyone would be able to spot it. Yeah, why do you know that? Where's the body? If you're allergic to chocolate, you're usually allergic to cockroaches. What? Where's the connection there? At a single time, the sloth's body mass can be compromised of one-third feces. It takes several hours for the sloth to excrete its bowels completely. Me too. Back in the day, poor families would collect their urine so they could sell it to tanners, hence piss poor. If you were poorer than that, well, you didn't even have a pot to piss in. When you drop a human uterus on the floor, it will bounce. First of all, obviously, why do you know that? And two, is this like a common thing you do? A hippo's sweat is red, and I will not be getting close enough to confirm this information. What is older than we think? The first carbonated drink to be sold to the public was invented by Swiss watchmaker and amateur scientist J.J. Schwepp in 1783, who sold his delicious sparkling water to thirsty customers in Geneva. In just seven years, he was doing business so fast that he moved the factory to London and introduced a new flavor, sparkling lemon, to stand out from competitors who were trying to imitate his drink. The aux connector that we still use for headphones and speakers was invented in 1877. There have been improvements since, but the basics of it are pretty much the same. Beer is thought to be older than bread. It's much easier to fill a jar with wheat and water, let it ferment and brew beer, than it is to grind grain, mix it, and bake it. Sharks. As a species, they're older than the rings of Saturn. Alright, I'm gonna need a source on that because that feels very unbelievable. Wrist watches. Queen Elizabeth I got one in 1571. Look, a busy woman like the Queen definitely needs to tell the time, and Big Ben is overrated. The fact that the lighter is older than the match shook my head as a kid. It also gave me the curiosity to question things that seemed obvious. Looks like we got a new Socrates on our hands. Escalators have been around since 1859, though they were called rotating stairs. We are now less than 45 days from April Fool's Day. What long con pranks should be started around now? We spent two months in Europe two summers ago and rented out the house on Airbnb to cover expenses while gone. One of the renters was a film crew that shot a documentary about a local psychopath who killed a few people. The producers needed a home setting where they could interview witnesses and people who knew the guy or victims. There are plenty of interviews of people describing the murders and how evil this person was that clearly show our living room, guest room, and kitchen in the background. My wife was not involved in managing the Airbnb listing, so while I mentioned the film crew to her two years ago, she never asked what it was about, and I'm sure she has absolutely no idea that this footage exists. I plan on just casually coming across the documentary on April 1st and watch it with her to see her reaction. When I was a kid, my grandma had a ceiling fan very high up with a long string attached. Every week, my dad would come over while she was at work and cut a tiny portion of the string off. After a few months, my grandma told us how she was worried she had osteoporosis and was shrinking because she can no longer reach the string. It was hilarious, but more than that, it was awesome to see my grandma hitting my dad after he told her. I've been sending a picture of creepy clowns to a buddy via text from a Google Voice number for four months now. Occasionally with a line like, do you want to hear a joke? Why aren't you home right now? When I know he's at the bar. He's asked every one of our friends if it's them other than me and now shouts at the bar, oh great, my effing creepy clown is texting me again. Anytime he gets the text. I've now purchased a handful of items from Amazon like a clown nose, similar wig, makeup kit, and his roommates are going to leave them laying around the house where he sits on the couch or in the shared bathroom. Ultimately on April 1st, we'll be hanging a clown mask in his garage where they hang out after hours after the bar and we will reveal that it was me doing this. He's either going to be in tears laughing or will surely murder me. Completely worth it when I see him freak out from time to time. Ah. That's the sound the Cole indeed makes. Ah. A while back I got an app that could send an error message to a computer with customized text. For a few weeks I would send sporadic messages like monitor error 1003, monitor sync error, etc. On April Fool's Day I sent the message monitor radiation shield has failed. Please step back five feet. My great grandpa got his kids to start cracking 
cracking hard-boiled eggs on their foreheads. Then, on April 1st, he gave my great-uncle a raw egg. Oh, the classics. Oh man, I have 500 bouncy balls at home. I should start doing stuff with them. I like that he didn't even have an idea, he just knows he has potential. Do bosses like Michael Scott actually exist? And if you work slash worked for one, what's your craziest story? I had a boss sneak up behind a middle-aged female employee and pick her up, then immediately drop her down saying, I didn't think you weighed that much. He could not stop laughing. He was the principal. This occurred during passing period in a crowded middle school hallway. I had a boss once who spent all morning locked in his office. He asked me to come in after lunch where he showed me a handmade graph. He then proceeded to explain that this was a chart of all the sex he had had in his life. See here, it is blank until I joined the army. Then I went to a hooker here. Then they sent me to Vietnam where hookers only charge $2 per time. That's where you see the big jump. I was on two tours but then got shot in the face. I came back home and you see how it just drops to almost nothing. I was astounded. I had a redhead boss who made us all sit down and watch a training video about how we shouldn't refer to him as Ginger because it's bullying. No one had ever called him that. He's just being proactive, I guess. Had a boss who was very peculiar. For instance, he'd open a random closet, look at the stuff inside, then go on a tirade. Look at all this! Who bought all this crap? Uh, you did. Oh, well, somebody needs to throw it away. Constant stuff like that. Giving me very Cave Johnson vibes. I had a boss that used to watch me through a gap in the glass partition between our desks. She wanted to see if I was paying attention during meetings. One day, I put a large folder to cover the gap and she freaked. I still laugh when I think about it. Rather than eating a family-sized bag of Doritos in 20 minutes, what are some healthy snack alternatives that can be consumed in large amounts? Add tagine to fruits to get your salty fix. That was not an ad. That was just a good read. <laughs> Anyways, plain popcorn. A cup of Air Pop popcorn only has 31 calories and high in fiber. Studies have found that popcorn will fill you up more than any other popular snack, such as potato chips. It is also high volume, having pretty much the same nutritional value as a popcorn kernel. It's also delicious. So delicious and tasty. Probably celery or cucumber. You might be able to get away with watermelon as well. I once went through three and a half watermelons a week. Watermelon is great. Snap peas. That's a snappy answer. <laughs> I don't, sorry, don't know why I hyperventilated there. I tend to eat roasted dry seaweed packs. Only like 25 calories a pack and not that much sodium if you get good ones. The good bean baked chickpeas with sea salt. I've never heard of that and I guess I'm gonna have to Google it later. You are teleported into a game of your choice for a month. If you die in the game, you die in real life. But whatever you collect in the game, you can keep in real life. Skills, magic, items, pets, clothes. What game do you pick? Play a Fire Emblem game on casual mode. Learn healing magic. Maybe get a legendary weapon if I'm lucky. If I'm defeated in battle, I just retreat, return to real world, make a killing as a doctor who can heal any physical wound in seconds. You know, I think the big J-man had the same idea. Portal 2. That gun, man. And the cake. You can just make the cake in real life. Lego worlds. Even if the studs and items don't become real when I return, I'd still have a bunch of Legos. Also, low risk of dying. Elite dangerous. I'll just play on solo and grind to get the best ship possible slash bunch of ships. Come home and use them to explore the IRL galaxy. Nintendogs. Yeah, I mean, if you can't get a real dog, then get one that's immortal. Adventure capitalist or freaking cookie clicker. Why stop at one grandma? What is something about yourself that sounds totally made up but is 100% real? I built a 13-foot tall T-Rex with Christopher Walken's head and New York Magazine called it highbrow and brilliant. My dad's name is Luigi and my uncle's name is Mario. They are brothers. I forgot to add that my dad is also a plumber. That's just too good to be true. Y you cannot be telling the truth. I never graduated high school, but I have a bachelor's degree. I was homeschooled and my mom never went through the legal steps to actually get me a real diploma. So she made me one in Photoshop that was then used to get me into this podunk community college that didn't verify it. From there, I got my associate's degree, which I then used to get into a decent university where I got my bachelor's. I am allergic to lettuce. Like, I carry an EpiPen allergic. I didn't even, th it's mostly water, isn't it? I was once sponsored by the Crunk Energy Drink Company for sailing. I imagine I was the only sailor on their list. I literally just emailed them saying that I sailed and asked if they wanted me to put stickers on my boat. They sent me a few cases of the drink, t-shirts, hats, and the works. My car was known as the Crunk Mobile. I saw the former Prime Minister of Poland in his underwear. I'm gonna need pictures or it didn't happen. I found out my father wasn't my biological father in 10th grade biology class. We were learning about blood types and traits. I raised my hand thinking I was a smart 
chart asks, your chart isn't accurate. My dad has AB negative and I'm O positive. My teacher said, I think your mom has some explaining to do. And we all chuckled. Turned out he was not my father. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. What are some very creepy facts? If you get a blood transfusion and get the wrong type of blood, AB, O, AB, one of the symptoms is a sense of impending doom. There's a genetic disease called fibrodysplasia ossificanus. I can't say that. When tissue is damaged, it is replaced with bone. Growths from underneath their skin and their joints lock solid, so over time, those affected slowly become encased in a prison of bone just beneath their own skin. They usually have to choose between sitting or standing up for the rest of their life. By the end of their life, they have to drink every meal through a straw and can barely move. Bacteria and viruses can be frozen for millions of years and still be viably infectious, and having never encountered humanity before, could have no end of catastrophic results should they be uncovered and manage to infect a person or animal. I can smell the zombie apocalypse starting right now. Humans' eyes don't reflect light at night like animals do. I like to say this fact to my wife at a campfire. There is a fungus, cordyceps, that can actually brain control insects, forcing them to move to a higher location where they will eventually die and release more cordyceps spores. Those things have freaked me out ever since the first Last of Us game came out. Ugh, they just, the idea is, oh my lordy. I won't talk about that though. The bottom of Lake Superior is cold enough that the bodies of dead sailors just remain. They don't really decompose because it's at freezing temperatures, so they instead get a coating of adip uh, whatever that word is. I think that's how it's spelled. Yeah, I don't know either. Which is liquid body fat hardening around them. Gordon Lightfoot wasn't lying when he wrote, the lake never gives up her dead. Would you rather be the best at speaking every language or be the best at playing every instrument? Why? Does either skill require upkeep of any kind? Will these skills diminish if I don't keep them sharp? That's a fair question to ask. Ooh, that's tough. Speaking every language would be so amazing because you could communicate with literally anyone. You could talk to anyone on the whole planet, and I bet you could also get a fantastic, well-paid job with that skill. But I don't like people all that much. I'd find it much more personally satisfying to be able to be able to play any instrument. How amazing it would be to be able to express myself with any instrument that exists. You can also be a musician, and that would be way better for me than being an interpreter, so I'd have to go with that. Language. If it's every language, it means I could speak dead languages and translate some of the oldest texts in the world. That would be super cool. Every language, because I would dress like C-3PO and mess with people. Instrument. I am scared of social interaction. That's fair enough. Instrument. If you're the best at any instrument, you can monetize that pretty well. Your consciousness is sent back to when you were age 15, and you maintain all of your current knowledge and experience. What do you do? Save more money. Take better care of my teeth. Not eat as much junk. Not date people who are just a waste of time. Not worry as much. Appreciate the irreplaceable things more. Not say some mean, wrong things I said. Choose a different career path. I do not install League of Legends. Now that is the first and only good use of time travel. I'm just kidding. If you like playing League, go, go crazy. Well, knowing me, I don't make the stupid choices I made from the past 31 years. But also knowing me, I would make totally different stupid choices because I'm human. Just because I could now avoid the traps I had fallen into back then, this does not mean I would not fall into different traps. But hopefully the sum total would be a better life. Focus on high school a bit better. Try and keep in touch with my best friend at the time a bit better after she moved across town. Talk with my dad more about family and stuff. Apologize for being a little shit in middle school more. Figure out my major a lot faster. I was in my freshman year of high school. I'd go back and relive those years being completely and totally myself like I should have done way back when. Take better care of my teeth. This seems like a common one and I would also have to say, yeah, I'd probably do that too. That and invest in Apple or Bitcoin, whatever. If you could single-handedly choose anyone, alive, dead, or fictional, to be the next president of the United States, who would you choose and why? Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Starship Enterprise because he's a scholar, a gentleman, a diplomat, and a badass chief officer. Mr. Rogers. I mean, who could say no or be mean to him? Then he would be disappointed in you and most people wouldn't be able to survive that. A fictional version of me where I'm much smarter and impervious to corruption. Throw sexy in there too. Why not? Minerva McGonagall, a warm, reassuring personality, but strict and no nonsense. As good as she might be, I don't know the legality of a British person being our US president. Who knows though? Sauron, the age of man is over. The age of the orc has begun. Edit. For everyone making like Silmarillion and book references to me, I'm reading the books, but I'm not done them yet. That cat who's mayor of an Alaskan town. Stubbs, 
I think? He'd do a good job if the resonance there are to be believed. Stubs for 2020. Meow is the time. How do you feel about a friend with benefits? But instead of sexual benefits, it's medical, dental, and pension. I work at an airline. Since I'm not married, I put my best friend as my travel companion, and he basically shares my flight benefits. He now calls me a friend with benefits, and it confuses people. My mom was in the Navy and used to hang out with two married couples who were actually two gay couples who married each other to get better benefits. Smart stuff right there. Smart thinking. No vision? No thanks. That is a requirement if we're going to be friends with benefits. You have to make sure that I can get new glasses. I literally married a girl that had cancer before the pre-existing condition stuff ended because I was in the army and could get her insurance. She's alive and married to a good dude with kids. Best thing I've done in my life. At least he's not bitter about it ending the way it did. I mean, he saved a person's life. I feel like I'm available for this kind of relationship. Are you some secret CEO? Bezos, is that you? Wife already has that. Though the friend part of it is rapidly waning. Yikes, buddy. That's, uh, maybe fix that. What's a joke that's so stupid it's funny? Knock, knock. Who's there? Quiet and horse. Quiet and horse who? Hey. <laughs> Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. What's the difference between a dirty bus stop and a lobster with breast implants? One's a crusty bus station and the other is a busty crustacean. What's the best thing about Switzerland? Well, the flag's a big plus. To be frank, I'd have to change my name. <laughs> I love that. Statistically, six out of seven dwarves are not happy. Hello, everybody. My name is Mason. I'll be your narrator for the day. What was the biggest bullet you dodged? Many years ago, my flight had just landed at Chicago O'Hare, and the plane was taxiing when the pilot suddenly slammed on the brakes. People were literally thrown forward against the seat in front of them. A few seconds later, another plane, taking off, I think, went screaming by right in front of us. No explanation was given, though our imaginations provided a lot of gory details. As a kid, after running air in town with my mom, I was climbing into the back seat of our family station wagon. A semi-truck hit a power line pole down the street, causing the still live wire to fall, bounce off the roof of the car, and hang across the open door just a foot or two above my legs. Raised Catholic, I wondered for a while after if I had died that day that the rest of what I thought was life was my purgatory. Not changing jobs in early 2020 would have been a short-lived promotion after early restructuring and layoffs. After I had a stroke, I was in a coma and it didn't look like I'd wake up. The doctors asked my wife if they should let me go. I only exist because she said no. I didn't dodge a bullet so much as my wife blocked it for me. Freshman year of college, I had a calc class. It was material I had learned before, but for various reasons, they didn't give me the transfer credit, so I skipped class quite frequently. Though I usually slept in, one morning I find myself awake at 8.30 and not really feeling like sleep. Might as well check in on the class and see what's going on. It was the midterm exam. What's the craziest butterfly effect that happened to you because of a small decision you made? I decided to invite my chem lab partner to lunch on the first day of college just to be friendly and try and make more than one friend at school. We met up with only the other friend I'd made at school so far. He thought my lab partner was cute, invited himself to hang out with her, and then fell in love with her roommate instead. He ended up married to the roommate. They've been together for 22 years and have two children. Watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and got so annoyed at the candidates not knowing a simple question about Katy Perry that I applied, got in, got to play, won a lot of money, booked a holiday to a dream destination with that money, met my husband there. We now have a one-year-old son. I had to renew the sticker on my license plate a couple of years ago and really didn't feel like sitting in the waiting room by myself, so I told my mom I'd take her out to dinner after she came with me. The guy working at the counter turned out to be my mom's long-lost biological brother. If she hadn't come with me, I would have never known. Made a last-minute decision to go to a friend's divorce party and met my wife. About 10 years ago, there were no PC games to play, so I tried using Windows XP Movie Maker out of boredom. I didn't know that I'm going to enjoy it and take it seriously. Now, I'm currently working on a TV film production as a video editor. Clarification, I mean, there's no games that is installed with our computer back then. Parents have read it. What is the best weird flex but okay moment you've seen from your child. When my kid was potty training, he was in a phase where he loved temporary tattoos. We used tattoos as a reward for a successful potty trip. He got so he was covered on both arms, back, and chest. We didn't think much of it living in Seattle until one summer day we took him to the wading pool. For one of the first times in public, we took his shirt off and he strode out into the pool with toddler abs and a Thomas the Tank <laughs> train shorts, looking like he had just finished a hard set of reps at the free weights in the prison yard. While leaving my family gathering, my cousin asked my little boy for a fist bump. My child refused. My cousin said, come on, why no fist bump? My kid, five at the time, looks him straight in the eye and says, I don't want to break every bone in your arm. My seven-year-old daughter didn't want our house guests to go in her room because they might see her awards. Good grades, taekwondo belts. She worried they would think she was famous. When my son was about six, he was in the back seat with a friend and he boasted that he had once thrown up his entire Chinese dinner on his bedroom carpet and you could see the food and everything. <laughs> What? My oldest told me she used to control me from the inside when she was in my tummy. My son was at a well-child check
back up and when asked about eating habits, he told her, I think I eat too many vegetables. Liar. Couples therapists, without breaking confidentiality, what are some relationships that instantly set off red flags and do you try and get them to work out? When one person is entirely dependent on the other, especially at a relatively young age. I mean financially and emotionally. These are typically young women, sometimes young men as well, who do not work, do not have children, stay home all day, and have no friends or hobbies outside of hanging out with their spouse. Very unhealthy and a huge red flag always ends in a painful and messy breakup. One partner says they're seeking your services to help them determine if they want to stay together. The other partner says they're seeking your services to make it so they stay together. Then it's about highlighting the points and allowing the person who is on the fence to decide what they want since the other person knows. I'm not a therapist, but my therapist straight face told me there are worse options than divorce. Got divorced and it was the best thing that happened to me. People who approach therapy with the idea that they must convince the therapist that they're right and their partner is wrong, almost like they're complaining to a parent or boss to have them sort out their problems. Contempt. When I experience true contempt from one in the relationship, I know it is usually over. Look towards a peaceful ending at that point if possible. Police officers of Reddit, who is the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? My favorite was the guy who stole a post office mailbox off the street, repainted it, and then put it next to the night deposit box at a bank and hung an out of order sign on the deposit box. All the businesses came along and dropped off their deposits in the mailbox. A guy I went to high school with had been stealing from Walmart in a pretty clever way. He would grab video games, MP3 players, beer, etc., and throw them away in a trash can in the garden section. The workers never checked the trash contents and he would just wait, sometimes five hours until they emptied the trash in the back dumpster and hop in to get his items. Once he took a cardboard box from a display inside, filled it with video games, PS3, and extra controllers. He grabbed some tape and pens and drew all over the box and taped it up to make it look used and tossed it. An hour later, he had a whole new PS3 and a stack of games. I'm not a cop, but I worked a crime scene. This guy had attached GPS to the bottom of people's cars who owned houses he wanted to rob. He did it to ensure they wouldn't be showing up while he was ransacking the place. Working in an HOM improvement store when younger, this guy came in, went to the snowblowers, took one, and went to the return desk. Said he wanted to return it, but had no receipt. They told him, you need a receipt, so he says, okay, I'll be back, and wheels it off to the car through the front door. He did this a few times, apparently. A couple places even helped him load it back into his car. Time freezes for 48 hours, and you're the only thing not affected. What do you choose to do? Be confused. I would jump from one idea to another, and I won't be able to start until the time's over. So basically nothing. Move everyone slightly off the ground, not enough to get hurt, but enough to realize you're falling, making sure everyone is in the exact same position, except one person hanging off of something very visible. So everyone gets a weird falling feeling, except the guy who really can't explain why he's in a harness hanging off of two light posts. Get beaten up by a 4D time cop. Probably browse Reddit and wonder why there's nothing new. That's a war bait. Okay. I wish I could freeze for 48 hours and time would just move on. About half an hour of not realizing, 47 and a half hours of existential crisis, followed by years of therapy. If you were offered immortality, but every time moonlight shined on you, you'd be a walking skeleton, would you accept it? If so, why? I would, so I could spend and eternity scaring people. I would, because if I ever got bored of immortality, I'd just go kidnap a blacksmith and reverse the offer with his blood. Who wouldn't want to be a walking skeleton? Depends on the terms. Am I straight up pirates of the Caribbean, eternal life, but also eternally starving, eternally thirsty, and so on? If it's a curse, then no. But if I continue as I am now and just look like a skeleton every time the moonlight touches me, then I'd do it. I could be Ghost Rider, but only on full moon nights. Might be cool. Yeah, I'd charge to show up at Halloween parties, weddings, funerals, prom escorts, and bar mitzvahs. Besides, eating cereal with water? What is the most outrageous eating sin you have ever witnessed? Oh, I am I am ready for this one. The wife dips Oreos in water like a psychopath. Oh my god. When I visited my aunt's family as a kid, she served a purple cow. Milk mixed with grape juice for breakfast. If you haven't tasted it, take my word for it. It's not a great concoction. Friend's mom used to eat soy sauce with ice cream. I used to be obsessed with A1. I would put it on everything possible because I loved it so much. One day, I put it on jello. I no longer enjoy A1. My sister would make Ritz cracker sandwiches, except the thing that went between the two Ritz cracker buns was another Ritz cracker, except chewed up and spit out. It was disgusting. Vile. Those who have been to a ruined wedding? What happened? I played a wedding where, as we started playing the set, everyone ran outside. Nobody was to be seen for the rest of the night. I originally assumed it was because nobody liked us, but the bride came in afterward and said there was a huge fight involving multiple members of both families, and everyone basically went home upset, injured, or in a police van. 
time. We couldn't stop playing since we were paid and it was our job. And the only person watching was the drunk uncle dancing on his own asking for requests we didn't know. No one turned up to the reception except myself and a partner. There was about eight people in total and the couple had went all out for the reception. Awkward. Attended a wedding reception and was seated near the cameraman. An aunt of mine was sitting closer to the camera and spent the evening commenting and gossiping about everyone. And much of it came out on the video. The cameraman was great. He did two copies, one edited and the other no holds barred. The unedited version is the stuff of legend. Drunk mother of the bride stumbled, fell, and rolled into a lake. If cats had pockets, what would you find in your cat's pockets? Food for now, food for later, and food for even later. My cat's a pig who will knock things over and break them to get food. All of my hair ties, hides them all or gathers them in one spot. Half of a potato chip or a cracker, the cap to my water bottle and hides it constantly. Food stashed away as a preparing for starvation. Every meal is last meal. Their paws, of course. Thank you for that. Tiny mittens because I put them there. <laughs> Tell you what you wouldn't find. A single dead dove. Do not eat. What is the craziest crime you or somebody in your family has committed? My father committed one of the first computer crimes in the 90s. A ton of files were corrupted due to a code he created because they fired him. FBI invaded our home and arrested him. He was sent to federal prison for four years, which was interesting because there was never a crime committed of his nature before. They made a forensics file episode about it. My uncle used to dress up with a group of friends as DEA agents in the 80s and raid crack houses, only to take the drugs and consume them. My father, when I was still very young, used a fake name and pretended to be a wedding planner for a young couple. That young couple hired him, since he seemed trustworthy and is an excellent liar, giving him access to their savings for wedding supplies and such that would be needed. Instead, he stole all of the money out of their account and then ran away with it. As far as I'm aware, he was never caught and the money was never returned to them. In college, we got a new printer and printed off a bunch of fairly convincing $20 bills, roughed them up and used them at a bunch of fast food restaurants. Didn't realize how dumb it was until years later. My sister shoplifts uncontrollably. She shoplifts everything everywhere she goes. Her daughter just turned one and she has stolen every bit of formula her daughter ever used. It's insane how she's never been caught. My uncle stole one of those oil candles from our table at the Hard Rock Cafe once. When we got outside, he pulled it from his jacket with it still lit. You can have one billion dollars, but you can never get drunk or high again? Are you interested? Why or why not? When you say you can never get drunk or high again, does that mean I'm imp pervious to drugs and alcohol, or I'm not allowed to try. Either way, yes, but I'm curious. I'd pay you a thousand dollars if you can make me unable to get drunk. Absolutely. Besides, there are plenty of other vices available to someone with a billion dollars. Obviously, yes. Bring it down to a hundred K or something, and then you might get some interesting answers. A billion dollars is ridiculous. Nothing I wouldn't do for that kind of money. I'd do crack for a billion dollars, probably. You guys are getting paid? What's a really awkward situation that everyone can relate with? Someone trying to initiate a handshake after you've just washed your hands. It's either a few awkward seconds of quickly drying your hands on your jeans or shaking the hand away and seeing the discomfort in their eyes. Saying hello or how are you to someone and getting completely 100% ignored. Someone showing everyone in the group something on their phone and waiting until it is your turn. Having your stomach rumble in the middle of a quiet class or meeting. When you run out of things to say during a conversation and you're not quite sure how to end it. Not being able to pick up when someone else is completely disinterested in what you're talking about. When you've had multiple interactions with someone but you can't remember their name and it's gone too far to admit you've forgotten it so you just have to call them love or mate forever. What food does your mom make better than anybody who has ever existed in the entire history of the universe? Christmas dinner for me. Sticky toffee pudding. British. Gross. Could be something to do with the full pound of butter she uses, but who can say? I married into a Ukrainian family and my mother-in-law and wife make potato cheese pierogies for Christmas and Thanksgiving each year from scratch. And there's nothing like them. You think you like pierogies and then you have a homemade one and suddenly you can hear colors. Honestly, everything. That woman's like a mad scientist in the kitchen. She'll f*** around and experiment, turn out some really weird gross downright obscene stuff from time to time and just figure out what works. And the process ends with something that you imagine the gods would eat on Olympus. Gumbo. My mom made the absolute best gumbo and I've spent the last 10 years trying to get it right because she never wrote down the recipe for me before she died despite me practically begging for her to do so. God, I miss her and her gumbo. Someone should launch a show called Mom Food Showdown. My mom can make the single best roast potatoes I've ever had. Vets of Reddit. What was the worst pet name you have ever encountered on your job? Envelope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Envelope. Sexy. For a chihuahua. Just made the whole consultation very awkward. One of my boys wanted to name one of our dogs Meat Stack. My son was six and we adopted a puppy. Same kid wanted to name his brother Turtle Flower when he was born. Needless to say, he is not in charge of naming things in our household. Old neighbor lady had a cat named Face. Because it had a beautiful face, she said. My brother-in-law named his cat Salad. That's a good one, actually. I like that. Clitzy. My cat's name is Soup. The vet jokes we ought to start calling him Stew if he keeps getting wet food.
food since he's a little chunky. My first pet that I can remember getting was a fish when I was about three or four years old. I named him Clock because I happened to be looking at a clock when my mom asked what I wanted to name him. What family secret was finally spilled in your family? That my parents had to get married. They always told us they got married in 1961, but it was 1962, three months before my sister was born. What's amusing is that my father was an accountant who was insanely fast with math. Whenever he was asked by how many years they'd been married, he'd be off by one. My mother would correct him through clenched teeth and then my father would nod and agree. My great grandmother wasn't actually Mexican, but was rather adopted by a Mexican family from a Chinese family who was being kicked out of Mexico when railroad construction was over. She always had more typically Asian features, but only spoke Spanish and it was never really questioned. 23 and me is a hell of a thing. This is kind of messed up, but my parents told me my mom had a bad back because I pushed on her spine during birth. This was what I thought all my childhood. I think it was in my teens when my older brother told me my dad pushed my mom during an argument and she fell and had to have surgery. I only just recently heard about this, but my grandmother had gotten a little drunk with my dad and brother a month or so ago and started talking about our great uncle Ferber. Not sure on the spelling, but from what I heard, he apparently killed quite a few people and buried them on some family owned land in a swamp. Found out my grandma had a baby as a teenager and was forced to give him up for adoption by my great grandparents. 40 years later, he found us. About a month ago, my mother-in-law's 88 year old sister revealed on her deathbed that her husband's best friend was actually the father of all four of her children. Her husband was an abusive grade A jerk by all accounts. While everyone was shocked, no one was saddened by this news. What do most people not realize is newer than they actually think? The internet? Home pregnancy tests. In the 1970s, no longer do we have to inject the lady's urine into frogs, mice, or rabbits to confirm a pregnancy. The knowledge that it's bad to drink when pregnant only became widely known in the 80s. The word sibling was coined in 1903. Shibata bread goes all the way back to the early 1980s. Oh my god. Boxer briefs are fairly new to the scene, becoming popular in the 1990s. Tomatoes are actually a new world crop, so when you associate Italy with pasta sauce, you're actually thinking of Italy post-Columbian exchange, mid-1500s. And actually, tomato sauce wasn't even integrated into Italian cuisine until the late 19th century. So go figure. Knowing what the sun is made out of. Sun stuff. Pluto, the celestial body, wasn't truly discovered until 1930. Only one year later, Mickey Mouse's dog was renamed from Rover to Pluto, likely to capitalize on the hype around this new planet, but there are no sources to confirm this. What is something most people need to hear, but no one has the guts to tell people? Don't be yourself. Be your best self. You have a massive and delicate ego. High school was a long time ago. We haven't aged well. In fact, we look like our parents and I don't remember you. Stop fishing for compliments. It's annoying. Nobody cares about that small thing you're afraid they'll notice. They're too obsessed with their own small things. They're afraid you will notice. That company you work for doesn't give a crap about you. Update your resume, pop that bad boy on Indeed, and move on to better places. Stop looking at your phone while driving. Not everyone wants to be your friend. Nice does not mean loyalty. This goes double for coworkers. If you had enough money to build your dream house, so what's a strange room or feature you'd include? This is my kind of question. Oh man. Catwalks between rooms for my cat. An indoor swimming pool in the underground floor with a sink screen on all four sides and normal plus underwater sound system. I love swimming. I love watching movies and series. I want an outdoor area dedicated to taco night. It's going to have a meat smoker and a tequila bar and pepper plants and a huge grill and an awesome speaker system and it will be fiesta themed and amazing. I want a hobbit pantry, earthy timber stone decor that is climate controlled to be perfect storage for area for wheels of cheese, sausage links, and beer. I want a freshwater pond in a central location inside the house. A moat. No one has a moat anymore. Do you not want to talk to people? Pull up the drawbridge, and in the winter, you'll have your own personal skating rink. What is the scariest true story you know? My dad worked in a morgue during college in the 1960s. One time, on the night shift, he was training a recent hire who was wheeling a body down the hallway. The body was under a sheet, but all of a sudden started to sit up. The guy immediately freaked out, ran out the doors, and quit. Apparently, a dead body can have muscle contraction and the abs causing it to start sending up. The more you know, I guess. The story of Christopher Dunch, aka Dr. Death, who operated out of the Plano in Dallas area. He maimed 33 people and killed two. He was an alleged neurosurgeon that didn't actually receive a proper medical education to operate, but still did so despite not fully being trained. No hospital would report him or take his license away. They would just pass him off to another hospital to continue injuring or killing people. The story that inspired Candyman is pretty creepy. A woman in a Chicago apartment was murdered by some drug dealer who lived next door. How did he get into her apartment? Through a hole behind her bathroom cabinet mirror. I grew up on a farm in the Texas panhandle, the boxy part of the top. In a house a few miles away from ours, most of the members of a family were randomly murdered. One girl, 10 years old at the time, survived by pretending to be dead. The nutty putty cave incident. A spelunker who got stuck upside down in a narrow cave for 26 hours. Cruz tried to pull him out with Cruz tried to pull him out with pulleys, but had to be careful to not break his legs because that could be fatal with the circumstances he was in. Rescuers even almost dislodged him only for an anchor to 
fail at the last second, plunging him back into the crevice. He eventually died, and they sealed the cave shut with him inside. What's your tis but a scratch moment? I got hit by a car while riding my bicycle, flew through the air, bounced off his windshield, breaking his windshield, my helmet, and two vertebrae, then thrown to the ground where my kneecap shattered and bone was sticking out of the skin. And as I lay there in shock, unaware of how badly I was injured, I thought I might be able to get back on my bike and ride home. When I was a teenager, I got jumped by a hoodlum trying to mug me. I was just walking along and they snuck up behind me and cracked me in the spine with an iron bar. Somehow the blow, instead of being painful, just went completely numb. So I turned around and said, what the f*** was that? I'll never forget the look of fear on the guy's face. He just dropped the bar and ran. Still get a weird numb spot on my back from time to time. Back in my baseball days when I was pitching, I completely lost a pitch and it beamed a guy in the jaw. He throws his bat down, glares at me with the glariest of glares ever glared, spits out blood, and then calmly runs to first base as though nothing happened. It was terrifyingly badass. Got blackout drunk while camping and fell hands first onto the grate that had been over the fire for hours. My wife and friends were all freaking out thinking I definitely had third degree burns. I came out of my blackout in the bathroom with all of them trying to wash my hands in the cold water. When all of the soot came off, I was somehow completely unharmed. Since then, I've been known as the unburned. What did the weird kid in your school do that you'll never forget? He wrote in my yearbook, when I was six years old, I went into a cornfield. I didn't realize it was a maze. I was stuck for several days without food or water. When they found me, the doctor said I'd never be the same. Good luck in college. Stole a car, crashed it, lost both his legs at 17. A few years later, he did it again, but this time he stabbed one of the good Samaritans who tried to help him and shot at another one. He then led the police on an eight hour manhunt through tropical jungle by detaching his prosthetics and hiding under the leaves and mud using a makeshift raft to escape downriver under the cover of nightfall. The newspaper the next day went to read armed and legless. Andrew Hooker made an album of electronica called Hook Anthems and each one was a soundtrack for different mundane tasks in his life. He sold only one copy to a math teacher and it's also one of my life regrets that I didn't buy one too. He said he was Sonic the Hedgehog when someone asked his name he would say I am Sonic and run away as fast as he could. He even wrote his name as Sonic on homework and tests. Most people never knew his real name. The albino kid in school he would take off running down the hallway with one hand straight out in front of him and yell white lightning. He was weird but everyone liked him. Poured his juice on the table at lunch and suction cupped his mouth over it and hailed it all like a hoover when you put it directly onto hard floor. He's a lawyer now. Dog owners of Reddit, that's me, would you cut off five years of your own life and give these to your dog? If so, why? Imagine trying to do this deal only to find out that you have an insufficient credit. Possibly, but only if I could find out what age I was meant to die first. It would be a cruel twist if I agreed to this, only to find out what I was meant to die less than five years from now and not get to spend any more time with my dog. No, it would be like adding 35 years to my dog. He is 14, blind, and clearly suffering to old age. I couldn't do that to him. No, I would not. I love my dog, but she will have her own years and I will have mine. Imagine doing this and then losing the dog in a divorce. Does my dog get five healthy years or five elderly years? If he gets five healthy years, then hell yeah. What is your creepiest glitch in the matrix or unexplainable thing that's ever happened to you? About a year ago, me and my cousin visited Los Angeles. We were driving around using Google Maps and after missing our third or fourth exit, we swear we both heard it sigh loudly before it rerouted us. We freaked out and made sure our driving was on point the rest of the ride. The rest of the trip there, if we missed any of our exits or our turns, we would always apologize to Google so hopefully she would know we were just morons and not assholes. Removed a painting from the wall during a late evening cleaning, put it away, and returned to the wall to see a never-before-seen painting on the same spot. Put a chill down my spine. I was on vacation on Florida visiting a friend. We were walking on a beach on a perfectly sunny day when everything went black for a second. I think it was weird, but explained it away thinking that my eyes were playing tricks on me. Until he looked at me and said, did everything go black for a second? Might get buried, but oh well. When I played baseball as a kid, they were handing out trophies at the end of the season. They called out the names of the kids while we received our trophies. There happened to be a kid with the same name as me. We met after the ceremony because it was weird since our last name isn't a very common one. We have the same birthday and everything. We looked alike. Both of our dads were named Derek and both of our sisters were named Lily. As a kid, I found it cool. As an adult, I find it cool, but also disturbing. I have a jade Buddhist necklace I bought in China about 10 years ago. It disappears for months at a time, only to reappear somewhere obvious, like my desk, my dresser, and a drawer I use every day. I just say it goes on a trip and will come back eventually. What is the most disturbing thing to know? Flies don't have teeth, so when they land on your sandwich and want to eat some, they barf up the contents of their stomach, often in containing other animal shit, so the digestive enzymes can get on the food and then they eat. There are 32 missing nuclear weapons and those are only the ones we know of. In my country, some women rent babies to beg money with in the streets. They make them drink a pill that would make them sleep. Because of pregnant women, the average number of skeletons inside a human body is greater than one. During World War II, Japan bombed China with fleas infected with the bubonic plague. If you try to grab the brain in its natural state, it will fall apart. When you see scientists pick up the brain, they have used chemicals to harden it. Gym goers of Reddit, what is something, protocol, etiquette, tips, etc., that New Year resolutioners should 
should know about the gym. Re-rack your weights. Don't leave your weights on the bar. After you are finished, return the weights. Remember that before you can get into heaven, you have to do a single squat under all the weight you left racked up like a dickhead. Don't start big just because your friends or everyone else is lifting big. Start small. It'll be easier to maintain the routine and there's a smaller chance you'll injure yourself. One thing, if you are unsure how to do an exercise correctly, for the love of God, ask. Most people are friendly and will help. The really huge, intimidating looking guy squatting half the plates in the gym is probably pretty friendly and the most likely guy to help you out and offer you good advice. Don't hog the weights. The most annoying thing someone can do is hog all the freaking weights and dumbbells and refuse to let the others use them. What's some popular self-care, self-love advice that is actually really toxic? If they can't handle me at my worst, they don't deserve me at my best. Funny how these people are always at their worst. Always trust your feelings. This advice is everywhere. No. Oftentimes our feelings require introspection to work through them and make the positive change. That you should expect unconditional support, love, and acceptance from your friends or romantic partners. Popular idea, but if people really care, they will tell you when you are harming yourself or others rather than just keep the vibe chill. Live your truth. There is a fine line between authenticity and being an asshole. Show them what they're missing. No, 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 no. Just do better for yourself. It's not really advice, but it's popular for people to label themselves as brutally honest. Honesty is good, but beware of people who are more interested in the brutality than the honesty. What is the worst thing that is legal? Sending letters to homeowners labeled important mortgage, financial info, or last warning notice, and having the inside look exactly like a bill or letterhead and the little box corner with figures inside, all they say is, refinance with us or don't miss the opportunity. Makes me heart skip every time thinking I've forgotten some critical bill until I open it. College book prices and practices. Change a few words in a math book. That'll be another hundred dollars, please. Oh, you realize that you can use the book from 10 years ago and succeeded? Actually, we require you to get the new book. Oh, you realize you can get the book cheaper from a friend? Actually, we're doing online books now and you need the personalized code. We change it every year even though there have been no breakthroughs in this subject. Knowing the college struggle, I have no f***ing clue how this is allowed to exist. It should literally be illegal. The fact car radio commercials are allowed to have police sirens or car crashes in them as a way to get your attention. The size of the X button on pop-up ads. Data caps on home internet. Robocalls. Bothering someone with something they paid for. The year is 2030 and President Dwayne Johnson is impeached. What led to these events? People wised up and smelled what he was cooking. Paper? The big show. <laughs> No, not the big show! Finds footage that proves he actually won the election. But then his campaign is ruined by the conspiracy that he was born in France as the son of Andre the Giant. So Triple H goes over with the help of the New World Order and the reign of terror begins again. He refused to take part in Fast and Furious 69. He body slammed the vice president. The 31st Amendment to the Constitution has been made making the presidency a title belt and of course big match John Cena beat the Rocket WrestleMania. It is <laughs> I love wrestling, so this is good. Uh, and is now the president of the United States of America. He was caught on camera with his VP, Kevin Hart, planning a sequel to Central Intelligence based off their time in office. Admitted that wrestling was fake. What did your crush do that absolutely killed your interest? Her. Why are you leaving a tip? Me. Because the service was really good? But she's fat. Yeah, that's an immediate ick. Bragged about drinking and driving. He told me that he and his friends have a nothing under a hundred club where they drink and then drive on the interstate going 100 plus miles per hour and have to send a full length snapchat video of the speedometer to each other. Dear God, people. Revealed his list of conquests. Not even my brother knows how many women I've slept with. Then he offered to take my virginity in the back of his pickup truck. I passed. As you should. Good call. She asked if things didn't work out if I would mind if she went out with my roommate. I said I couldn't possibly do that to him and left. That's a real homie right there. That's a real G. He tried to discreetly take photos of my feet. Nothing against people who are into that, but the way he was going about it was super creepy. She asked me if I was good with kids because she was pregnant with her ex, and that she's not good with kids. It was the first date. Hello and welcome everybody back to Ask MK. My name's Brandon. How about we just jump in and stop wasting time? What did a crush do that made you instantly lose interest in him slash her? She asked me to prom. I said, yeah. Two days before prom, I actually don't want to go with you, but I already bought both our tickets. As the guy, I expect you to pay me back for them. I tried to explain that's not how transactions work. She kept telling me it was my responsibility. I asked if she was smoking crack. Never heard from her again. He said he doesn't like ugly people and they all should die or be put in a corner. That is a little extreme, I'll say for sure. Not me, but my wife before we met. There was an event in Salt Lake City and she was from Northern Washington. She had a crush on this guy and decided to join carpooling with him 
and couple other people. They stopped to grab some fast food and went back on their way. Well, as soon as he finished eating slash drinking, he tossed the whole bag out the window while driving. After that, she barely talked to him, and once they got to SLC, she left him and joined some other friends and went back home with them instead. He was an <laughs> to our teacher because he was going to play baseball in college. Looked him up, and he's definitely not doing it professionally and hasn't graduated yet. Made fun of some chick who was into him for being chubby. He was fluffy himself, and I called him on it and walked away from that. He drove like an idiot while I was in the car. I literally thought he was going to kill us, and he was road raging the whole time. This was on the highway, too. I asked him to stop driving like that, and he didn't. Never going out with him again. Hey, we still good for tomorrow? Sorry, my boyfriend wants to come over. Great way to find out she both forgot about our plans and had a boyfriend. She started posting videos of her making out with drunk old men to her snap. We're both in college. Redditors who were born at a very young age. What is your story? Clearly, I was very sick. I mean, I was born in a hospital. To be honest, I've suppressed nearly every memory of that early period, but my parents tell me I avoided most activities, refused to speak, and spent much of my time crying. I was born naked. Yeah, join the club, buddy. A maniac in blue clothes pulled me off and slapped me. Pulled you off of what? I remember when I was applying for a job as a fashion editor, they asked me what made me get into fashion. I didn't know what to say, so I said, I've been putting on clothes since I can remember. Both the interviewer and I started cracking up. I got the job. What improved your quality of life so much you wish you did it sooner? Stop working more than 40 hours a week. That is true. That 40 hour work weeks? No. Can't do it. Impossible. Stopped watching the news. Life's way better without it. That is true, but it is still nice to be informed. Setting my own boundaries after realizing that when I didn't, people set them for me. You young kids will think this crazy, but I'm glad to have gotten older. All those things that worried me when I was in my 20s just don't matter anymore. I'm 67 now and much happier. Yeah, because you're rich and you have all the money. <laughs> Going to the gym. Used to be a miserable fat bastard, but after three months of going to the gym, I've lost about a stone and feel so much better. Being fat is not an issue. It's just a matter of loving yourself. I printed and framed that Calvin and Hobbes comic where the dad stops his work and goes to play in the snow with his kid. It hangs in my office home and reminds me what my priorities are. I've been much happier for it. Permanently placed my phone on do not disturb, allow calls from contacts. This one change saved me from constant disruptive unwanted calls calls. Life is good on no ring lane. What industry is a lot shadier than it seems? My dad knows a story from someone who works for a nationwide grocery chain. They had to deal with an Italian mafia to import balsamic vinegar. Rating services like Yelp refuse to advertise and your good reviews magically get rearranged. Hey, look, if you want to do that and be transparent, I get it. But most every business owner knows how scummy this is and most clients just have no idea. Dietary supplements. It's gotten better, but there's still a lot of half-truths and whole lies. Not all that long ago, it was seriously like the wild, wild west. Eyeglasses. You have no idea the snow job they put most people through when it comes to buying them. It's far, far worse than trying to buy a new car from a dealership. Wholesale frames are about 5 to $20. Wholesale lenses, blanks, are another 10 Any kind of dip coating, UV, tinting, etc. is negligible cost and effort to apply. Literally pennies. I was blessed with perfect eyesight, so... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, nerds. Just kidding. I am so sorry you have to deal with that. Trucking. The margins are razor thin, and so everyone is trying to nickel and dime each other constantly. The drivers lie to their dispatchers. The dispatchers lie to the brokers. The brokers lie to the clients. All of this for like $50 to $100 sometimes. Avocado farms. Most of the farms in Central America are taken over by the cartel because of how much money is in selling avocados. Remember, kids, there's always money in the avocado stand. Or avocado farm. Whatever, you get it. This'll probably get buried, but glitter. A manager of one of the biggest glitter manufacturers, GlitterX, said in a 2018 interview that most of the glitter they make goes to one buyer for a single industrial use. When asked who the buyer was and why they need so much glitter, she said, oh, I definitely can't disclose that. When asked why, she said, because they don't want anybody to know it's glitter. Oh god, what is it then? What hobby does not get more expensive the more you dive into it? Collecting rocks that 
you find. That is true. I mean, so long as you're finding them on the, uh, just out there, uh, uh, you know, in the dirt, then it's free. Magnet fishing. All you need is a strong magnet and some rope, really, and maybe a few other things like gloves. Might even find something valuable one day if you're exceedingly lucky. Smithing. It's always just as expensive. Extreme couponing. And yeah, that, that, that tracks. I mean, the more you get into it, the cheaper things will be, so. Writing. All you need is a Word document and your brain. Unless you're like me, who prefers IRL writing and now has a dragon's horde of journals to write in. Cross stitch slash embroidery. It's fairly cheap in general, but once you have a few sets in, you have a wide variety of colors to do your own. If authors covered novels the way musicians cover songs, which covered novel would you be most excited to read? Because I'm illiterate and I barely read, I probably won't know most of these authors, so forgive me. Isaac Asimov covering Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or vice versa, Douglas Adams covering Foundation, Ayn Rand's The Giving Tree, Edgar Allan Poe's Captain Underpants, Lord of the Flies by Roald Dahl, Dr. Seuss, The Art of War. Now that, that is a book I would like to read. H.P. Lovecraft presents Jurassic Park. Was there a book? I, I thought it was just the movie. What is something super important that is on the verge of happening? The first human corneas have been 3D printed by scientists. They cannot be used for human eyes yet, but in the future, the technique could be used to ensure an unlimited supply of corneas required for cornea transplants. For some positivity, we're on the verge of having a net positive increase in trees rather than decrease. Apparently, we're already at or near a net zero. Doesn't mean you should stop caring, though. Fusion energy. Every week, a new result comes out where the plasma has been kept stable longer, at higher temperature, etc. With an international collaboration on building first prototypes of positive net energy fusion reactors, we will change the world overnight. Free energy, very little pollution, basically forever. Making organs from stem cells. Hurry up already, science. I need a kidney. I hope they're doing well. It's been three years. I hope they got their kidney. As Wi-Fi covers more and more of the country, phone companies will lose their ability to charge exorbitant prices because telephony will be available everywhere. Magic Jack will be all you need. All calls and texts running through the internet. If marriages were five to ten year contracts with options to renew if both parties accepted, how would the world be different? It's a new nightmare. An entire industry rises up to create even more traditions for renewal celebrations. And now you have to attend even more elaborate parties, destination renewals, and even more subdued homespun renewals require at least buying a nice bottle of scotch. I probably couldn't afford to keep up with more than two friends at the rate of this particular scenario that's all entirely in my head. My parents used seven-year contracts they would rewrite and renew. Each one was a plan on what they would do for the next seven years. Eight kids in 54 years together, it's worked well for them. Renewal ceremonies were basically family reunions, so no elaborate parties. Happily married people would have to wait in a long, annoying ass line every 10 years and it would put everyone in a bad mood. Marriage re-up officers will be rude and condescending because of all the dumbass general public they have to deal with every day. This would change very little. Not renewing a marriage after 10 years when you have a bunch of joint property and kids is not any different from a no-fault divorce, would be equally messy. And if you don't have any joint property or kids, a regular divorce would be pretty painless anyway. Essentially, with no no-fault divorce laws, any marriage can already be treated as renewable contract. Your dog has heard all of your conversations, arguments, and deepest secrets. It suddenly learns to talk. What would you do? Oh yeah, buddy? Will you literally eat your own <laughs> I tell that to my dog all the time, and he doesn't even know how to talk yet, so <laughs> he knows his place. One of my dogs would have remained loyal and keep my secrets. The other would definitely require negotiation and bribes. Ask her what she thinks I should do. I mean, she's been an observer all her life, so she might have some good insight. She'll never betray me anyways, so it's okay. That's what you think. Until they tell people your social security, and then... <sighs> Apologize for baby talking to him. In baby talk. <laughs> It's just so hard, you can't stop. My dog is unquestionably loyal. I'm not worried. Very confident, this one. Extroverts who ask others, why are you so quiet? What kind of response are you looking for? I'm the quiet one and I've asked my extrovert friends about this. For her, it's her anxiety telling her that I'm not talking because I'm mad at her. She's very uncomfortable with silence. We've both gotten better at being what the other needs in this regard. We have a mutual friend who is also an extrovert and we can sit and read for an afternoon and have a lovely time together. Wow. While the extrovert anxiously eyes
surprise us, lol. I was raised by librarians. Now that's a good, that is a good response. One of my favorite surgeons is very quiet. Story told about him by another surgeon when he was a resident. Resident kept trying to ask about his kids, his holidays, making chit chat. Surgeon says, I'm comfortable with uncomfortable silence. End of conversation. That might be the most perfect response to it. I'm an extrovert who has recently taught himself to listen more than speak. I'm a contractor and I just knew that I had a tendency to dominate conversations and had to make the conscious effort to shut the f*** up and listen to my customers. It has affected my entire life in a positive way. I hate when they follow it up with a command to smile. Why are you so quiet? Smile! Ugh, those people just give me the ick. What is something that your parents did that you swore never to repeat to your own kids? I have two. Making fun of their interests and hobbies. It's why I don't like showing anyone my artwork, but I will do anything to support my kids and encourage them. If they tell me something in confidence, I'm not using that as a topic of conversation with others. Tell my parents anything and everyone knows. My mom just couldn't understand why I was getting mad when she was telling any Yahoo at Walmart the whole story of events leading up to my divorce. Both are why my mom wonders why I don't tell her anything. I don't want that for my kids. I was spanked. I thought I'd grow up and spank too because I ended up okay and thought that's how you correct kids. But then as I got older, I thought back to how I deal with other kids who made me mad or wouldn't listen to me. I hit them. It clicked this wasn't what I needed to do. Try to be controlling over my kid's life and blame all their problems on the other parent. Oof, yikes, that feels very telling. Refuse to admit I was wrong. That is the biggest issue with a lot of parents. They do not understand humility. Be unapproachable. Come talk to me anytime about anything. Everything can be fixed. Constantly comparing myself to other people's kids and belittling my own achievements. What conspiracy theory do you completely believe is true? Bill didn't cheat on Hillary. They have an open marriage where they can do what they want whilst traveling around for work. Reason for the infidelity lie? It's easier for the American population to accept a president making a mistake infidelity than to accept a swinging president slash first lady. Disney absolutely believed that Hillary Clinton was going to win the 2016 election, so they started building her animatronic for the Hall of Presidents well in advance, and after Trump pulled off a victory, instead of starting from scratch, they just kind of made a couple of half-assed adjustments to the Hillary model and put it up on stage. Everyone I tell about this tells me I'm overreacting and it's just a conspiracy, but I strongly believe large companies who use eco-friendly products around customers only do it to make themselves look good and to make the customer feel like pollution is their fault when they use, for example, plastic straws, when in reality using eco-friendly straws barely dents the amount of pollution the company itself makes behind the scenes. I'm in the Navy and we change uniforms a lot compared to other branches. There's a conspiracy theory that there's a rear admiral whose wife has stocks in the company that makes our uniforms. I just randomly heard someone talking about it. I have zero evidence that it's true, but I 100% believe it. The Big Mac has gotten smaller, so McDonald's saves some money. I don't know, but I swear the Big Mac used to be bigger. Or maybe I'm just fatter. You could have just grown up, but I mean, things look smaller when you're a kid. Don't put yourself down. Not a specific theory, but I have no doubt that the majority of leaks for the entertainment industry, video games, movies, TV, etc., are completely purposeful and meant to gauge general opinions before official announcements. The average human brain is comparable to about 2.5 million gigabytes. Your brain has reached near capacity. What do you delete to free up space? Memories of reality shows I've watched. All memories of being bullied and picked on as a child. All of my most embarrassing moments. I would never get rid of those. I love those. Sorry, I'm burping right now. That's one of them. Everything but fine dining and breathing. You might want to remember walking, but you'll get there. Anxiety.exe would probably fix that. Thanks for everything, guys. My brain dumps info automatically. I unfortunately do not get to choose what goes. All about my exes. Ugh, don't we all? My fear of wicker furniture. My desire to play the trumpet. My tentative plans to purchase a hat. And six years of improv workshops. Interesting choices. Those of you Redditors in happy, healthy, and fulfilling relationships, what were the green flags you noticed about your partner early on in your relationship with them? It was instantly easy to talk to her. I never felt like I had to put on a show for her because she never did with me, and she actively affirmed me in that. She immediately blew every standard I thought was high enough out of the water. Evaluating my needs. Something as simple as offering me some of their water after getting it for themselves. I was able to express my emotions and thoughts to him without his getting angry or judgy. He fearlessly let me have my feelings without trying to change them. We talk them out, and it feels so much better afterwards. 
cards. I feel like I could tell him absolutely anything, so the trust between us is more solid than I've ever had with anyone else. Gah, he's just the best. Well, I'm happy for you. I hate being tickled, but I am very ticklish. She discovered it early in the relationship, and I asked her once to not tickle me. She has never tickled me again in the following 10 years. Just shows respect. Being able to discuss anything, even flaws, without them slash me getting mad. Communication is the most important thing in a healthy relationship. Love is just as important, though, I guess. My partner never made fun of me or acted condescending when I didn't know something. They were always humble when it came to gaps in their knowledge, too. If bullsh** means fake and bat sh means crazy, what do the other sh of the animal kingdom mean? Ape sh going crazy. Horse sh same as bullsh**. Rat sh poor quality. Australian slash New Zealand. Green as goo sh naive or inexperienced. Dog sh terrible. That one's my favorite. Cat sh still means cat sh Yeah. Human sh someone who litters in a national park. What's the worst scandal to happen at your school? The math teacher left his wife of 18 years for one of the graduating seniors. Oh, gross, dude. That is nasty. That's awful. Girl A decided to fight girl B in class. Girl A ripped girl B's real hair out, broke her nose, and crippled her. Girl B was sent to the emergency room. Girl A was suspended for two weeks. They were both in seventh grade. One year in exams day, they were trying to add a new method to prevent cheating where a man from the administration comes to every class before every exam and collects students' phones while sticking a sticker with a number on each phone and giving the same sticker to the student so he can get his phone after school without anyone taking someone else's phone that looks alike or something. This was working at first and a bit preventing cheating until one day some guy sneaked into our high school and came as the man who collects the phones while he wasn't. He stole the whole high school phones and went. My middle school banned hugging and hand-holding during course changes because it blocked the hall. In protest, all the 8th graders stood up and hugged each other during their lunch period. A bunch of students got detention. Made the cover of the Charlotte Observer. A kid in my class sent an email to the White House threatening to kill Sox, the Clinton's cat. Secret Service showed up a few days later after they tracked down the computer. What things did you do as a kid that you now realize is extremely weird? There were spiders and mice in my room which totally freaked me out so every night before I went to sleep, I'd whisper a report of what the weather was outside to encourage them to go outside rather than stay inside and bite me in my sleep. Reverse psychology. It could work on spiders. We haven't tested it though. Well, you did, but we don't know the result. Eight rose petals. My grandfather told me they're edible. I still eat one when I go visit his grave. Oh no, I thought that was a funny one. That's a little upsetting. I'm sorry. Purple was my favorite color, but I didn't like the word, so I called it Myrtleop. Interesting. What are you from, Star Trek? Found out that the air had germs in it, and I tried not to breathe too much. I used to eat ants. I didn't even like the taste, I just kept doing it. I used to steal things from my sister when she was mean to me, and then hide them by sewing them into her stuffed animals. She found out a few months ago and was really freaked out. As of right now, what will it take to make you 100% happy? Man, if I had childcare in this moment, I would totally lay down for like two hours for a nap, but I, I am the childcare. I am vengeance. <laughs> a friend or God forbid a girlfriend. I've been out of college several years now and I've been friendless ever since. Hard to be excited about something and have nobody to tell. Rid me of my anxiety and IBS. My life would be perfect. Start earning enough money to not be stressed and to be free of any mental health issues. Not sure if money can really do that, but it can definitely get you resources to help. Superpowers. Yeah, that that's simple enough answer. 100%? Dunno, but my girlfriend just got home with some good news and and that's made me happy. Aw, that's all wholesome and nice. To be noticed for like five minutes. Well, here's your moment. We'll just let it sit here for five minutes. I like disaster. We're not gonna do that. To have someone I can fully trust and confide in. I'll lowball it. $50,000. It'd be enough for me to be financially secure. Anyone, if you're listening, give this man $50,000. And by this man, I mean me. Give me $50,000. No. Doctors of Reddit, what was the worst thing you've seen for a patient that another doctor over Look, neurologist sent patient to our ED without informing her that imaging showed a glioblastoma assuring her impending death. He didn't overlook the disease, he overlooked the communication. MD here, recently was called over by a nurse who told me a patient's bandages were wet as they were bleeding a little. Patient had recently had his leg amputated. We pulled his bandages off and found a spurting femoral artery. At this point, patient passed out. Patient was sent to the theaters for an emergency operation. Close call for sure. I found an 
obvious huge rectal cancer on a patient who was previously told over and over again that she had hemorrhoids. In residency, I saw a cardiologist miss a STEMI heart attack. By the time the patient came to us, some of the muscles supporting one of his heart valves had completely died and he was in cardiogenic shock. Basically, his heart function was so bad that it wasn't circulating the blood in his body enough to support life. It was awful. Happily, he made it through though. I work in EMS. We got a call for a female with leg pain. When we arrive on scene, this woman's leg is three times the size of her other one, blue and purple, and she has no pulse in her foot. She fell on ice a few days prior, and the urgent care didn't do any x-rays, told her she had a sprain, and gave her a walking boot. In reality, her tibia and fibula were both so badly fractured they were cutting the blood vessels and muscle tissue. She lost her foot. What simple life hack should everyone know? Get into a routine of stretching your hip flexors and chest if you sit for long periods. Absolute game changer for people who suffer with chronic lower back pain as a result of being hunched over a desk. Oh, I'm, I should probably get into that then, because <laughs> my, uh, my back is obliterated. Five minutes of daily exercise is infinitely better than zero minutes and will make a big difference. Google it first. I guess that's fair. I mean, you don't want to do a fake life hack that actually ruins your life. No matter how good a person you are, at some point you will be the bad guy in someone else's story. You cannot please everyone and you shouldn't try to. Be a good person and have friendships with people you can respect and look up to. If you have trouble choosing, flip a coin. While you're waiting to get the result, your mind automatically starts to wish for what it wants. Then you can choose easily. Don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. In a lot of daunting situations, for example, asking someone out or standing up for yourself, you only need to be brave for a few seconds to get it over with. If an alien offered you a one-week trip across the galaxy and back with the catch being 15 years passes on Earth, would you accept or reject the offer and why? Check to see if my job will be okay with a 15-year unemployment gap. It most likely won't. Then go anyways. Bro, I will. What if Earth blows up during those years? I would be alive. 15 years to see something no one else here has ever seen or will see in the near future. I'll take that. I'd really, really love to take that trip, but 15 years is way too much of my family's life to miss, so I have pass. If I was single, I'd go in a heartbeat. Accept it, so that I can discover what other civilizations and life forms are. Plus, that would be interesting to see how Earth would have changed in that time period. Depends what stage of life I was at. I can't really afford to take 15 years off right now. I've got stuff to do. Post-retirement, though, <laughs> send me the hell up. Nope, my mom is older, and that is way too much time to miss. Hell, a year since seeing her in person is a ton, thanks to real-life crap in the world. Tempting, but nah. You've died and arrived at a train station to your afterlife. The trains are animals, traditional heaven, rebirth, and eternal nothingness. Which train do you take, and why? Do I get my choice of what animal I could be? I could end up as a fruit fly and live for a day, only to end up back at the station. Or could I be a lap dog, born to be someone's beloved pet for around 13 years? Could I be a tortoise and live for 140 years? I would do one thing I and probably most people never do in life. Carefully review the terms and conditions of each choice before making the final decision. I put in a job application to work at the train station. According to Buddha, eternal nothingness is the only good pick. But if I'll be coming back anyways, I might as well do some magpie runs first. Traditional heaven. You would be happy slash content by default. I always say this about if you ever could have one wish, don't wish for money in the pursuit of happiness. Just straight up wish to be happy and content. You can't lose. I'd give it another shot and say rebirth. However, on a different planet as an alien. Let's try something new this time. You can go back a hundred thousand years to a cave that will be discovered by archaeologists. What do you write on the wall to mess with them? Test post. Please ignore. Scientists would study that for decades. <laughs> I'm an archaeologist and can safely say, no, it's not ritual. Scrawled on the wall will f*** with us forever. Turns out time travel only works once per timeline. Sorry, guys. This planet shall be our second home. My regards to Stephen Hawking. Tell him sorry I couldn't make it to his party. I definitely put footprints on the ceiling. What do you do confidently now that made you feel weird in the past? Paint slash draw and then share it with strangers. I did not grow up with art and had absolutely no confidence in attempting it. During our quarantine this spring, I taught myself how to watercolor and draw birds, and I'm now selling prints and stickers and donating 100% of the profits to bird conservation groups. I just love birds. Well, that's a great cause. Thank you so much. Walking down the street, realizing I was going in the wrong direction and making a U-turn without pretending to have forgotten something. Going out for a meal on my own. Pee without asking. You know, I never thought about it, but I guess we did, we did used to do that, huh? We really did. Saying how I feel. I'd usually bottle things up because 
because I didn't want to upset anyone. Telling people the music I like. That is still a challenge to this day, but you just gotta just throw music at people. English. I used to be terrible and my accent still sucks sometimes, but after more than 20 years of practice and a bachelor's degree from an English university, now I'm quite proud to be bilingual. Congratulations, that is a lot of work and I know I could never do that. In what movie did you like the bad guy more than the good guy? Emperor's New Groove. Yzma and Kronk, they're entertaining to watch until today. I think they meant to say still today, but they're correct regardless. There's just something about Predator that keeps me interested. Uh, how do you how do you do the Predator sound? Like no, I'm not doing it. Muppet Treasure Island. Come on. Tim Curry. Wiley Coyote. Dude was starving in the desert and just wanted to eat. The Monarch in Venture Brothers. I haven't seen Venture Brothers, so you can come kill me with pitchforks. The Labyrinth. I mean, it's David Bowie dancing around with a bulge. Sounds like me on a Saturday night. <laughs> I, I do it alone in my room and it's not a pleasant sight. The Devil in Bedazzled. Mainly because he's played by Elizabeth Hurley. As much as I love Clary Sterling in Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter is still the best character in the whole movie despite only having 16 minutes of screen time. And he's still one of the most iconic characters today, so I mean, yeah. What is the single most you'll understand it when you're older thing? Health issues. I know I've been genetically lucky, but after 20, random shit just starts happening for no reason. It's like Daryl developing a soy allergy at 35, who develops a soy allergy at 35, that the quality rather than quantity of friends matters. Good people aren't always nice people, and vice versa. High school drama isn't important, like at all. That is so true. Forget about that stuff. Forget about it. Who cares who was prom queen? Understanding why your parents wanted you to go play with the awkward kid, or why they were so keen to help you make friends. It's beyond annoying as a kid when your parents try to guide who makes friends with you, but most parents instinctually know that bad social habits start early and are hard to break and can be a real burden when you are older. How many people have a kid thinking it's going to fix their relationship? Why it's so annoying when you forget to take the chicken out of the freezer. Can we get McDonald's? No, we have food at home. That one still hurts me to this day. People who work at five star hotels. What type of shit goes on that management doesn't want people to know? I worked at a Ritz Carlton a few years back. It's literally the same as anywhere else. The hotel staff is amazing at their job, but on their personal time, they're just as fucked as everyone else. The kitchen staff had a few folks with drug issues and had to be sent home a couple times because of it. In my time there, I saw two waiters get fired due to embezzlement. The turnover rate for management was very high because they didn't pay enough for the area. The staff parties were wild to say the least. Bed bugs. Every single hotel from rundown motels to five star resorts has dealt with bed bugs. Never, ever, ever, I repeat, use a chocolate fountain from a hotel or banquet hall. Picture this. It's an expensive as Sunday brunch. Well, little Timmy just double fisted strawberries directly into that chocolate, bit into both strawberries, then triple dipped into the chocolate again. And some old rich lady just sneezed on it. And somebody else just dropped their snack into it. The best part? That chocolate gets strained and saved for the next week's brunch. Chocolate is way too expensive to throw away. Ew, ew, that's so gross. <laughs> My significant other worked for a fancy hotel. The bill building owners, not the chain, the actual building itself came to visit. He was on the Forbes billionaire list. He was a nice man who had buffet lunches every day and tipped every staff member he saw a crisp $100 bill every time he saw them. Housekeeper walked past, $100. Bartender setting up, $100. Shift swap, 100 on the way in and out. Worked at the high-end restaurant at a ski resort that hosts a famous film festival. Lots of sex in the walk-in coolers, but never the people you'd want to walk in on. When did you realize your friends were actually fake friends. Went to pick up my Xbox 360 a friend was borrowing, and our whole group of friends was there. They had spent the entire day playing games with snacks and pizza, and I had not been invited. And now I was in a situation of being the douche who takes the ball home and ruins the fun for everyone. I took my Xbox and never spoke to anyone in that group again. When I slowly realized I was only around for chores and errands, rides to the airport, pick up furniture, help move, anything social always resulted in either 
last minute cancellations, showing up 45 minutes late, and bolting after 10 minutes. I thought they were busy, but no. Was once told, I'm trying to hang out with my real friends. Twas an oof. Tis an oof indeed. That sounds awful. I'm so sorry. When my phone got stolen and I lost their phone numbers, mine stayed the same, but we just never talked again. When I traded in my truck for a smaller, more eco-friendly vehicle, communication plummeted now that I can't haul furniture around, assist with moving as much, dispose of garbage, etc. What's the most uncomfortable question you can ask someone? Hey, uh, can we have a talk about your search history? Yeah, I hope nobody asks me that. Otherwise, it's over for me. It's done. Where's my hug? It's the creepy guy. Uh. Do you have a sister by chance? And why do you need to know? How come I wasn't invited? Yeah, that does kind of put people in an awkward spot. Oh, have you seen our toothbrush? No, and I don't want to actually. <laughs> Why are you so quiet? Look, sometimes you just don't need to say anything. I don't I don't have a need to speak, except for right now, I guess. Once back in college, when meeting my then girlfriend's parents for the first time, her dad greets me with a handshake. Nothing odd about that at all. Then in mid shake, he says, so you're the guy f***ing my daughter. I was genuinely rendered speechless. Hey dads, stop being weird. St knock it off. Are are we still friends? While it's still uncomfortable, it might be a necessary question sometimes. You accidentally put in an hour more community service than needed. Now you have to do one hour of community disservice. What do you do? Go around and turn off the automatic doors at grocery stores. It's easier than you think. That makes me wonder what they do in their free time. Out of order signs on all public bathrooms. You know you only try to use them because it's an emergency. Spend an hour going to gas stations and putting bags on handles. Now now nobody knows what works and what doesn't. You know, I can't say for sure, but I feel like somebody did that last time I tried getting gas. I'ma go flex tape some parked cars together. Why are you punishing these people? They'll never get their cars unstuck. Stand at a crosswalk for a busy intersection and yell at open car windows that they have a flat. I guess that one sounds kinda good, but they are lying. Breaking leaf bags and spreading them back on people's yards. All right, honey, go get the leaf blower. No array is not gonna fix this one. What are red flags in a friendship most people brush away? I mean, first of all, that Robin guy won't leave me alone. He's always calling me up trying to kiss me, and I, like, I'm, it, I love the guy, but come on. When you hang out with them, it feels like you're diffusing a bomb when there's nothing going on right then. Friends that only care to talk about their own success and aren't genuinely happy for you and yours unless it amounts to less than their own. Really jealous and possessive friends. I'm a jealous person by nature, and even though my jealousy flares up when I see my friends hanging out with other people, I would never let them know. Why? Because I don't want them to feel bad about doing the things they love. E.g. having a social life outside my little world. Continually feeling like you want to say something but should hold your tongue. You see you got a private message from them and your gut reaction is to start getting nervous or anxious. What is it this time? Friends who gossip excessively. If they're talking about other people, chances are they're talking about you. 